Oh, yeah. Getting down to business. The time is here, guys. Welcome to Dennis and Andy. Dun, dun, dun. Cordrath, the awakening has arrived. It is live. Go back to live, guys. This is the pre launch. We put it up live, making sure if there were any little bugs in it, we could get it all uh, worked out before it's officially launched in about 20 minutes. All right, let's see. What are we missing? You're missing a Core Draft 2 plus Module 2 perk. No, because you can add on, uh, you can, you can add on, uh, two all by its uh itself you can do you can you can pick any cover you want instead of us doing a uh a tier where it's the module in volume two with this specific cover on checkout you can pick a cover because every cover there you go we do have that yep add-on we've got tons of add-ons guys we're going to go through this campaign but as always, I got to say hi to the chat. We have to pass Master Dan. Hello. Are you Stu? Hello. Maromi. Hello. Uh, Oe Frog Capo. H. Didin Schneily. Nate D. Who? Me. Marcus Kellerbrew. Rogues. Backstory. Paulus Arch. John DeVoice. Headless. Uh, yeah, the, that's how I say it. Uh, there you are. Hello, everybody. We are here. And we, of course, are going to uh, share the campaign to, uh, oops, wrong one. I want to do that. There we go. To go through it with you guys. Uh, that's right. Core Drath, the Awakening is here. Venture forth into the fractured realm of the Shattered Reach, where Core Drath, the indomitable warrior and the last scion of the Red Lines tribe, embarks on a quest steeped in destiny. His heart aflame with unyielding love. He's driven to rescue his beloved Adriana's people of the Black Eagles tribe from the clutches of Vordoom the Undying, who you guys who got the reckoning were introduced to. He is one bad mother effer. Um, he's the relentless undead creature whose shadow stretches across the land. Kordrath's path is fraught with peril as he seeks a legendary artifact, the key to obliterating the sinister darkness. Brace yourself for an epic heart-pounding odyssey brimming with fierce battles, awe-inspiring magic and twists that will leave you breathless with anticipation. You're like, man, why'd you read all that? We can read it. Because I like to acknowledge, acknowledge hard work. And when Dennis writes something that epic, I am going to read it for him because I do read Dennis uh, a short story every night to lull him off to sleep. So I don't want to deprive him of my reading voice. There is truth to that. See, there is truth to that. Uh, need more trading cards? Maybe lenticular? Yeah, we'll see. It, you know, you never know. It could be uh, something uh, that is, uh, it could be something down the road that maybe we, depending on how the campaign does, maybe we upgrade the Adriana trading card to a lenticular version of it. Um, obviously, I sent out the email to everybody that signed up early and that email has all the secret tiers so you can go and uh back it and when you back it you'll see under the items you get whatever tier it says an adriana trading card so you'll get the Adri adriana trading card and front of the line shipping uh is this the uncensored version yes every uh every main book that we do right out of the game is uh uncensored um let's let's roll through this so of course we've shown these on other live streams cover a by myself and dandy dan lawless cover b homage cover where uh i did it all pencil ink color the only thing i didn't do was come up with the concept because it's a homage cover to guys in the chat tell us what homage cover this is uh tell us what cover this is homaging there you go. That's what I meant to say. Did I word that right, Dennis? Yeah, I, I just don't say homage. I call it an homage. Oh my! Well, you know, you like to be a little frou-frou French type guy. We oui. exactly. 
Of course, we've got the beautiful Bud Root Dan Lawless variant. Uh, we can show you uh, here that if you missed out on the first Bud Root variant of Lil Neff, these two covers go together. Could we be uh, starting a theme for future core draft books? Hmm, maybe. Uh, if you didn't get Bud's cover, it is still available. So uh, you can. So check that out. And uh, I'm doing no more artist edition. Not that I don't like it, but for, I don't, I wanted to do it for the first book. You know, the artist edition, full nice uh, scans of my original artwork, oversized book, nine by 12. Uh, Conan number two, very good, Marcus Killigrew. Marcus, we might have to not let you play these in these little games because you know too much. Uh, you know way too much. And you, we see you at shows and you hear us talk about it. So you could say you were cheating. Oh, wait, that's not number two. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, you bastard. So this is the black and white edition of the book. So for those of you that remember the first campaign, we did a black and white and blood cover where the cover had a spot of red for the blood off the axe. Well, this whole book will be black and white. It'll be, uh, you know, high contrast black and white. So you won't see the gray tones or anything like original art. It'll have all the all the word balloons, you can read it. It's a black and white edition for those of you that like black and white art and just want to see uh, see the book done that way. So the whole book in black and white. Oh, preview pages. Oh, oh, look at that. Look, it, for, for people that didn't get the reckoning, add it on so you're not lost. For people that did, they'll be like, oh, oh, that is... Uh, that is a spooky castle. Uh, Heat Miser, uh, Glenathan, thank you guys. And thank everybody else that is already back that I'm, I'm not, don't have my eye on the chats. I know Dennis is. I am. I'll, I'll start popping while you're chatting. How do you pronounce that last word there, Dennis? Headless what? Or Joe? Are those eyes? It's so small. Headless Bogosia. I don't even know what that word means. Is it a name or is it an actual word? So anyhow, in Vordoom's castle, Vordoom is such a bad guy that he literally captures these small little fairies. And, uh, and no, I'm not talking about Dennis when he was in high school. Jeez, guys. Because one, Dennis was never small. Um, he Bourgeois captures. Z. Look at that. Thank you for uh, the pronunciation. Bourgeoisie. Headless bourgeoisie. Thank you. Um, put it this way. If that was a word I got in a spelling contest, uh, I would have lost. Never be able to spell that. Um, so anyhow, he keeps these little fairies that light up and glow in little tiny cages as lights. He doesn't believe in using candles. He's a torture type guy. Well, this poor fairy, she's, she's just tired. She just can't take it anymore. So one of Vordoom's thug goons comes up and is like, wake up. And she jolts awake. And then, of course, we get inside the main room that we established last issue. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the main issue that was also an homage. It was. It actually was. The very first shot of Vordoom was an homage, even though in the book, Dennis called it a swipe, using the wrong terminology, Dennis. Swipe. It's an homage, Dennis. It's an homage, Dennis. And the panel below it was, an, was also an homage, homage, whatever. You know what I'm saying. Um, uh, so there you go with that nefarious things are going on. We did not have these pages lettered because we did not want to uh, spoil anything. Uh, and then, oh no, look at that big, crusty, nasty creature. And are, are those three? Oh, thank you so much. Are those three? Three 
Adriana's? Well, you have to read the book to find out how something like that can happen. Whoa. What does Dennis have in store? Oh, you have to read it. That's why we have no word balloons on this. Yeah, we purposely left them off. <laughs> Look at this big creature. He likes bears. He likes people. He's grabbing Cordrath. Man, oh, man. Oh, look. At, oh, boy. It's it's getting real. Oh, 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 boy. That bear. That poor bear. You know, when I drew this panel, Dennis was like, oh, my God, if only that creature was yellow, because that's what the Packers do to the bears every time they play them. Nice. See wow. that? It's a good thing to see how we got the NFL rolled right into it. But, guys, these are... These aren't just swipes or, or common monsters. We actually came up with, uh, developed all new uh, monsters, uh, brand new ones. Andy did great concept uh, design work behind the scene on them. And uh, yeah, this is just a hint of what, what's going to be coming for new stuff. That's right. Uh, we've got, of course, for, for new people, we've got the characters. I was really debating with Dennis. I was like, I don't know if we should put the character things up again because it's kind of a long scroll, but it's new for somebody. So we did, of course, Cordrath.com. You can still read the first 11 pages of Cordrath the Reckoning. And then Dennis, this is all your baby, Demise and Dracomort, covered by Dan, Bart Sears and Dan Lawless, just like the first game module. What the hell is this all about, Dennis? Well, guys, this is the uh, the brand new uh, module for uh, those that did back the first one. And I know a bunch of you have been picking this up at the uh, convention. Um, the original one here is the Mayhem in the Miramador Mountains. You can see Dan and Bart on the cover. This one has, you know, the inside where it's got the old school map. This is old style from uh, the... Uh, the 80s and stuff like that. And you guys will be able to see this new one is a whole new adventure. It still ties in. It isn't a recreation of the uh, comic book, but it ties into a lot of things that are going on in the Shattered Reach. So this is the new module. I've gotten uh, two test plays under the belt from it. I'm working on uh, some revisions and some additions that I'm working on it. And then I will be sending this off to a, a couple of groups. Um, one of them's out in Vegas, eagerly awaiting for this uh, to test play. But uh, that will be the the new gaming module. That's right. And just one more peek. Here is the cover, so you can see it in all its glory by uh, Bart and Dan. Uh, guys, not only is like Dennis said, a game module that you can play. But it's a totally different story. It is not the story that is in the book. Well, thank you so much. Dennis is so good at these. I don't know what that means. Maybe Dennis can tell me. What? Daka Moon cards. You showed the, the chat. It was, it was the one before that. It was... Uh, no. Where was it? Boy, you just throw up comments and don't even read them. It was this. I don't know what that means. Whoa, are those Dakuman? I don't know what Dakuman is. Oh, okay. Um, all right, so let's keep going. So there's that. Of course, guys, uh, Astonishing Comic would not be an Astonishing Comic without a new parody ad. Uh, Bloody Drake, thank you so much. Thank everybody that's back. John Porton, thank you. Uh, guys, parody ad, it's back. We don't like to, We don't like to save them. We like to show them. Dennis came up with this great one. Anybody that's a fan of Lo Looney Tunes will uh, recognize uh, that uh, that creature. And uh, once again, Dennis, uh, Dennis, real document cards after C. I want to see some real document after. I don't. I don't know what those are. We're gonna have to find out because now, now have, it's in it's in multiple thing. Those are the cards from the Ripperverse. They have been mocked. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Uh, off to get lunch, Chris. Chris, have a great lunch. Um, yeah, so here is the parody ad. I'm not going to read it. You can click on the link in the description below. Go read it. And uh, I think it's funny, but the basic gist is 
uh, you're not you when you're thirsty. Grab yourself an Axe Mead uh, ale and uh, be yourself, guys. Be you know, we, we kicked around, you know, and he goes, what are you going to do for this one? Are you going to do a new product? And I thought, I think I want to do a second one because the first one was so good. Think of the old hostess ads, you know, how they had multiple for, you know, the ho-hos or the ding-dongs or whatever. So this is the same kind of thing. I wanted to do a second one for the Axe the ax me, uh, Mead before we, uh, you know, move on to something else. So... This just one kind of struck me, you guys. I know I, you know, I love Looney Tunes, so I wanted to keep the theme going with it. So I just made up something very fun. That's right. And because it was uh, Looney Tunes, instead of doing the old school style with the feathering uh, inking technique, that's kind of uh, like John Buscema, who was is just one of my favorite artists of the '70s time period. I went with a more animated, clean style. Uh, and just thought that would work so much better since it was a uh, Looney Tunes based. Bloody Drake says had to get the volume two cover C and volume one well, blood blood root cover, not blood root. Good to match. Yep, guys. I already know yeah. a lot of you are going to do it for those of you that didn't get the first one. They just turned out so perfect together. It's uh yeah, it's just a a great one. So congrats. Uh, you might be the first one to pick that one up right away. Yeah. Uh, stretch goals will be coming soon. We do have them planned out, but you know, we want to see how it goes a bit. So a few great add ones this time I'm doing, or we're doing core draft, the awakening, the layouts, uh, full size book printed, uh, print of my layouts before I go to inking. So you can actually, you can actually get the black and white version of the book or, or and the layouts and see what my pencils look like before I start slapping ink down on them. Uh, so that's a that's an add on. Uh, we have Cordrat the Reckoning manga size digest. I've got that baby right here. That's right. We printed like ten of these. All right, Blackjack. Good luck at the estate sale. I love those things. Yeah, I do too. I have fun getting something fun. Maybe get some comics. That's right. So we printed up 10 of these, uh, which when you only print 10, it ain't cheap, but we definitely want to see what the book would look like beforehand. And it is uh, fantasy violence, mild blood, suggestive themes, E for everyone. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, wait a second, how can this be E for everyone? I saw the first book. Well, we edited that uh, saucy page. So uh, E for everyone. And it is uh, gray toned. Looks like they're zip -a tone, just like manga. Little manga version. And then uh, scrolling down on the campaign right below it. Since I'm large, I'll just show it. This version is a digest. It's a little bit bigger, as you guys can see right there. And uh, this one, however, is full color, but it is also E for everyone. So it has edited page in it. And if you're wondering, uh, because we edited it, I can show the actual page. Look at, oh, see, it's nice. They're just, they're cuddling. That's all. They're just cuddling there, guys. Cuddling together. Oh, isn't that sweet? So there you go. So there's that. Uh, let's uh, get back to the screen layout we had before. There we go. So that is available. Both of those are available as add-ons. You can see the size difference compared to the regular book. So that is the digest compared to the regular size uh, graphic novel. And there's uh, the color digest. All right, guys, this is the big one right here. The big daddy, yo. This is the reveal, graphic. guys. You get to see it first. Those of you that decided to pop on this morning and say hey to us and 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 back it you get to see these absolutely first just because i love people complimenting me he's digging my beard well thank you so much unless you mean dennis uh but yeah he's got a nice one too he's star trek verse so anyhow dennis talk to him about these mini figs that we're doing so um we'll pull them out uh and i'm going to show you guys but uh um 
we've got uh, four different sizes um, that you can see down on the. Uh, on you the mean screen. three different sizes? Uh, three different sizes. This is. Uh, for those of you that have been, you, so many of you hit us up for um, doing miniatures for uh, the game side of it. This is a 25 millimeter fig. So no matter what D&D &D type things you guys are uh, making, um, you know, whatever you play for D&D &D for minis, this goes right in with your uh, figures. Um, I'm going to show you the three different sizes, but here's your uh, 25 millimeter one. I'm hoping. Okay, so hold on real quick, Dennis. I will go check behind the scenes. They should be there as add ons. It could be something where it just wasn't added on to everything. Uh, I'll go check that. I know Dennis loves his little millimeter stuff because that's, I get it. That's how role players talk. That means nothing to me. So it does. That is a two inch size uh, figure. So this is the 50, 50 millimeter uh, size, which is the uh, next step up. You notice it'll even have the hole in the base. You can see the base when it comes and you guys can just uh, attach them. So now you can see the 25 and the 50 millimeter size uh, together. And um, I really hope we can get it, that my camera's gonna zoom in because look at the detail on this. You know, Brian Blevins was in here. He would be able to tell us how to, to properly zoom in on all of this. Uh, and then you'll even be able to see, you know, for those of you who read the first one, you know how he got the scars. And they were able to even recreate the uh, bear claw marks in the back. And then the big one. Guys, so you'll see that the packages that they uh, they come in. So we're going to pop this one out. This is You might call it a clamshell. This is going to be the same thing. It's got its base. It attaches on just like the, uh, the 50 millimeter. But now you'll be able to see the size difference. The D&D &D size miniatures. But for those of you who want it to look more like a statue, these are the prototypes that we got in. Um, you can definitely see it. I'm going to go in again. There it goes. Check that out. Even on the scabbard, all the details came out on the boots. Everything. And a lot of you guys are like master painters and stuff. The axe head, for those of you who read the uh, first book, know all about why it's special and what it's going to do. But uh, I'm going to just show you the sizes here. Once again, you can see the 25, the 100, and then there's the 50. So there are the three sizes for those of you that are gamers. Some of you just want statues. Um, these are the prototypes of the ones we got out. So, yeah, that's going to be – this is cool stuff, guys. It turned out uh, really great. So obviously Cordrath is the first one that we've done uh, for this. And uh, we're probably going to wind up putting out um, maybe uh, I'm thinking we do a poll or something and you guys can let us know who the next one you want us to do is. It isn't all that cheap because we have them. Uh, these are custom sculpted in order for us uh, to get these and then uh, we can get them printed. So, yeah, they will come shipped with to you guys in the clamshell, the protective clamshell and everything. Yeah, they will look just like I'm getting down to it again. And I checked. They're they're added on everywhere. So uh, just inside says, how does it feel to have your own IP be born into real life just like that? Guys, it is cool because, you know. When a lot of people stop by the booth and stuff, and we were talking about the gaming side of it versus the comic, and they were like, we really want a two-inch or a 25-millimeter version of the characters to play. So you know what? This is the first step. Module one that you got, you'll now have a core draft. Module two is coming, and um, we will see what the next one will be. But, yes, we can look at getting that designed. But guys, great add-ons. These are 
they the sculpts turned out absolutely fantastic. And the clamshell that it comes in, there's you know they correlate to the size of the figure, so it's not like that two inch figure is going to be in the big clamshells with the five inch figure it comes in and stuff. Uh, but another exciting thing, add on in case you don't want to get it because we will go through the tiers. Oh, the core draft collector's box, but wait, but wait. Oh, that's not the one I want to do. I want to do, I think it's this one. Yes. And then this, we even got the prototype of the box right here. Uh, we debated going back and forth. What do we want to put on the front of the box? Yeah, we did. Uh, in, the, in the back of the box. And we went with the homage covers because it's just so classic. So on one side, you've got the Cordrat the Reckoning homage cover. On the other side, you've got Cordrath the Awakening homage cover. Uh, front of the box, Cordrath. If you put it in a bookshelf, slide it. Oops, let me do it the right way. There you go. Slide this into your bookshelf. You've got a little core draft art at the top. So if it's slid in, you can read the spine, Astonishing Comics. Uh, on the front where the box opens, you got the nice logo. One side of the box incorporating the art of the cover with core draft and the other side incorporating the art with the lovely Adriana. Beautiful. So, uh, hey, we got a, uh, look at that. We got a super chat. Tom Tom brings the funny. Brings the funny. Thank you, Tom. Hell guys, backers, uh, 36 and 42 here. You can count on my steel. Well, thank you so much, Tom. So much. Uh, guys, magnetic. No, it is not. It is a, uh, this is, this is, uh, one of the collector's boxes. It is cardboard. So it's there, opens up. This will hold. Now we can show. Uh, we'll go through the tiers. Let me just uh, close that bad boy up. Uh, let's see. Where are we at here? There we are. Uh, so if you just want to get the box as an add-on, and of course the last add-on is limited quantities available of uh, Core Draft the Reckoning because obviously... The only one we're going back to print on is with Bud's cover with Lilneth. Uh, not this Lilneth cover, but a new one we did, which I'll show you here. So let's go through those tiers. Core Draft the Awakening box bundle. What the box bundle? Man, I'm liking the sound of that. And you should too. This is the Awakening box. The Supreme Collector sees the complete set of all four variant covers of Core Draft the Awakening, including the black and white edition. Elevate your collection further with the latest game module and the coveted Adriana trading card. Uh, this is the ultimate collector's dream come true. All shipped in the Core Draft Collector's box, which will be shipped in a regular big brown box. So the collector's box is wrapped in uh, bubble wrap and does not get all mangled we don't want that so you get cover by get the awakening cover a b c but roots line art cover d the black and white edition game module volume two adriana trading card all in the collector's box just inside is asking does it ship flat or no. do you assemble it nope you guys almost everybody's probably ordering books we will assemble it for you. Your books will be placed in it and shipped with an outer box as well to protect all your great goodness on the inside. Yeah, guys, it would be be way too big to ship flat. Uh, <laughs> trust me, they shipped them, you know, because we got four. We literally got four of them made uh, so we could see the quality and they shipped them to us flat. And that's that's huge. So. So then you've got the Core Draft Game Module Volume 2, Cover A, Cover B, C, Bud Root Line Art Cover D, Black and White Edition of the book. Uh, you've got the Core Draft Volume 1, Second Chance, which has the new Bud Root uh, cover, which is this right here. So you can see it larger. 
Uh, it's from the Bud Root story. What's up, John? Hey, John, love to see you. It's from the Bud Root story from Cordrat the Reckoning. We thought the page looked fantastic, and we're like, that's got to be a cover. So there it is. That's the cover for the second chance, second printing of uh, the book. Yeah, well, guys, we did talk about what we wanted to do, and we really didn't want to do a, a, a second printing with the same cover because a lot of you guys really like your second prints and stuff. So we thought this was a great, glorious cover to have for a second printing that we can go back to. That's right. And if you do the volume one and two catch up here, that is the cover you will get. You will get Bud's cover. Like I said, we couldn't put up any of the previous covers in the catch-up tier because we're limited on the quantity and we didn't want to limit the amount uh, that people could get. Of course, the Head Sketch Commission H &R is available H &R again. About mega posters. So we've got a couple. We'll talk about posters, but we'll, we'll talk about that in just a little bit. That's right. Uh, figure sketch, of course, gets your 7x10 figure sketch. Uh, and then we do have limited to 50 core draft volume one and two get everything collector box everything thank you sir uh, have a great day yeah thanks man uh retail price for everything is 510 bucks we're doing it for 399 uh Guys, you get everything, literally everything. The black and white edition, Core Draft Volume 1, Manga Black and White Digest. Core Draft Volume 1, Digest in Color. You get the box. You get Core Draft Volume 1, all the covers. You get Core Draft Volume 2, all the covers. You get Game Module 1 and 2. You get the character cards and the map that uh, from the first campaign. You get the Volume 1 Artist Edition, which that will not fit inside the box because that is 9x12. Everything else fits inside this box. And you get the Adriana and Lilaneth trading cards as well. So that literally, you get everything. Everything. And, of course, we will be doing, even though it says stretch goals to be announced, Obviously, we will be doing character cards again for the next game module. Uh, the first one up is going to be Vordoom. We'll show you that later, guys. Got to keep a little... Uh... And, and I was going to say that when you get that box, we had to limit it to quantities. And I know some of you will be asking about that because we only have a certain number of first prints available. So they got uh, allocated for uh, those boxes, those special ones. Guys, we've had a lot of people on the website buying stuff. We've had people at the conventions coming up. So, yes, we are, are very limited, and a lot of people didn't even know about this, which is, which is why we're doing it. So for those of you that did miss out, you could get everything printed material from the first two campaigns in one nicely discounted, absolutely fabulous box. That's right. You sure can. And, uh, and yeah, and then we also allocated uh, copies. So when you, when you check out and you go to add-ons and you look at the different covers for uh, Cordrat the Reckoning, uh, I believe every one of those is limited as well. The artist edition is limited as well because we're not going back to print on the variant covers or any of the covers from the first campaign. And we're not going back to print on the artist edition. So it's all limited quantities. Uh, let's see. There's no secret tier for the big box. You get the Adriana trading card anyway. Do you still get first in line shipping? Um, yeah, I mean, I didn't do a secret tier for the big box or we didn't do a secret tier for the big box because the Adriana trading card is in there. Um, yes. The answer is yes. Will you still get yeah, first in line shipping? You do that. You know, if you're buying the big box to get caught up, you will be right you there with, with, with every Exactly. So that is a great uh, clarification, Randy. Always appreciate that. Yeah, great question. And yeah, if you're if you're going to pop for the big box, you will get front of the line shipping uh, with the big box as well. Backer oh, 53, thank you, thank you, now, you Naomi. 
are, are you ch uh, checking what time we might have to be popping on to Ethan's channel? Yeah, I sent him a message just letting him know we're doing a, a, a pre-stream pre until he's ready to go. Uh, I sent him the preview okay. to the campaign last night and uh, he wrote back, hell yeah, at nine o'clock last night. I know he did a stream last night. He might have been up late. So I keep checking to see uh, because eventually we will be jumping over there to uh, Ethan stream. But I think what I'll do is uh, let's but we see. Wanted to give, we really did want to try and cover all of this right away with you guys really before we took a lot of questions because you know you guys are the ones that are showing up immediately when we're launching here to chat and check it out a lot of you are already backing you know we we've put a lot of thought and effort into what we wanted to do and two because i'll be honest you guys had so many great suggestions and what you liked what you wanted to see moving forward and we took a lot of that to heart and uh hey we just kept uh we just kept working on it so we really want to show you that's uh, right evie said last night he was planning to stream for you guys tonight because he was closing out his fearsome preview campaign tonight oh okay well i mean that works too uh whatever whenever he wants to do that we're down so uh if we're going to stream with Ethan tonight, that's fine too. I did send the link around to some friends just now to see if they want to get in on the party this afternoon with us. So I'm down to streaming with Ethan tonight as well. Do you have any of those artist edition books in hand? I was close to getting one. Uh, could sell me one potentially if I see. Yeah, I've got one. Give me a second. I'll grab it. He said he wants to do work at 8 p.m. We'll do a stream with you for the launch. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Well, awesome. That is fantastic. Uh, that works. 8 p.m. works. So what is that? I just got, all right, let me grab one of the artist editions. Yeah, and I know, guys, um, I know we've had a number of people coming up at the shows, and they're like, oh, we were on the fence for the artist edition. And then when they get a chance to look at it, because we usually bring one to uh, the show or a few of them, you know, they're like, whoa, it is so much better in person than than what it shows. And there's only so much you can see on screen, but it turned out fantastic. So look at that. I don't know. I'm going to need to uh, be getting my bud Adriana cover. Yeah, you will. Guys, yeah. Bud just did a, a great job. And we talked about doing it where the two covers came together. And we're looking at it. Somebody mentioned posters, and we will we will take you. Uh, I'll pull up the uh, our website, and I'll show you guys some options. But uh, Andy's mm. wants to show you that. Da 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 na dun 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 da 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 na dun 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 dun. So this is uh, the artist edition. Uh, let me see. I've got a book. I'll show you guys how big it is compared to a regular book. Funny thing, I don't have a core draft next to me, but I'm always a whore. Uh, I'll compare it to the size of a regular graphic novel. Oh, look, it's First Man. Uh, so it's so the, the oversized artist edition hardcover is 9 by 12 inches. So it's bigger, of course. It is 96 pages. Um, hopefully you can see that good. You can get a sense. I mean, guys, this really looks like you're holding this. Uh, in your hand, you know, of course, had the table of contents. This not only has my art in it, but it has uh, Bud Root's cover. It has Bart Sears' art in it as well. Uh, there's Bud Root's variant cover actually right there from the first one. All the gray tones. Uh, here's some interior pages of mine. Yeah, Maroni, yeah. If the camera doesn't do it justice. It doesn't. I mean, we 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 want to show it to you guys so you get an understanding. But the paper quality of the material, how it printed out on that paper, just fantastic. Uh, let's see. It even has original art from the game module in it. Art's cover. I did some spot art for the game module as well. 
So that's in it. So there's a lot of good stuff in here uh, to uh, to check out for sure. And yeah, the camera does not do it justice. Thank you so much for that. Really appreciate that. Here, I'm gonna and show, that does not I'm fit gonna show you guys a, a couple of things here on the core draft because you guys were asking about posters. Now, um, we have, there's a few options that we have that they won't be necessarily part of this campaign. Um, uh, but we did get uh, some products. We took one of our prototypes we got to the show and it sold immediately. Uh, fantastic. So guys, we did get a couple, you'll notice we did get one 9.9 came back from CBCS, a uh, signed comic. Uh, and, uh, we've got that up on the website, uh, on, it's coredraft.com. Don't forget the hyphen between core and draft. And then uh, we've got, uh, you can see your options in there. But right here, you'll see this is, these are fleece. They're calling them blankets. Really, guys, these are not blankets. They're posters. They're like incredibly vivid felt posters. And um, uh, we took it to show people at the show and it sold. I came right back to the table. I'm like, Where'd the poster go? And he and he's like, oh yeah, it's old. <laughs> it, it's awesome. Um, and then we also have it, and they have multiple sizes. Um, and then there's one of the A cover. It's same thing, again, beautiful. You can get either a 30 by 40 or 50 by uh by 60, and you can see the pricing. Then you can have, if you're interested, you can have it shipped uh, directly to you. These are all uh, products on demand, um, you know, that they that they have. So that's the way to do it. Same thing if you were interested in like the Core Draft mug, which I was just at a friend's house uh, on Friday, and he served me V8 juice while we were chatting in a Core Draft mug. I loved it. But you can see some of the other things that they've got there. Uh, cards but anyway i just wanted to show you guys that for those of you that do want really cool vivid uh posters these are felt they call them blankets i call them posters if you really like thin blankets well that's that's on you that's right well dennis you like thin blankets because you never get cold but you like the feel of a little blanket over you so it's perfect a little blanket yeah, so you can definitely go get those. Are, are those the kind of mugs you can store in the freezer? Yes, that's where I keep mine all the time until I bust out a beer, which, you know, it's a Sunday. It's daytime. I could be drinking right now, but, and I was thinking about it, but now that we are, uh, we know Ethan's doing his thing at eight o'clock, uh, I'm thinking I might bust out a beer uh, at eight o'clock uh, tonight in the core draft mug. So, oh, look at Randy's got one of the core draft mugs. And Randy, do you keep yours in the freezer? It's the only place to keep it. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, it so is. There were certain products like the mugs, uh, the posters like that. We talked about do we put it in here? It is so much easier with the companies that are that are making them to have them direct ship to you from the manufacturer. So it was just easier and better for you guys to set it up that way. Besides, when we ordered that blanket, I put in the order and I had it here literally in a few days. Yeah, I mean the stuff ships quick. It obviously the blanket, the the blankets in the mug ship, uh, you know, they drop ship. They're from a third party uh distributor. We don't have the blankets and the mug on hand just to ship out. Uh, but they ship out quickly. So there you go. Nate D four bucks. Thank you back. So hyped for the next chapter. And guys, I have, we showed five pages. I have 11 pages drawn. So, uh, Oh, there you go. Thank you very much, Marcus. Uh, yeah, I've, I'm 11 pages into this book. So very, uh, very thrilled about that as well. And uh, yeah, we are, uh, you got this Andy and team. Thank you very much. So we're moving along. We might, we might, we haven't, we're still looking into it. 
but we might drop a poster of give me a second here and uh i'll tell you what I, i'll show you uh what i'm talking about no uh, give me one second so i can just upload it because it'll be that much easier got one beer left over from the fights last night congrats thank you so much admiral whackass so guys we might make this a 24 uh by 36 inch poster um and i actually have a few posters in my office hanging up and i was like well how big is that compared to what i have hanging up because i'm looking at the posters i have and i'm like they're pretty big i hope it's that big and they are the posters i've ha i have hanging up are 24 by 36 so if we add this it would ship separately so that's why it's not up right now um so you don't have to think like oh darn it i could have you know i could have backed the book and then added on the poster um because the poster would not be an add-on because it would ship separately because it would come rolled in a tube it would not be folded nobody likes a crease going through their poster so uh you know if we do add it down the road you know you would just go and back it pay the separate shipping cost and uh there you go but if you guys so, are interested and you want that kind of a poster let us know you, you guys are not shy on feedback we love it that's why we have so many different things because a lot of the things we're just showing you right now with the posters um you know the the mugs um the koozies the uh the coasters these are all things you guys said you wanted the uh the mini figures same thing you guys wanted these so bam um i did see up here hang on let me just uh see if we can find it uh am i crazy that i like fourth edition and second edition and be who's with me hated fourth edition it's the only one i didn't really like uh second edition that goes my favorite it really is just one of something that's near and dear to my heart but if you guys like the 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 role-playing side of it on the uh and i put it down here you guys can follow me on my youtube at dennis turner the youtube channel where andy and i we both have our dna stuff on there but we're going to be starting up a role-playing uh, uh chat uh brian blevins will be joining us on the regular um joe bernardo uh role players and we'll be having guests coming on there i know john's long box uh we will be having john on as a guest but we are going to be talking role-playing stuff and uh on the on the regular and uh there's a lot on there so anyway if you haven't followed follow me at dennis turner for youtube and uh, at dinges comics for x you can stay in contact because we're going to be rolling that out probably in the next few weeks here oh very nice very nice that is what I uh, that is what I like to see, and then uh, let's see. We have what is up to say? I have no idea. It will but, be soon. Oh, look at that! The mini figs that you can get: two inch, three inch, five inch size core drafts. You can get them. They're add ons. Uh, backer sixty big box. All right. Thank Ooh, you so much, you Randy. Two bucks. Randy, you rock. You do, my friend. So here you go, just to show you uh, the a bigger shot of uh, the figures there. Um, the detail is incredible on the largest one, the five-inch figure, obviously. The three inch figure, the detail is great. The two inch figure for being that small, the detail is really nice. And that is, of course, uh, from what Dennis informs me, the standard size for role playing games. So you can get that as a nice nifty add on and use it to play with. Oh, look at that beautiful cover art by uh, Bart Sears and Dan Lawless for uh, the new uh, game module. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful yep. stuff. Old school role playing guys. You will. I got a lot of feedback from the first one, and uh, 
I am continuing with the second one. You guys really love the old late 70s, early 80s feel of the module. You like that type of play. It's simple, yet a lot of fun packed into it. And I took all the feedback and, and improving on what we're doing on the second module. That's right. Uh, got your proportions. You know, HR, I tell Dennis all the time, I modeled Cordrath after myself. So he should have my proportions, broad shoulders, big pecs. I'm glad, I'm glad you noticed. I just wish the person that I see a few times a week in person would notice and compliment me that way too. Oh, I hope you don't mean me. I'm assuming you meant your family. <laughs> no, I meant you. Oh, wow. no. Uh, that, that's like that's like Andy. And then that's like Dennis. Bad Andy. Bad Andy. Oh, you know, I hope that breaks because of what you're doing. Um, well, I can super glow. That's true. I, uh, in all actuality, though, that figure should look like uh, the proportions I draw because that was literally, uh, that figure was sculpted from a drawing that I did. So um, that's the other thing, even if you're not into the role playing, but you want to get the five inch uh, figure of Cordrath, it's like holding a piece of my art, you know, in 3D, just like this one was. Uh, oh, look at that. Brohawk is in the house. What is up, Brohawk? Thank you very much. We need to have you back on the DNA show on a Wednesday sometime soon. We do. We were just talking about that. We, we'll reach out to you shortly. Mini Smith. Yeah. So that that core draft figure is. It's like uh, it's like holding up a drawing I did, just like this first man bust I did uh, was also digitally sculpted from my art. So uh, there you go. And, and you can. And, and MD Houghton's got it right. Those were my calves. Yes, they were. Yeah, I mean, when he was in college, and then, you know, he became himself and deflated and everything, so his calves look more like uh, <laughs> Adriana's now, so. Nice. Yeah, they deflate. Uh, let's see, Admiral Wackass, love him, Andy, does that style so well and all his stuff. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, guys, when you say that they took Andy's drawing and turned and sculpted it, I mean, it is, I mean, he was so good. That sculptor just nailed it in, in every facet. So congrats. So, uh, yeah. Smokey Concat says, hey, guys, got to say my shirt's mighty comfy to wear. Oh, we'll probably be doing shirts a little later on this campaign, too. Uh, it's not important. Andy Smith, core draft, coincidence, probably. Well, I mean, I want to call him Core Smith, but Dennis was like, I don't know if that's going to work for the title of the book, Core Smith. And I was like, okay, whatever, Dennis. What about Andrath? And he was like, no, we're not doing that either. And I was like, fine, fine, Dennis. It won't be Ann Smith, Andrath, or Core, Core Smith, whatever. Core Smith, nope, he shot that down too. It's always shooting down these wonderful ideas that I have. Very hurtful. Very hurtful. So uh, let's see here. Uh, do, do, do. One sec. Here, I'm typing something in for you guys. Me too. Oh, look at that. Who do you guys want for your next figure? You guys will be our first uh, uh, a poll. Which one do you want sculpted next? You guys want Adriana? Type, give me a one or type in the name. A two would be Lilineth. Give me the name or two. And Necronite. And then the question, I guess, would become if it's Necronite, do you want him on his horse or do you want him separate? Oh boy, wow, look at these coming through for here. Dennis was for sure thinking it was going to be low on F, and I know that because we talked about it. And uh, so far, Necronite's coming up as the winner. It is, it is. So, oh, Marcus, we got a one for Adriana. Oh. See, I kind of like Adriana because you know, Cordrath and Adriana are a 
they're a sweet little couple. They get together. You could put them in positions like they're making babies. Well, you can't because they're not posable, but you know, use your imagination or get Cordrat the Reckoning and you don't have to use your imagination. Look at all those Necronites. I Boy. know, Dennis, this has got to be blowing your little mind. Well, I, I said, I, I, I actually said, I, I thought it would be from all of our other feedback, Lilith would probably be what people would ask for first, followed by the Necronite. Oh, Necronite on that horse, though. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. They're bumping uglies, he says. You know, oh. all I'm picturing is like space balls with Dark Helmet playing with his figures behind the table. Yeah. Looks up, go. Uh, with his horses, I think you mean. Not, not a, not horse. That was the options, right? Uh huh. Uh, nice. Set up a poll. I think, well, I think we're, that's what we're going to wind up doing is we're, we're, we're going to do a poll because, um, um, if if we see enough people are ordering this, set up a Twitter poll. Yeah, it is it is fairly expensive to uh, to get the sculpting and everything um, properly done, and um, you know if if Cordraft does really well and you guys like him as a figure, we knew he he's the title of the book. He had to be number one. If he does well, then obviously we will move forward and we will uh, start popping up some other ones. Well, that's right, guys. If you signed up to the campaign, I sent an email out to everybody that signed up. So check your spam folder for the Secret Tears links to uh, the campaign. Don't miss out because uh, using those links will get you the Adriana trading card for free and front of the line shipping and also front of the line shipping for... Uh, we're going to do front of the line shipping. We have decided not only for the big box at the bottom that gets you everything from one and two, but we'll do front of the line shipping for the big box uh, as well. The Core Draft Awakening big box uh, tier at the top featured tier. We'll front of the line ship for that and do front of the line shipping for the, the big bad daddy that gets you scrolling super fast. Uh, everything from one and two. So if you did miss out on the first campaign, you can get it all. 510 bucks retail down to 399 for you guys. And of course, uh, retail on the Core Draft Awakening box, which is pretty much everything from uh, the Core Draft Awakening, all the covers, the game module, obviously all the stretch goals. Uh, the Cordrath box uh, retail value 162 years for 135. Oh, oh, oh! That makes it nice for everybody. That anybody that lives out of country, out of the United States, that is the value right there because the shipping isn't that much more for the Cordrath Awakening big box than if you were just to buy one book. I am so sorry that we don't control shipping rates, but... Guys, what that is one thing we have spent a lot of time on is because um, we know Andy and I, we are just like you guys. We back a lot of our favorite creators. I, we back a lot of books. And a lot of times they're from the UK or, or Australia or from wherever, right? So we know how much it costs that, that we pay for shipping. And we sat down and tried to figure out, you know, how can we get you guys the best bang for the buck and shipping over there? And guys, what can I say? This is a great deal for us to, to do the shipping. And uh, Australia is the most expensive. Um, and it, it's just weird how they do it. But needless to say, we, we took all that in consideration. And that is a great way to get bang for your buck and the best shipping that we can really ship overseas. Yep. There, well, yeah, you summed it up perfectly. Perfectly. Uh, even shipping to Canada is stupid prices. Yeah, I mean, Canada is not as bad. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, Canada is not as bad, but it is stupid. I mean, yeah, I mean, we're in North Carolina, so it's not like, you know, 
it's a long drive, but I just think of the people that live in like Buffalo, Graham, Graham lives in Buffalo. He ships something to Canada. And I mean, you've seen Graham. He's a buff dude. Graham could probably just be like, Hey, meet me at the border and just throw it over and you could catch it. And then he would save totally on shipping. I blame oh. Bancroft. Don't blame him. He, <laughs> We love getting stuff from Michael and, you know, we, we totally understand how much stuff costs and, you know, he's got great ways uh, around it and, you know, guys, we can do what we can do. And, uh, but we, we, we really went through different ways to try and save you guys money overseas. We do. Uh, guys, we went and saw Thursday night for those that did not see our review we do a movie review every Friday morning. We see a movie on Thursday. This last week, we went and saw Civil War. No, not the re-release of the MCU movie, but Civil War is uh, a new movie by A24. Basically, the country has been was broken up into different factions, and it follows four journalists, Kirsten Dunst, is the main actor in the movie. She's the, she's the battle tested, uh, war photographer and, uh, her and three other people are making their way from New York city to Washington DC. Cause they want to get one last interview with the president. Um, you know, I'll say this about it. They didn't do a, they didn't, they did a good job with Nick Offerman being uh, the actor playing the president of not going, oh, he's the right or he's the left. It kept it pretty amorphous. They didn't, you know, even the people, you know, on the ground fighting and stuff, they didn't say left or right. They kind of left it up to the viewer to determine. And uh, it wasn't bad. California, Texas team up in it, right? Uh yeah, I mean, explain that, Dennis. Yeah, the the answer is yes. There's four factions. One of the things that they really wanted to do in it is obviously with this being an election year, he wanted to show this is a mirror movie. It's also a movie of a road trip where they're going to hold up the mirror and we have to look at it as a self-reflection as to a uh, what if, what if we don't do things a, a better way? What could, what could happen to us? And um, so Texas, if you've got the red estate, the blue estate, something happens. They don't explain what, which is kind of nice. They leave it open. Something happens where those two team up. They, they basically create the Western forces and there are the loyalist factions. There's a number of different ones. And everybody's vying, and it turns into a multi-front uh, uh, civil war in the United States. The journalists, these were are what I would call actual journalists, because today the 24-hour um, news cycle has turned everything into opinion pieces. These reporters aren't communicators. They're photojournalists, and they're there to take pictures and let everybody do it. They don't take sides. They take the pictures, and they let it. So it was it was very interesting movie. Comic Kelsey in the House has awakened just in time for the awakening. Oh, yeah. So there you go with that. Uh, let's see. You're right. They would never be on the same side. Something had to have happened. And uh, it's very interesting. Um, the movie's good. It is worth it. Um, they they stay neutral in this while presenting a compelling story. It was much better than I thought it was going to be. So kudos for Alex Garland for um, doing that for, for good entertainment. Yeah, I mean, I've heard, well, we gave it our review. I've heard uh, other, you know, I've seen other people that enjoyed it and stuff. So, you know, it it's interesting. It's thought provoking. Um, you know, I liked it. I thought the actors, you know, Kirsten Dunst did a good job. Uh, the girl that plays the 23-year-old uh, reporter that wants to be a photo journalist that looks up to Kirsten Dunn's character. Besides the fact she looks 12 and not 23, 
Uh, she did a great job. Uh, Andy, can we see cover B? Of course you can. I can show it to you. Uh, instead of scrolling down to show it, I'll just do it that way. And uh, there you go. Uh, there is the homage cover. Cover uh, B. Uh, Marcus, don't answer the question. Now that we have more viewers, what did I use as reference to homage this cover from? What was the original cover that I pulled this from? Uh, Marcus, you are not allowed to answer. Anybody else can. Dennis, you're not allowed to answer. Anybody but Marcus. <laughs> Everybody but Marcus and Dennis. I know Dennis wouldn't, but, you know, sometimes I like to throw it out there. Uh, oh, Marcus just did a bunch of things. He was ready. He probably already had it typed in. He probably did. He probably did. So there is that cover. Uh, looks so badass. I can see why people, oops, people want his figure classic versus hero villain duo with core draft figure. Yeah. Uh, let's see. It was a King Call cover. Nope. Uh, Smokey Concat knows what it is, but if he wants to answer, he can. Uh, Conan, Conan is correct, but we're looking for issue number, guys, not just title. We're looking for issue number. And if you get it right and you live near us or come to a show, Dennis will give you a full body massage uh, if you get it right. Well, that's it. Nobody's answering. <laughs> uh, Admiral <laughs> Wackan, yeah. my friend, you are way off. Well, thank you for playing. Uh, it was a good try, though. Uh, let's see. It was a good try. It was a good try. Um, can I? Of course, you can take your guess back. You can guess as many times as you want. Doesn't bother me. Smokey says, "Yuck, hard pass." Well, I know in South Carolina Comic Con, you and Dennis went to the room for a while, so I assumed he was giving you a full body massage so you could talk about how good they are. Conan number two, you are correct, JC. JC got it. JC, you win a full body massage from Dennis if you see him at a show. Wow, you poor guy. I know. They're really not that good. His wife doesn't even want him. So <laughs> you're the worst. She's like, oh, that like for, for her birthday, Dennis wants to do that thing where you write out different coupons and stuff for your spouse. And uh, so he wrote out, you know, full body massage date night of your choice, dinner of your choice that he'll make. Cause you know, he's a pretty good cook. You know, he wrote stuff like that in his coupon book. And the weird thing was she asked for the gift receipt so she could take it back. I just felt so bad when Dennis told me that story. So bad. Dan Genovese in the house. Hello. Uh, Get the oil, Dennis. Oh, you poor, poor. Motor City. You know, we were just talking. That is one we haven't been to. That's my old neck of the woods. I'm a Wisconsin boy, and uh, it has been a while since I have been up to uh, Motor City. So, guys, another thing I can show that I'll be starting busy. Well, actually, I started yesterday. For those of you that got nice and tight, the comic book pencil art of Andy Smith, that's me. It's right here in my hands. Oh, look at this. It's nice and spiral bound. So if you want to take vellum, vellum is a thicker tracing paper and practice your inking by laying it over these pages. Well, spiral bound because we made the stretch goal, fold it back on itself, lays nice and flat. These are going out this week. So if you back this, it's nice, heavy uh, cover stock, nice interior stock. So this will be going out this week, guys. Uh, Prater7 says, uh, Andy, did you feel bad for Dennis or his wife? Um, I felt bad for his wife because she couldn't get a refund uh, on the coupon book. So because, you know, Dennis was like, well, if I, if, if, I, if I gave you a refund, I made the coupon book. This book is pretty invaluable, so I can't put a price on it. So there's no way he could give her a refund. I know I felt really bad. I said, yeah. well, what does, uh, 
I said, well, Dennis, what does McDonald's charge for their, uh, remember the old McDonald's gift cards, Christmas commercials? I said, whatever those cost is probably what that coupon book is worth. Uh, Hail Dennis and chat 10 bucks, Paul Taylor. Thank you. Uh, backer 77. I have to wait a whole year to read the next part. Looking forward to it at any rate. I used the secret perk email, but it didn't look like it was added. Uh, wait, what do you mean? It didn't look like it was added. I don't know what that means because basically if you use the secret perk in the email, the only difference is it shows that it has the Adriana trading card. When you, when you click on the perk, the drop down will show like, you know, cover a, and then below that Adriana trading card. So we make sure you get it. So it didn't show up on the total. No, I don't think it would. I don't, I don't think it does that. As long as it shows on the drop down when you clicked it, whatever tier you backed, you know, the cover and stuff. So, uh, and yes, uh, spiral bound for your pleasure right there. Of course. You oh, guys yeah. get the stretch goal. Andy had the stretch goal, and he really was hoping you guys would because it's a great and it it turned out great. Yeah, Den that's the one thing at Dennis living close. Uh, he backed it, which I thanked him for. He signed up early, so he got the, the he got the trading card that came with signing up early, and uh I, I think i'm the lucky one because oh 76 backers six thousand four hundred forty four dollars thank you guys so much and uh he paid me shipping and i just gave it to him when he was over here the day yeah, they showed up come to my house to do it he gave it to me while i was at his house that just seems wrong but hey whatever the big dope man. forgot to pick up the big dope forgot to take his trading card with him so uh, when he comes over Wednesday for our show with our buddy Bart Sears, DNA show this Wednesday, 3 p.m., Bart Sears is the guest. And I believe we'll be doing an art auction. Bart might be bringing some stuff to sell. Oh, Bart Sears stuff to sell? That doesn't happen very often. The first ever DNA show live art auction, Wednesday, 3 p.m., Bart bringing stuff to sell. I might pull some stuff to sell. Uh, Randy says should add nice and tight as an add on. Yeah, I didn't overprint uh, a lot on nice and tight. I'm going to just put it right up on my website uh, for people to just buy. And then they, they don't have to wait till I start. Uh, we start fulfilling this. So that's why. Uh, digital version is great. Can't wait for the physical book. Bloody Drake, I'm glad you got it. I sent that email out. I even sent one to Dennis just to double check and click on to make sure that the link worked. I sent one to Bart to click on and make sure the link worked. So I am uh, very glad to hear that uh, you got it. Uh, Core Draft was a fun read. Interesting to see where you guys take the story. Thank you. Uh, that is my website. Thank you so much, Randy. Uh, nice and Tight is not up there yet. It will be up once I finish fulfillment of the book, which it should only take me a week or a uh, week, we can change to do the fulfillment on it. So uh, I will put it up there as soon as it's done. So there you go. Uh, let's see. Dennis, just to let you know, uh, I bought my ticket for the movie for this Thursday. Oh, you did. I did. So if you want to, uh, if you want to take a second and uh, uh, go to the app, and uh, buy your ticket. I can tell you my seat. Oh, and there's only yeah. one. And for all of you that are local, you'll hear it. And you could pick out seats right next to us and get stuck listening to this movie with Andy. Well, I'm not going to dox us that much. Well, it feels uh, like you are. It's the, it's the, it's, I'll, 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 I'll give hints. Which it's the theater? theater closer to you. That's my hint. So you should know what that one is. Oh, okay. It's at 6 p.m. because there's only one showing. And I have seat. Hold on. Thursday. Do, do, do. Wait, it's the one. It, it, that's the showing that you said, oh, there'll be more. Yeah, there's not apparently. So. Oh. See. And if for some reason there are, well, we can refund this ticket and get another one. So, so right now. You? What's your seat? I'm, 
E4. Okay. Bingo. Even though there's no E in bingo. Uh, let's see. Uh, Venus Friday. Don't E. Venus and Furs, a.k.a. Devil in the Flesh, kinky stuff. See the trailer. Okay. Oh, Dr. Mass, come on, my friend. Get I'm on it and read like it. You, have to, you haven't read it? He has to finish reading it, Dennis. Unlike you, some people like to take their time when they read books. Well, I did get caught up for uh, uh, one of the mainstream books I have been getting is Image Skybound has been doing. They relaunched the Transformers, the G.I. Joe titles in the new universe. It has been really decent. So I did get caught up reading all of that. Well, there you go. So yeah. I know we got a lot more people on now than what we did when we started. I think we should go up and, sh and watch the trailer. And uh, kind of kick a little of this from the top. Kick it like it's a thing, yo. So some okay. guy says, if we back using the secret tiers, we get the air. Yes. 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 Yep. So anybody who got, uh, anybody who signed up um, ahead of time and went on the mailing list to join us today, you guys all got the uh, email, so check your spam because a lot of times it might go into spam. But uh, you guys will have that as long as you use that secret link, you'll automatically get the uh, the card for absolutely free. And then there is a there is a add on for I believe I did it for both trading cards. So the only add on. Trading card by itself is Adriana, but there's an add-on for Adriana and Lilith. So some guy, you would have to get, you'd have to do that add-on, which would get you two Adriana cards and one Lilith card. I didn't do a, I don't believe, God, there's so much stuff to this campaign. I don't believe there's a separate add-on just for the Lilith card, but there might be. Paul says there is an add-on for both cards. Uh, but yeah, I don't believe there's, but I mean, you know, it's not that much and you'd get two Adriana cards. So you could have, uh, one, uh, if you ever see it as at a show, you could just get one signed and then keep the other one pristine like, uh, Aaron LaPresti would do. Uh, uh, let's see. Do you guys have Bud doing anything on this book? Uh, he did the variant cover and, uh, that's what he did as of now. Is there a possibility of another uh, short story by Bud? There's a possibility of anything. We'll just yes. uh, we'll leave it at that. Yes. So. Just stay tuned uh, in the near future. Yep. There's always more things to come. Uh, you don't see that there's a buy Andy and Dennis a beer either because uh, we'll be adding that later. That's just not that important right now. Um, so... Uh, We'll be adding shirts later as well. It's just, oh, let's hit refresh. Then we'll go through the campaign again, like Dennis suggested. Uh, you're welcome. Um, yeah, so there's always going to be stuff. You know, shirts will be added later and they ship separately. So it's not something that it's like, oh, darn it. Now I'm going to have to refund and back a shirt. Nope, because shirts ship separately say that five times fast seven like thousand we uh we we did uh we did send out stuff for shirts there will be a shirt for uh cordrath the awakening so uh yeah you'll just stay tuned for that because that'll that will be coming uh dr mass says uh hard to catch up we have 1800 comics on the to read list uh dr mask you, my friend, are a monster because I have <laughs> I have less than 10. I literally have less than 10 books to read on my to read list. And that is overwhelming to me right now. So, OK, I got a question for for Dr. Mass there. Uh, Dr. Mass, mm -hmm. how many books do you get a week? Do you do you go down to your local funny bookstore every week and pick it up? And if you do. How many do you buy a week? This will could tell me the difference between you and Andy. That's right. 
I believe, by the way, real quick, I think that's Canada money because, uh, yeah, that's Canada money, I guess, because uh, the Adrian, because they're a little bit less, unless that includes the shipping, but I still think they're a little bit less than that. But um, I have 18 long boxes. Yeah, you should just take those to a store and get store credit. My friend, I would never, I, I, ugh, I'm telling you, I'm not kidding. I have at least five CG books that I still have to read. And then probably three trade paperbacks of older stuff, you know, Marvel DC stuff that I still have to read. And Dennis will tell you, I'm not joking. I feel overwhelmed just because of that. Yeah, here, I'll show you. I'm going to show you the books that I have on my reading list here that I have to read. You ready? Ready? Yeah. There's one. What's up? Is that Ghosts? Yeah. I told you when that came in the mail, you need to put everything aside and read it so we could talk about it. Good Lord. I, know. I did just get this uh, uh, from the show, which we probably should talk about once we're done with all of this. The Graveyard Shift 1 and 2. I have not read Black and White yet. That that arrived just this uh, 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 very recently. And Florida Man, I flipped through and I was like, oh, so that's on my on my. I, I need to read. And then of course, uh, I also have that one because I love that cover. But uh, so right. yeah, I got I got a, a, a number of books that I have not had time to read. Been doing a lot of stuff. That is my reading list. I did get caught up on uh, on most of my other stuff here, so I'm good there. Yeah, I got to read Black and White. I picked up Graveyard Shift Volume 3. I have to read a genuine comics. Who would win in a fight between Conan and Cordrath? Oh, Cordrath would cut his head off while drinking a Axe Mead beer and not even break a sweat. That's right. Easy. Uh... Paul says he has 18 to read plus one more on the way from Aaron, right? Uh, five bucks, Randy Howell. Thank you. Genuine Comics. I have the answer as I bought the sketch cover comic. Oh, there you go. Uh, I did read Ghosts, though. Andy got the best treatment of all CG Kings. Billy, I felt sorry for. Oh, I thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, read that. Thank you, Randy. Um, all right. Let's burn through this again for newcomers. Core Draft the Awakening is here. Uh, let's see. Hold on. I'm trying to do radio voice. Venture forth into the fractured realm of the Shattered Reach, where Kordrath, the indomitable warrior and last scion of the Red Lions tribe, embarks on a quest steeped in destiny. His heart aflame with unyielding love, he is driven to rescue his beloved Adriana's people of the Black Eagles tribe from the clutches of Vor Doom, the undying the relentless undead creature whose shadow stretches across the land. Kordrath's path is fraught with peril as he seeks a legendary artifact, the key to obliterating the sinister darkness. Brace yourself for an epic, heart-pounding odyssey brimming with fierce battles, awe-inspiring magic and twists that will leave you breathless with anticipation. There you go, guys. Let's burn through and look at some of this fun stuff that you can get. Cordrath cover A, Andy Smith and Dan Lawless doing it again, bringing the heat like it's hell. That's how hot we are as a team working together. Cordrath cover B, homage cover, homage, as Dennis likes to say. Homaging what? Conan number two, of course. Uh, cover C. By the indomitable team of Bud Root and Dan Lawless, variant cover, looking gorgeous. And are you like, wait a second, that strikes as kind of familiar. Well, you know it, guys. We have a plant. We think that far ahead. Could there be more covers that connect? Time will tell. If you missed out on the low enough cover, add it on, guys. Add it on. There you go, Paul. Smart man. Mark's Smart asking, man. is the button root black and white cover 24 hours like last time? Uh, nope, we're leaving that sucker up. Uh, it's just, it's there. It is there for you guys. 
We decided so, not to tease you guys like last time. That's right. We don't tease. We sneeze. That makes no sense, but it was a quick rhyme. Black and white edition. No, not an artist edition. Not oversized. Regular comic book size. Uh, the black and white art. It is... Uh, uh, I definitely like to make the distinction. It is not um, like an artist edition where you can see all the gray tones. I've adjusted all the values. So it's black and white. It's the way the pages look when I send them to the colorist. Nice uh, high contrast black and white. So the whole book, black and white. And then, of course, preview pages. Oh, that castle just scares me. Just scares me. Uh, some guy says I backed A and B in the two-card pack. Thank you so much. Uh, and then, of course, Vordoom, he is not too thrilled with the Necronite. Uh, and if you don't know why, uh, well, you should read Cordrat the Reckoning and find out why he's not thrilled with him. Uh, P.D. Ma. Uh, Hail Andy and Dennis, love book one, love and cover B. Was there a game one? There was, and you can get it on checkout as an add-on. Uh, the game module one, Mayhem in the Miramador Mountains. You can get it on checkout, and it comes with the four playable character cards and the map of the Shattered Reach. So uh, there you go. And you can see the uh, Bart Sears cover on uh, the first one. And yes. Arsters will be the cover on the second one as well. That is true. More monsters appear in this one that I designed from some great, uh, great conversations I had with Dennis. Like a Green Bay Packer, even though those guys blue, he likes to eat bears. Yeah, Dennis really do. wanted me to have the guy color greenish yellow because of the Packers. And I was like, I'm not doing that, Dennis. I'm just not doing it. It would have been so cool. Didn't matter. We could put the number 12 or the number four or the number 10. It all means the same thing. No, no. So we got the preview pages. We got the character rundown for anybody new to it. Read about the characters. Of course, you can go to cordrath.com, uh, cordrath put the hyphen in between core and draft, and you can read all about uh, Cordrath. You can read the first 11 pages of book one. And then we've got the new game, Demise and Dracomort. What's that all about, Dennis? Well, for those of you who got the first one, it is definitely a, a different story. But uh, this will take place in the Shattered Reach, just like this. It will not be the same uh, story that um, that's in the comic book. These are completely separate, but they do tie in. So like in the first one, you got introduced to another of the tribes that was not talked about in the comic book. It's all about world building, but this one is great. Um, on this one, the spawn of a defeated dragon from generations ago has returned home and is very upset at what happened when they took out his mother. So much is going to be happening in this uh, new one. I've already got the first two parts um, play tested uh, locally. I'm doing some changes, some additions, um, and then I'm going to be sending it out. I've got a group in Vegas that's going to be playing it and another group up north. And uh, But this will be another great old school role playing, um, just like the first one. I took a lot of their feedback, guys. I know you love the first one. You love the old feel of the uh, the uh, late 70s, early 80s styles. It's a very simple yet exciting uh, module. So we're, we're, we're going to continue with the theme of the old school ones um, for this. That's right. We love retro stuff. Of course, there's a new parody ad. Click on the link below. Go to the campaign. Back the book. Read the parody ad. This one is in the Looney Tunes vibe as well. For all you uh, old school peeps, you'll recognize that orange character. Uh, some guy 209, will you be streaming with Ethan later today? You know it. Yes. The answer to that is yes. You know it. Uh, so go check, uh, check it out. Read the parody ad. Another fun one with Axe Mead. Uh, Ale, 
Stretch goals coming later. A few great add-ons. Core draft, the awakening, the layouts. I got a tip of the hat to Aaron Lepresti. Aaron does his uh, Wraith of God, uh, the roughs. Uh, and I, I love that stuff. I love behind the scenes. So we're putting out Core Draft, the Awakening, the layouts. Uh, it's going to be regular book size, not smaller or anything. Um, and it will feature all my layouts. I'm scanning all the pages before uh, I ink them. So you can compare both books and see what the final inks look like over some of uh, my page layouts and stuff. And you can see how they might've changed because sometimes things change. Uh, Cordrat the Reckoning Mongus Digest Size. What's that all about, you ask? Well, I can tell you, uh, to the left, you can see a little image, a uh, faint image of Cordrath comic book size, and you can see the size difference with the manga size in black and white that is uh, gray toned with dot patterns just like manga. That's right. We got 12 or no, 10 of these printed up. Not cheap to print 10 books, but we did it because we wanted to see how they looked and felt in hand. Uh, let's see. Are you guys streaming on Rumble? Uh, Aaron and Graham are getting pretty good numbers streaming on both. Oh, they stream on Rumble as well? I didn't know that. I know they stream on X. We stream on X. I didn't know they streamed on Rumble as well. We need to figure it out. Uh, I still don't. It's, you know, unless StreamYard has changed, it's, uh, it's uh, features on adding another platform. It was not. Oh, X. Yes. Yeah, we stream on X. Yes. Well. Yes. Rumble, we do want to stream on, but. See, behind the scenes, a uh, little inside baseball, when in StreamYard and settings, when you want to add another platform, you just click like, oh, X, oh, YouTube, oh, Facebook, whatever. For Rumble, they don't have a thing where you click Rumble. You have to get like some code or something to pop in. It's kind of a pain in the butt, uh, but we definitely want to do that. Anyhow, here is uh, the digest color version and you can see in the visual that it is smaller than the book but bigger than the manga size and this is in color and both of these smaller books are e for everyone so uh that one randy page between cordrath and adriana has been edited so uh e for everyone can read it so there you go. Those well, are available. Question, Andy, are the figures sent uh, spruce style or some assembly required? Here, I'll show you. Pop me up. We can show you. Here, just pop me up. Okay. One second. Oops, wrong one. Hold on. Got it. So they come in blister in 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 the protective blister packs, depending on the size. They'll come in the box, you know, and uh, when they come, you got a base. You got a figure, and you go just like that. There's your assembly. Everything else is complete. Yep. That's it. That's it. It's all put together. Yep. Except it's for the base. Done. You don't have to do anything. Now, I I already know a lot of you guys have been asking about, because a lot of you guys like to paint them and stuff. Of course you can paint them, you know? Oh, yeah. Them, just like any of the other ones. And... Uh, I really do want to see you as you guys do this. I'd love for you guys to send us pictures of your versions of, of painted core draft. Love to see what you guys do. Just like and if anybody out there, if anybody out there is really, really uh, talented at doing miniature painting, drop us a line and maybe we'll send you one of these prototypes to paint and uh, let us know what that would cost. Uh, ND wants to know, are those the same colors as the full size book? Yes, uh, 100%, obviously, except for the one edited page. Uh, actually, there's two edited pages. It's just the second page have one panel we had to edit, but the colors are the same. Yes. Yep. It's a smaller book, easier to carry around. And like I said, if you had like a 12, 13 year old, uh, even 10 year old that you were like, I'd really like them to read this book, but it's not really kid appropriate. 
in the full size graphic novel uh, because of that page, page and a half. Now you can uh, get a digest size and they could take it to school and they could read it and not have a problem. And uh, yeah, so there's that. Of course, we also are offering our first box, which we paid to have four of these made because we wanted to see uh, what the box would look like uh, before we offered it for sale. On one side, you've got the first homage cover for the Reckoning. On the other side, you've got the second uh, homage cover. It translated really well. That's yeah. why we got those books. That's why we printed 10 of each, because we wanted to see them in print uh, before we sold them. So we figured it's worth it to pay you know, yep. the extra cost for, <laughs> for 10 of each. And, and if they wouldn't have turned out good, we wouldn't have offered them. They would have just been books we ordered for nothing, but you know, both the, uh, the manga and the colored digest turned out absolutely fantastic because we did have a lot of you guys asking, you know, do, is, do you have a, basically a PG 13 version, something for the re younger readers to, to read. So we listened, we came out with a couple of them, and we've had a number of people look at them, and they loved it, and it's turned out great. This, of course, this is the box. This can go on your bookshelf if you want, so you have a nice spine to it. it says what it is. Nice little shot of Cordrath up top. You can lay it flat. Cordrath on the front flap. Of course, you've got, oops. Uh, when you lay it flat this way, because this is debuting for this campaign, the second uh, homage cover is on top. But, you know, if you want to lay it upside down, uh, you could. And then you'd have that uh, homage cover where you just sit it up and display it on a table and see both covers. Uh, on each end, we've got a portion of the cover from... The Awakening by myself and Dan Lawless, too. We want to incorporate that art as well. So there you go. And the box will ship already put together and uh, will ship inside of a regular brown box. And we will, of course, you know, ship with bubble wrap because we don't want the collector box to get messed up in shipping. So That's there you go. Oh, thank you very much. I still have a couple that I have to put together because we ordered four of them. Dennis put one together. I put one together. And uh, I think uh, I still have two that can be put together. And let me tell you, when those things shipped to us, they were flat and they were huge. Uh, is that box pink on the inside? You know, Dennis wanted that option. And I said, no, Dennis, no. He's just and then when I said no to that. Most of them are. This is This is not. Yeah. When Dennis said no to that, he said, well, can we do rainbow colors on the inside? And I said, you really should never have marched in that parade last year. You have changed. So, but June is his favorite month. I don't know. Mm. And I, I don't even know if that's the correct month. I could be wrong. It's a great month because it's heroes. And we're going to see a lot of you guys that are come visit us at Heroes Con. That's right. Heroes Con this year is going to be a blast. Billy Tucci. Dan Fraga Boom, myself, Dennis, uh, Hawaiian shirt, cigar night that Saturday, just like last year. Yeah, Smoke them if you got them. And then, of course, we have limited quantities available of the original Core Draft the Reckoning. Um, because we still have we basically took what we had, divvied them up for the campaign, divvied them up for the shows that we attend throughout the year and divvy them up for the website. Nope. That's the one in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina garden States. The one in Jersey. That is the week after heroes. It is. They're back to back. Uh, Dennis made a spectacle of himself last year and unfortunately was not invited back to garden state, but I am. So I told him, I said, get off the table, big guy. You shouldn't be dancing on the table that hammered. He wouldn't listen. The grass, the glass cracked. He fell through the table. Got shards of uh, glass up his butt, and uh, now he's not invited back to Garden State. It's. I feel like you just watched Coyote Ugly or something. Uh, I could have. You never know. Shut your mouth. All right, let's go through the tears. Actually, uh, play, play the video. 
Oh yeah, let's play the video. You gotta, you gotta show everybody this awesome video. I'm gonna play it so there's no echo in feedback. So guys, here is the Cordrath video, courtesy of our pal Nick. That's the video, guys. Paul Taylor says, uh, did you draw any inspiration from the Inf Infinity Stones, or is that just a coincidence? Funny thing is, he actually drew inspiration uh, for that idea from his kidney stones. Dennis, tell him where you got the inspiration for the uh, <laughs> four stones. stones. Oh, wow. Way to, way to bring up uh, bad memories. Well, you're the only person I know that actually has different colored kidney stones when they come out. I've never seen that before until now. No, so guys, when you're when you're looking at it, it I, I did sit there and try and figure out, and I know people, especially Marvel fans, would would try and make a connection. When you've got when you've got magic weapons, I used to make uh, for like all the different characters, like legacy weapons, things like that back in the day. Um, you know, you just don't want them to gain power. You have to add something to them. So, did we want to go down the route? The, the the direction where they're runes or do you want them to be where you know what are you going to add to physically be able to pull something together it, it, it helps with the story plot line and realistically it is going to be some type of a stone which is why you know for those of you who read the first one when they first uncovered what the stones are all about and when the axe actually changed and you saw it, the head of it metamorphosize and you can actually see, you know, on the tip of that axe, there's a reason why it looks like that. We wanted to incorporate all that type of stuff together. So there you go. Uh, it, 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 it's a mechanic because it's easier to try and make something fit in there than trying to go down to runes, magic runes, things like that. Plus, it's how magic works in the world. It was just a more natural fit to go the, the direction of stones. And because a lot of magic and a lot of things have to do with the basic elements and stuff like that, it's easy enough to be able to color them and then put a history behind each of the stones. So it, it, it wound up being a convenience and a better way to tell the story. Not that I took anything from anyone in particular. It just made the most sense. Yeah, we like to call ours boulders, not stones, because they're so large. Yeah, uh, World of Conan. World of Conan hails Andy and Dennis. Congrats on the launch. Uh, may Cordrath Conquer really like the first issue. We'll probably do a review of it. World of Conan has a great uh, YouTube channel. Obviously, it's all Conan-based stuff. Uh, go like it. Subscribe to it. His videos are cool and informative. I've learned some stuff that I never knew about from watching them. And yep. uh, go check yep. out his channel. It is really cool. And thank you very much, World of Conan, for that. Really appreciate it. Uh, rocks on, rocks off. Uh, you know, the funny thing is, if you say that properly, it just sounds like you have an Asian accent. Oh, Danielson, go into a uh, bathroom and uh, 
walks on, walks off. Oh, Danielson. See that? It just, it just really, that's, that's how you do an Asian accent. Isn't that right, Dennis? Yep. That is how Andy does an Asian accent. <laughs> well, is that not how everybody does it? That's how I was taught in acting school. Oh, walks wow. on, walks off. Okay. I guess you could do, oh, Danielson, go into a uh, bathroom and uh, take a tissue and uh, locks on, locks off. Oh, Danielson, you make uh, too much noise in the uh, bathroom. Yep. Uh, so you got your refund from acting school, right? Uh, no, why? And, yeah. and I'm assuming you, you then you did put it towards art classes. I did. <laughs> All right, guys. You've got the Core Draft the Awakening box bundle. What is in that box bundle? Well, guys, it's for the Supreme Collector. There you go, Randy. Thank you so much. Go subscribe to his channel. Uh, Core Draft Volume 2, cover A, cover B, cover C, Budroot Line Art Cover, Black and White Edition, the Game Module Volume 2, uh, Adriana Trading Card, and the Collector's Box. And guys, just so you know, the the game module, because it's eight and a half by 11, that does not fit in the collector's box, but that's okay because you wouldn't want to put it there anyhow, because it's a game module. Uh, so there you go. That is a fantastic tier. Uh, basically saving 16% retail value, 162. We're selling it for 135. Get yourself the game module volume two, Demise and Dracomort. 20 bucks. Obviously, we'll be doing a uh, four more character cards as stretch goals for this campaign. Vordoom is the first one coming at you. We'll debut that later. Uh, Matt Barr in the house. Nice. What's up, chat? Yo, Andy and Dennis. Yo, Matt. Uh, Cordrath Volume 2, Cover A. Get yourself Cover B. Cover C. Budroot Line Art. Black and white edition of the whole book. See those fantastic inks. And when you're in checkout, you can add on the core draft, the awakening, the layouts, and then you can put them side by side and go, that's what Andy inks from? Holy crap. I can't believe he inks from that, that little amount of pencils. Uh, we have limited quantities of the original core draft, the uh, reckoning books. So for the reckoning, we are doing a second print featuring a new Bud Root variant cover. Uh, that is right here. So uh, if you already got it, but you just love this cover, you can. Or you, if you never got it, you can do the old catch-up tier, uh, which we'll be getting to soon. Uh, right below it, volume one and two catch-up tier gets you that Bud Root cover. Uh, the new Bud Root second print cover and the Dan Lawless, Andy Smith cover for the awakening. Of course, you've got the head sketch one out of 10 gone. Thank you. Whoever got that. Those are always fun to draw figure sketch as well. Seven by 10 fits right inside the old comic bag. And then of course the big one, the big bad daddy, the big boo. Yeah. Is the get it all tier. And let me tell you guys, we made sure everything except for the artist edition and the game modules uh, everything fits in this one box. It is the black and white edition, uh, the manga Core Draft The Reckoning Black and White Digest, the Core Draft The Reckoning Digest in full color. Those are both rated E for everyone. The Collector's Box, Core Draft Volume 1, all the covers A through F, Core Draft Volume 2 covers A, B, C, D, Game Module 1 and 2, four character cards in the map, Core Draft Artist Edition, and the Adriana and Lilaneth Trading Cards. That is literally everything. Randy Howe just passed 8K. Holy crap. Holy fantastic, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Guys, we knew there was some excitement. We got so much feedback from you guys um, on all aspects of the first campaign. And um, we, we were very genuine and sincere when I told you that we listened to everything that you said, what you guys wanted out of the future stuff, what you wanted us to go, directions in some of the stuff. And, uh, you know, there was so much that we could do. So we, we sat down and went through what's feasible, what's not. And 
all we're trying to do is put out some absolutely fantastic products. And I'm glad to see, even with just Andy and I coming on to talk about it, how much you guys are coming out to support it. Glad you guys love it. We want to meet or exceed your expectations each and every time. That's right. That is what we uh, aim to do. We aim to please. Uh, let me do this. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, just had to do something there, and I'll be doing something else again, too. Uh, having fun with you guys. See, we like to do this when there's no uh, no big sports being played right now that I know of. Maybe there's something out there, but, you know, who the, what the, that, hey, that is language Dennis will not tolerate on his PG-13 stream. I don't know if you read that or not, Dennis, but I, I am sorry. Uh, I did, you know, and the thing is, they all know with Andy in it, it's never PG-13. It's never PG or G. It's hardly R. We are going to get the old triple X rating, uh, especially after the first book. My God, you are you, you are so hurtful. Um, I, I don't know. Maybe it's not Cordrath in this one. Maybe it's Lelneth. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe Necronite pulls out his Necropy. I don't know. Does he have one? I don't know. Does he, Dennis? Dennis would know. Yeah, but I can't tell you. You have to read it in the book. Maybe his, maybe because Dennis, or not Dennis. Well, you know, Dennis, whatever. Maybe, uh, maybe his, uh, his, uh, 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 necropy, uh, fell off. I don't know. I don't know. So guys, you know, I'm just saying like with Andy and I just coming out to launch this, it's just, we got over 300 people right now watching us, just chiming in on it. So, you know, you guys, why we're here showing you this, you can ask questions on anything. We're going to go through all the different options for you guys and, and try and uh, bring out as much of the great stuff to show you as we can. That's right. Because we care. Yeah, we need little enough to earn her succubus chops. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, 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 hold on now. That seems like a double entendre if I've ever heard one. But you've never heard <laughs> one, so. Uh, let's see, what are we looking at here? Uh, do, 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 do. Just looking through some of the some of the links there. Okay, fun stuff. Good to know, good to know. Uh, Tuesday night, as we said, uh, or not Tuesday, Wednesday, 3 p.m., uh, Bart Sears, guest of the show, doing a live art auction on the DNA show, three o'clock Wednesday afternoon, Eastern time. I'll have some, uh, sketches and stuff. Quick questions. Sorry. I showed up late. There's no 24 hour special going on. I need to pay off the government tomorrow. No, there is not. Everything here is up, uh, for the, for the yep. whole shebang. We need you guys with any surprises. And that is a really good public service announcement. PSA. Tomorrow is April 15th, final taxation day. So for those of you who have not filed your taxes, you need to do that by tomorrow. Tomorrow is the last day. Yeah, I did that a few weeks ago. And uh, I don't know, Dennis and I are watching that show Shogun separately, of course. I mean, come on, guys. I can only see the guys so much throughout the week. Uh, wait, Super Chat always comes atop. Uh, MD Houghton, five bucks. Looking forward to the portfolio reviews. Andy, got to run. See y'all. Thanks. I will be, uh, once the books are shipped out, MD, uh, I'll be contacting each of you about the portfolio reviews and I'm looking forward to them as well. Uh, you said it. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to quote it. Because it, it, it I like literally it. brings a tear to your eye every year. So how many core draft books can you fit in that box? Literally, if you go to that tier, the get everything, get it all tier, and you count it all, except for the game modules and the artist edition, that is how many you can fit in the box. We, yeah. we, that's why we got the boxes uh, made so we could test them and put books in them. And that is how many you can fit in the box. So uh, I'll count one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Uh, 
13. 13 books. I think we actually were able to fit 14. So there you go. That's how many you can fit. Yeah, the only reason the modules don't fit in, they're just bigger than the box because they're the exact same exact same size as the original ones from the late 70s, early 80s. Yeah, that's that's pretty much why. Uh, let's see. There's something. Oh, what was I talking about? Damn it. I always forget. Shogun. So Dennis and I are watching Shogun. And let me tell you, uh, spoiler alert, it's it's uh, Japanese, which means a couple characters. Uh, I think it's Seppuku. Is that how you pronounce it? Seppuku. Harry Carey. Yeah. Harry Carey. If you don't know what that is, it's where they take their dagger or their samurai sword, go in their gut, and then rake it across. So uh, their guts literally spill out, and then somebody standing over him takes his samurai sword and goes and uh, lops the dude's head off. I felt that exact same pain uh, at uh, uh, when I submitted my taxes a few weeks ago. So uh, there you go. Yeah, there you guys, go. And, and they do. We we actually saw it. It's really really good. The wakazashi goes right into the midsection, and then the katana goes bloop, and there goes the head. But you know, the, the, this version has been very decent. Oh, we got a guest coming on. It is Mr. Brian Blevins. Hello. Well, look at this. Did, did somebody say Shogun? We, we did. We, did. we came in. We were just uh, kind of. Uh, Mentioning Shogun. I was in a dead sleep. <laughs> Just now? I heard, I heard from the from the nether realm someone say Shogun. And I was like, oh, I gotta, gotta get on here. What's up? Yeah, so they uh, have, let, me answer, they have, let me answer this question real fast from Jeffrey Oates. Any additional add-ons later in the campaign? Um, I, I can't say a definitive no. I don't think we can say definitively no because it's day one and this thing's going to go for at least, you know. Well, uh, we, 10, I will say this. Months. There may be other potential add-ons because as we display these figures, if we do wind up being able to move forward and get other characters made and stuff, those could be add-ons later on, things like that. But eat it doesn't really matter because those have to ship separately uh, anyway. So you wouldn't lose anything on shipping or any of that type of stuff. Oh, 101 backers. Thank you so much. $8,213 pushing towards 10,000 bucks. Let's do nice. this. Um, no, what I was also going to say, add on, no pun intended, to what Dennis said about add-ons is, you know, we tried to cover all the basis because obviously if we do another add on and somebody's already backed it, then you can't just go buy an add on. So down the road, like I said, if we end up doing a 24 by 36 poster of and for those just joining, I'll show you if we end up turning this into a 24 by 36 poster, 36 inch nice. poster. Um this would not be an add-on. It would be a brand new tier because it would ship separately in a tube. So even if you backed it already and you did want to get this, you would just go, you know, pick that tier, brand new tier. And, you know, when the campaign stuff ships, when we start fulfilling, that would go separately because it would be in a tube. So if we were to add uh, another minifig, to it if these do well enough and you know whether it's necronite whether it's lilneth whether it's adriana instead of making it an add-on because it ships separately we would um we would uh just make it a separate tier as well so that's how we would do it uh we tried to get all the add-ons taken care of in the beginning so we wouldn't have to deal with that stuff yeah, uh, Jeffrey says would love an Andy Smith poster too. You know, Dennis has tried to get me to put on a red one piece and uh, photograph me in that Fair Fawcett pose for a poster. <laughs> I I don't know, guys. I just don't know if that would sell me in a me in a red uh, one piece like Farrah. No, but hey, would. you know, if you really want me in a poster, I, I, I mean, we could try. So, uh, you, Jet, Mr. Blevin, well. how are you doing? I'm I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Like I said, I was in a dead sleep. I heard Shogun. 
from, <laughs> from off in the distance, came on, tat 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 on the keyboard, and and I'm here. And I also want to say, like, uh, when you were talking about seppuku, so you know, there's there's two types. There's seppuku, and then there's honorable seppuku. Seppuku is just when they take their sword and they slice their slice their entrails up. The honorable part is when you have somebody chop your head off afterwards. Mm-hmm. That's why that's the difference between seppuku and honorable seppuku. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Fun. See, fun so what I'm hearing the, is fun fact for what, all the what, children out there. What I'm hearing is when Dennis decides to go that route, I actually don't have to be there to cut his head off. Not, not, not if you don't want it to be honorable, which you wouldn't, because you're just that kind of mean guy. So right, yeah, uh, is Mark doing something this time? Daniel Russell is asking. Uh, I guess you mean doing something as in a crowd fund or something? No, we're just. You know, we realized Bart was our first, I believe, our first guest, first interview on the show. And we just, you know, we talked to him weekly. Or or, we just, or if you mean, is he doing something with this campaign? The answer is yes, which is how I would interpret it. Oh, right there. Oh, wow. oh yeah. Bart is doing the cover. We like consist here at Astonishing Comics. Dennis and Andy <laughs> like the word consistency. And consistency means who did the game module cover for the first game? Bart Sears and Dan Lawless. Well, who, who's doing it for the second game? That's right, guys. Bart Sears and Dan Lawless. There it is. All. Their little names right in the bottom right-hand corner. That's right. And Cordrath ain't no dummy. He's like, woman, get out there and take care of that dragon. Yeah. Don't make me have to step in and do it. You do it. So. There you, I mean, that's what Dennis does. Dennis is like, woman, go out there and slay that chicken. I want chicken for dinner, and you're going to go out in the backyard and wring its neck. You go up on a farm. Take care of business. Isn't that right? Business. Yeah. Business. I love him. Right. Oh, thank you so much. Modules. That's awesome. Yeah, so the game Brian, was really fun. Oh, look at that. Art of Roy. Bart's ears is drawing for the rip averse. You know, it's funny how that got out there. I I knew it, but uh, that's not my business to tell. Nope. But uh, apparently it got out there that he did do a short story. So uh, there you go. I don't know. May, may, maybe he mentioned it himself or who knows. But uh, yeah, uh, Brian, thanks. Uh, the module, like I said, it's already gone through. I, I told them. It's been through um, uh, the testing. It's been play tested. So I am working on some additions and some changes and things that I want to make for it. And then it's going off to a group of uh, uh, test players. I've got two different groups, one up north and one out in Vegas. And when I'm done, they'll be getting it. And then I'll I'll take any of that and then try and uh, wrap that one up. And then uh, I'll get it to an editor who... So perfectly for those of you that did get the original one, Mayhem in the Miramidor Mountains, you know, getting the insides to have that exact same feeling of the old late 70s, early 80 modules. You know, it brings you back. Want that kind of feeling. Plus, I can't tell you how many people that I talk to. Some of them are experienced DMs. And there's a whole group now of young DMs out there. And they don't want these super complex, giant modules. They want something simple, fun, and yet comprehensive in this. And that's what these are. It's good enough for uh, the the newest of DM or, you know, the uh, the most of the savviest. There you go. And DM does not mean uh, dumb mother effer. Uh, that's what I thought at first. Uh, Daniel Russell, will that be a separate print? I don't play the game. He's talking about Bart's uh, cover. Um, you know, now that I'm thinking, this is why we love your input. Uh, you know, the first campaign had the map and four character playable character cards. Maybe this campaign will have four playable character cards and a mini print of the cover art. Something to think about. And then everybody would get it. Uh, for free when we hit those stretch goal amounts. I don't know. What do you think about that? 
I don't know. I actually don't think that's a that's a half by bad idea. We were uh, coming up with all the different stretch goals and what we want to do, and we got a, a lot of options on the table. And um, not everybody does play the game, and some of the people picked up the module that don't even play the game just for the story. But not everybody's going to do that. That might be a really good thought. Yeah, that's not. That's, I think, uh, that's not I think a bad it's pretty idea. good. I think it's a pretty good idea. I do look at that. You know, we're getting a lot of comments. Just do it, please do it. And a yes, do that. Guys, look at that. Wow, while live streaming, you guys came up with a great idea. I told you, we listened to you. All right, we'll figure that out then. Cordrath Banana Hammock win. Um, That's not a bad idea. I was thinking about that, and I was thinking right on the front of the banana hammock would be Cordrath's axe in an upright position. (laughs) Thoughts? Maybe Dennis could model it. Uh, Blevins, are you not looking pretty right now? Is that why your camera's off? You're not feeling well, pretty. Well, and, and I'm in and I'm in my in my room. Like I'm not uh, I'm not downstairs at the studio or outside. Not or in outside the, stu- the studio. You, Andy, didn't you listen? He was literally in in sleep when Shogun called out, awoken him, and said, "You must show up on the Dennis and Andy show." Well. You know, I got to be honest, when he said he was still sleeping, I kind of took it as a joke because, you know, it's 1.43 p.m. I mean, I know Brian's lazy, but come oh on. My God. Man, I'm I'm not even going to lie. Like, I've I've not been sleeping well because I'm trying to get this uh, the store open. And uh, my dad calls me at like eight o'clock this morning to tell me that, uh, like, I should I should try to to call and get an extension on my taxes, even though I've already submitted my taxes. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It was just, it was just weird, and it threw my whole schedule off. And man, I just slept. So that's all right. I well, I guess we'll, I guess we'll, you know, we'll we'll give that a pass then. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Randy popped up. Brian Blevins, the game store is coming back, and yes, it is. Yeah, Keep it updated is. on Twitter. So follow him at the Game Store AR. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's actually. Uh, gonna be online only. Um, you know, we're gonna be dealing with all the same stuff: collectible card games, miniature games, board games. We're also gonna be doing uh, video games, comic books, and um, and yeah, I'm, I'm I'm pretty pretty excited. Also gonna be doing 3D miniatures, so I'll have a huge giant setup of uh, SRTs, uh, not SRTs, but um, the the STL files. So you can go on and you can choose which which figures you want to have printed, and then uh, then we give you a turn time and we we do all the printing for you. Oh, nice! Yeah, I got like ten 3D printers, and we're gonna load them all up and just just start doing 3D printing for people. And uh, man, I tell you what, dude, I, the game module thing added on to this. I mean, it's literally literally another level to to the crowdfunding. Um, and man, like maybe, maybe during the next one, like when you guys go to the third core draft, maybe there's going to need to be a, a tier where you do a, a private, uh, D and D game where, you, you know, Dennis, you're the, you're the, uh, the DM or you're the GM and then you do it over Skype or something. I have had Brian, a lot of people kind of mention that. And, um, I think it'd be, I think it'd be amazing. I mean, to play the game, to play with the person who created the game is, has always been something that's huge. Like, you know, I'm here in Arkansas and I don't know if you know this or not, but Gary Gygax worked with, uh, castles and crusaders here in, in Arkansas. So, you know, I got to meet him like several times throughout the time, you know? So, um, yeah, I, you know, it's, it's, it's a different, it's a different experience. You know, there's a lot of people that, that, that learn and understand how to, how to do the games. But I mean, it's a different experience when you actually deal with the person who created it. And, um, yep. Nobody, nobody will love your work more than you. I tell you, Blevins, I wish you would talk to my wife. I created a game for the two of us and she has no interest in playing with the creator. <laughs> so annoying. <laughs> You know, it's really a good thing she doesn't listen to your, your channel, Andy. No, she doesn't. She's outside doing yard work. <laughs> yeah. But no, I think that's a great idea. Um, uh, I can always figure out uh, a way to do it. You know, obviously we'll have to. It would have to be virtually. But 
Well, we'll, we'll see. We, we might be able to work on something like that. Cause I, I do think that would be fun. And there have been so many people that have brought it up. So uh, we'll, we'll see. I, I will look into it and figure out what needs to be done. And maybe we can make this happen. Oh, things to come, maybe. <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. See, the angry gamer. See, he mentioned role playing to his wife. Now, my my wife, on the other hand, yeah, Fantasy Grounds. I am familiar with uh, Fantasy Grounds. Um, she playing, she said no. But back to that one. Mentioned to my wife, and she said no. That's very sad. My wife does. Uh, um, she never used to. Uh, didn't join us. She had a very bad experience in in college. And, uh, but, you know, my kids thought role-playing was stupid, you know, Dungeons and Dragons, dad, that's dumb. They go off to college. Guess who plays? Both my kids play. My niece and nephew play. And now I literally have the entire family that's, uh, uh, that that's playing with it. So, you know, people come around over time. I'm just surprised that you literally just told everybody that your first date in college with your wife and she said it was a bad experience. That takes balls to uh, to uh, admit that on a live stream. Uh -huh. and, you, and yet you turned it around and have been married for over 30 years yeah, now. So I don't I don't think that's sad thing. That's an amazing story, man. It shows that swagger, man, that riz that he's got, you know. It does. That's true. It does. You know, when I, I looked at her and I smiled and it went ting. And lit up, and I mean, all the rest was history. She was hooked. She was. She, uh, she, once you have Dennis, you never go back. It was the power of house parties because back then we were not of age to go to the bar because they had changed it. So we did house parties, all good. Oh boy, we got another guest coming on the show. He uh -oh. is a, uh, a guy that does, uh, that makes. Makes me look good. We'll just say that, and uh, <laughs> it's not my it's not my barber uh, because he did a bad job. I mean, I went in with more hair than Dennis, and this is how I came out. I said I'd like a little trim. First, he brings out his wife, and I was like, "No, dude, not that kind of trim." Oh. And then he did that to my head. So uh, there you go, uh, Dan Lawless. Hello, Dan Lawless. Good hey, Dan. The only guy who can make Andy Smith look good. That's what I just heard. So congratulations. Well, God knows you don't do it. Look at this. That's what a co-host is supposed to do, but apparently somebody's slacking. Look well, at this this chrome dome right here, or this uh, cup, uh, bronze yeah. dome here. Yeah, what, what, what happened to all the horns? First time we <laughs> had you on, you had two horns. A few times later, we were down to one horn. And, and, and now you are not at all. Horny. I'm not horny. That's good though. That's you want to be that you don't want to be around me when I'm horny. <laughs> that's right. Oh, that's awesome. Um, yes, they've disintegrated with age. Oh. I tried to tape them like up. I, I tried everything. I tried bag, I tried to tape them, I tried to tape everything. Nothing worked. So nothing kept the horns up. No, I get it. They just fell apart. No gorilla glue. Gorilla glue wouldn't have kept it on there. Blue pills. No, it, this pill. wasn't a matter of it, it, this plastic that was so cheap, it literally just shattered. I dropped it once and the thing sh it shattered into little pieces. It was weird plastic mm. crap. So, oh. Yeah, it doesn't like, sound like what, that what are you gonna do? In battle. Not made in America, obviously, you know, it's this China's <laughs> crap so. China. <laughs> So guys, you're a fan. you can give his YouTube channel, uh, his Twitter, or X. There you go, guys. So make sure if you don't follow Dan, you follow him. Dan's a big part of this uh, campaign. He makes all this stuff look really good that we're looking at today. Mm. Well, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Did you look at That's the? Right. Did you show the the gaming uh, console or uh, picture? No, not yet. I'm trying to decide if we want to hold back on that one a little bit longer until we actually put it up as a stretch goal and then have you come on the old DNA show uh, for it, you know? Okay. So, but uh, uh, we have been showing the beautiful Bud cover, the beautiful uh, Bart Sears, Dan yeah. Lawless game module cover. Yeah. yeah, dude, that turned out good. I, I just saw that the other day for the first time. Your uh, your color over Bart, yeah, it looks great. Yeah, yeah it's pretty yeah. solid. 
they don't they, and people not, might not know what you're talking about this is a, it's a bart sears drawing that i colored and it it was good i liked it. i thought it really worked out well so I oh they know oh, oh yeah they they've, seen, they've seen it oh that's oh, what i was talking it. about i thought you i said you're gonna show it. that okay. oh you... no no yeah we have been showing that oh okay, we've been yeah. showing this all over the place Oh, good, yeah, good. Yeah. Okay, I can show it good. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, Vord, the Vordoom character card we're going to hold off on. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm People know not, that we're going to be doing gotta... character cards again, but we're holding off on them. But we've also right. been showing, Dan, I don't know if you saw these, the, the minifigs we're doing. Oh, you get the, wow. You could get the two-inch size, uh -huh. uh, which Dennis loves two inches. Uh, you could get the three-inch size, or you could get the big manly five-inch size, which is, you know, about average. So, uh you know, your choice. Yeah. I feel comfortable uh, with a two inch. This is more what I'm used to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I stack them up, it comes, to, it comes out to 10 inches and that's, that's more comfortable for me, but then I got to stack them. So, you know, no, this looks cool. It's, it's awesome, man. So who's wait, who is this based on your art then? It yeah. sure is. Oh, I, uh, so cool. I did a drawing and, uh, the digital sculptor sculpted from my artwork and you know what? Here, let's let's pop it up. I'll, I'll get it to zoom in because Brian, your ears were ringing earlier because I was trying to get it to focus. I'm like, if Brian Blevins were on here, he would get us how to figure out to focus right in here with these awesome cameras. He got oh, it. That's fantastic. Now, so, who's who's the guy? Is that that guy? Uh, I've seen some guy doing uh, Shadow Punk or something, or there, there was someone on online who was doing some sculpting of a lot of things. And is that that guy or uh, uh, on Twitter? Somebody else that um we actually met at a show uh so well that is fantastic yeah That's even you saw the bear claws raked across his back and everything like that but even the detail of like the fur on his boots um the the muscles the the, the yeah the bulging it's super cool the really pain sticking out and yeah, and when you look at the face, that is this is all Andy's artwork. Like I said, guys, this is it's not cheap to to have him sculpt them like this. But we didn't want it to kind of look like Cordrath. We wanted it to be Cordrath. All the muscles, so they did it based off of all of that. And that's the hundred millimeter. If you guys want more of the the statue, there's your fifty millimeter. If you wanted a, a large size. And then, of course, the ones that we were really getting asked for a ton of is this is your 25 millimeter. So for all of your Dungeons and Dragons needs, you want core draft and you want them to sit down and say you own uh, a whole bunch of uh, figures that you've painted, um, Rel Partha minis, whatever. This is a, in the same scale. So core draft can be right there uh, with him. What is the resolution that is being printed at? No, now you you're just talking above our heads. Are you having printed at 4K, 6K, 8K, 12K? Uh, yes. No, honestly, I just, you know, the guy, the guy we're working with showed us the sculpts at, or showed us the final design. And uh, after he showed the final design and we signed off on it, uh, yeah, we, he, we said, you know, can you print one of each size? Because we want to offer all three because, you know, like Dennis said, somebody might want the, I like to talk in inches because, you know, I live in America. Um, so somebody might want the two inch size and that's the smallest one for role playing because that's the standard size. And somebody might want, you know, the three inch size and then somebody for display purposes might want the five inch size, which obviously the details really fantastic on that one i mean i think the detail is fantastic on all of them yeah so. and that's why i was showing the little one there um the, the 25 millimeter one because the, the detail on that little guy is fantastic for it but some guys were like you know why don't you guys look at doing statues well we did and the the statue pricing are ridiculous and even for a small statue like like the five inch here uh with for them to be able to put this quality i'm like why not just offer it as a statue or uh, a mini you know that that yeah. you can play with and they they're so good that uh yeah didn't matter so we got three sizes for whatever you guys are interested in yeah i mean we could look at bigger versions like a 10 inch or something 
but at that point you'd probably have to print it and a few different pieces yeah. and then you know you would be responsible for putting it together and such uh yeah it's something to look into and price out but for now we've got those three main sizes and trust me we got two of each so mm -hmm. i've got i've got all three sizes over here as well and uh they're just not within arm's reach and uh i mean honestly just from drawing cordrath now when i draw them at different angles it's actually really cool to be able to to hold it and look at the the different angles and stuff uh when drawing them so do you uh yeah. when when you had those things printed were they were they uh separated was the base separate from the figure yes okay yes. was that the only was that the only break between the two yep that is yep. it everything else yep. is solid yep yeah because i was going to say like uh if you did want to make it like you can scale those those uh stls you can scale them bigger and they still oh, yeah. keep the same resolution it's just you do have to like kind of like cut it the torso Maybe cut mm -hmm. the arms off or something like that, and then then print them. Like most of the time, you know, you're looking at four pieces for for the big giant statues, right? But yep. yeah, it shouldn't, yeah, it shouldn't be any any bigger of an issue other than breaking them off and and uh, making the making the support lines so that you know the 3D printer will print those. But man, it's really exciting, really exciting. I'm very happy for you guys. So right. we uh, we did have this up earlier, and so a lot of you guys are, are are new to when we had talked about this. As I said, it's it's very pricey to uh, have a professional sculptors go in and base all this right off of Andy's artwork and stuff like that. So you know they're like, oh, why don't you just offer all of these different options right away? Yeah, there's a huge upfront cost, but right. if if the core draft goes really well, which it, I, I think it will. You know, the question is, who do you want the second figure to be? Do you guys put in the chat if you want one, Adriana, type of two if you want Lilineth, or three if you want Necronite? And uh, I'll be kind of curious to see what what, what you guys uh, have to say, because I, I think we're going to, we will probably put up a, a true poll in the, in the very near future here, where you guys will be able to go online and do it, but kind of want to just judge uh, what, what you guys think. And of course, you know, a four would be an Andy and a five would be a Dennis. Please don't overwhelm the chat with four. That would be hurtful. And we like to have uh this is a safe space for Dennis and we'd like to keep it that way. So, uh, you know, you can DM me privately with the number four if you want. I understand my uh, DMs might get blown up a lot. See, here they go. Uh, Paul's the only one saying four, so you got a fan out there that really wants. Yeah, you know. My, oh my god, look at those DMs! Holy crap, guys! I'm gonna have to clean out my DM box. They're just blowing up with fours. Oh, oh, look at that. Rob wants a five. Oh nope, he l he l o l you. He doesn't apparently. Wow. So, um, you know, uh, out of the ones coming in, though, it really looks like uh, three. So it really looks like you guys want to see Necronite. And uh, all right. That that, that you got to have a bad you got to have a bad guy as your second figure. Yeah, Damn it, we should have said yeah. Vordoom then. Vordoom's. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Or the dragon. Oh, my God. How cool would that be? That would be that would be, but the, yeah, there's there is a, a lot. We, I actually was thinking, you know, from talking to people at shows and stuff when we were chatting about it, a lot of people were talking like, oh, dude, we gotta do Lilith. Oh, Lilith would be great. So I honestly thought that was what people were gonna uh, really want, but just from today, from you guys, it looks like Necronite. So uh, hey, that might be something to do. It could be the next one. I mean, it does help to know this stuff in advance because I have to do a new piece of art for the turnaround for the the sculptor. So uh, it definitely uh, definitely helps <laughs> to know this stuff, dude. Maybe there's a maybe there's a three D sculptor that's really into uh, into comic books or something. You might be able to do some trades. Yeah, you never know. Uh, Dennis naming the Titanic pose. Wait, is that the pose where I'm sketching and he's laying on the on the bed? Uh, I, I that hope he's talking about the front of the ship. <laughs> oh, that pose. Or it's the one where I'm on the piece of lumber and and you're Jack, and, and then you're like, "Oh, there's not room for both of us." Sorry, Andy, and you just go. 
goodbye, Dennis. Blah, blah, blah. And you sink down. Well, I mean, let's be real. If you were on the piece of lumber, there wouldn't be room, unlike that uh, unlike that tramp in the movie who had plenty of room for Leonardo. To he see. killed him on purpose, and he put up with it. Exactly. If you told me there was no room, all I would do is be like, shit, he's right. Oh, well, good knowing you. And I'd let go. Yep. Yep. That would be a great ending. Man, I mean, why you wouldn't sacrifice yourself for me is still beyond me. I don't, I don't quite what know. Are you, are you kidding me? Look down there and be like, oh, don't worry, the shark's got it. Yeah, it's a snack. It's good enough. They hey, what the hell fill up. To There's too much of me to eat, so I might as well just fill up on the snack and 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 then they come rescue me. Look at that, Dan skipped out on us. Hopefully, it's an internet issue. Maybe he's in a snowstorm. Who knows? He's out in the Midwest. You don't know what's going on. It's a beautiful 80 degree day. Well, what is it here? Yeah, it's 80. Look at that. I nailed it. 80 degree day here. Uh, what's it over in Arkansas right now, Blevins? What are we looking at for a temp? Is it sunny out? Let me find my phone. I'll tell you. Because he hasn't been outside. He just woke up. <laughs> Literally, it's still in the bed. He hasn't been outside. He doesn't have the curtains peeled back or anything. Uh, I sleep in a panic room, so I don't have any windows oh, on there. Oh, look at that. He, he, Paul was in the Lilith camp, but after reading the book, he's in the Adriana camp. 77 yeah. degrees. 77 oh, degrees outside. Oh, that's not bad. Cordrath no. does not sound woke enough for today's crowd. That is correct. There is no woke in this book. <laughs> that's right. He lets his axe do his talk. <laughs> Maromi says it's 81. He's leaving for work. We'll have a fine day at work on this Sunday. What the? Enjoy it. I knew what you did for a living. Why are you having to work on a Sunday? What the hell is that all about? Uh, is there a rated E version of book two or will that be on the next campaign? I mean, in, in full disclosure, we don't, I mean, the story's written, but uh, as of right now, I think this book Probably falls into the E category. I don't know. We'll have to see as I draw it and go. But if we, I can tell you this if the digest versions of The Reckoning do well, yeah, our plan would be to release digest versions of The Awakening down the road. So it's kind of what we're setting up. You're back. Oh. <laughs> Sorry about that. Was it an internet issue, or, no. or is the perfect great weather up in up in the north uh, uh, helping you? <laughs> well, it's it's, it's that is speaking to me. That's the windows open. I want to go out there and play, you know. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I got a new microphone. Uh, does it sound better? I got a new microphone, so I'm messing with it. So I, the, the audio. Was no, no, not you sound good. fine. Yeah, you're good yeah. now. Okay. Which yeah. which kind of mic is it? I got a Sure. Oh no, uh, the SMB seven MV seven. Oh, you said the smaller one. Yeah, it's a little, a little less expensive and doesn't require any kind of uh, booster, I, you know, cloud lift or anything like that. So, you know, I went. Sounds good to me. Yeah. What's yeah, it look it's like? Awesome. I'm just curious. Oh, that is a. Uh, oh, nice. What did you have before? I had a, a Yeti. What do I have? I think I have a Yeti. You got a Yeti. 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 Yeah, I have a Yeti. Oh, so you're shitting all over my mic, Dan. That's it. I get it. Thanks for coming on the show. <laughs> I used to have one of those pieces of shit Yetis, you know? Oh, you <laughs> bastard. <laughs> you know, the only reason I have a Yeti is because that's what Blevins recommended. So I'm just saying. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He didn't just recommend. He gave you a Yeti. That's true. He did give it to me. The Yetis right. are, are, are solid. The best solid work. I know I'm this. Now. Like I backed, I backed it up. Like I said it and I backed it up by making so you didn't have to spend any money. I appreciate yeah. that. I still yeah, have it's, my it's, blue it's, snowball. It gets you up, gets you started. It's a good, decent sound. Yeti's good workhorses. You know, it'll well, the, get the, the Yeti. The Yeti works because they sit next to each other when they do their podcasts. Like the sure SMB doesn't have yes, the, the split right. mic. Uh, exactly. Portion, exactly. So, so, yeah, you have to like, speak directly like the into these things. So. Yeah, the the Shure M7 wouldn't. You guys have to be kissing practically to to make it work. <laughs> oh no, that's off camera, not Your during the show. Really. Yeah, the the Shure has that directional directional mic where you have to have your mouth like right up. Right. At it. I mean, it's perfect quality. It's uh, actually they uh, most voice actors 
they uh, whenever somebody goes and uh, starts to do voice acting and they ask you what kind of uh, equipment you have at your house, they recommend like like you you won't get the job if you don't have an SMB seven or an M seven. Like you just won't get the job because they're like you don't have a good enough quality. Like because the Yeti, the Yeti doesn't match the quality of the uh, the deal. Uh, but it's really yeah, this shirts are really good. Now, now this is the low end shirt, so it's not really yeah. a studio mic necessarily. They don't really call it that, but it's, it comes really close to yeah. the to the studio mic. The the one that that's good is it costs about four hundred bucks. Yep. Then plus when you get a, a, a cloud lifter and an, another uh, interface, you're talking about six hundred bucks. Which was beyond my price range, you know. This oh, was yeah. uh, this was I think two fifty, so uh, that's within my price range. It was fine. The Yeti's about hundred bucks. Again, that'll get you started. It sounds decent and stuff, but I thought, well, I just wanted to uh, kick it up. I've been you know using the Yeti for a while. I'm happy with it, but this is I think it's better. This you know the sure stuff. So sixty four to answer your question, Dennis. A sixty four. Um. Yeah, I mean, the Yeti has, this does have, I, now I don't know what the little symbol means. I looked them up once and I know I switched it to the proper one. But the Yeti has different settings for different things. Right. Yeah, one is, one is for directional. One is for you guys sitting side by side. One is for you guys sitting across from each other. And uh, the other one is, uh, I think it just encompasses the whole area. You know what? I think just because of how you explained it, and I'm not even joking, I think I figured out what the icons mean. So there's one icon, which is two circles overlapping. Yep, that's when you're sitting uh, across from each other. Okay, and then there's one icon that's just a circle. Yep, that's uh, encompassing everybody. So, like, what do you mean? Room? Yeah, right? yeah, room, ambient, Omni and everything. Omnidirectional. Then there's one that is like, it almost looks like an upside down heart because it's a circle on the top, but then at the bottom it's like butt cheeks. Yeah, yeah. that's. I think that's the one you you you. If you're just by yourself, you speak. Yeah, speak yeah that's to. the solid. That's your solo. You get a little better sound with that. That's oh. your solo adventure. Because it's, it's taken from either if it's taken from everywhere, then your sound is is you know not as directional and it's not as deep and that sort of thing. But when you get that the one that's just for you, it it's you're going you're taking it directly from your voice and it's going to be the best sound for you as an individual so if you're doing your, your streams by yourself click that one all right i'll try it and there's one that is the two circles that touch each other yeah yeah those are the ones uh, i'm just okay so the ones that are interlocking are when you're side by side the okay. ones that are touching are when you're sitting across from each other okay oh. yeah i kind of thought the interlocking ones meant side by side but then uh the the touching circles are across from each other, and now I did switch it to the. You sound better immediately. Did yeah. oh do I? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh okay, so I switched it to like the upside down heart, or it's more of a that's a circle on top and a butt yeah. shape on the bottom. Yeah, I don't normally. quite understand why it pinches in like that at the bottom, and uh, <laughs> that's the that's the, the diagram they decide to go with for that. But. It's like it enhances the bass in your voice. So you can well, you know, I have been told I have a lot of bass. It's so, all about the bass. It's all, about about the the all reverberates. It's a butt crack symbol. It's oh, it's all about the bass. All the bass, less treble. Uh, yeah, because so normally you sound that. like crap, but now, now you don't. Now you sound tolerable. So yeah, it works. Pa oh, that's hurtful. Uh, Paul says I sound better. Well, look at that. Fantastic. See. Yep. I know. Live All and learn. All these things we learn. Brian is the one who got us into our fancy new cameras and uh, got us to, to upgrade that and got us to which ones to buy. And those turned out really well. And then in order to go to match this, we had to have better, uh, you know, better sounding mics. Well, you, you, you know, know say you, you learn something new every year. You know, there is <laughs> the, the guy I do respect the every most. Every day when you're younger, of, when you get older, it's every year. The guy I respect the most out of all the, the streaming guys, uh, one of the fellow professionals, always on the Kings, doesn't give an F, is Graham. Because Graham has a Mac, and he's like, I use the camera from the Mac, he built does. in, and I use the built-in mic on the Mac, and I don't use headphones. My name's Graham Nolan. Deal with it, or I'll squash you like a walnut in between my bicep and forearm. Nice. Is that his intro? Is he here? 
and he'll put his <laughs> and he'll put his cigar out on your dead body. And I'll put a cigar out on your dead body, and I will not piss on you to put it out. <laughs> Seriously, Graham is like, yeah, I've got my Mac <laughs> built-in camera, mic, and no headphones. If you don't like it, you know where to go. <laughs> yep. Yep. Paul says Mac lovers are loyal. They are. They've always been yep. loyal all the way back. Matter of fact, they saw I had a PC and they're like, oh, my God, you need a Mac because of here's 72 reasons. And then I'll say, does it do this? Well, no. Can I get the software for that? Well, no. OK, that's why I don't have a Mac. It was. Yeah. Simple. Yeah. Well, you know, for an artist, though, I've always had Macs. And it's like the reason is I just need it to work every time you know and that's it either I, for art or sound i mean those were the two reasons to ever have max look at that we broke nine broke nine let's do a nine. refresh on it uh yeah i mean i've had it i'm kind of like dennis i've had a pc forever there it is now oh, i gotta scroll back up nine zero nine two hundred twelve backers let's go to ten big ten i'll do a shot and so will dennis and I'll actually do whiskey, whereas Dennis will probably just go get some iced tea uh, or something. Iced tea. Uh, <laughs> well, you know what? So there you go. I've got it up here. Hold He's on. like, I'll go get some lemonade. <laughs> I've got alcohol sitting with it. Well, it's not arms reach. I have to get up. But I've got alcohol up here. I will do a shot uh, at 10. Um, yeah, I mean, like, so back to the Mac thing. It's like talking to Dan. Dan hasn't upgraded... Now, Dan, has, Dan Fraga has a few computers. He will not upgrade his Mac to the latest operating system because it would mess with all the stuff he has plugged into it, his peripherals and stuff. And mm -hmm. he's like, I'm, I'm keeping the operating system. I think it's like five back from the current one. Wow. But it works with everything he has plugged in, whereas you don't have that problem with PCs. And I don't want to deal with that. And, you know, I've had a PC for, you know, since... I started using a computer 30 years ago or whatever. So, well, he uses a lot of, he does a lot of digital stuff as well. And I'm pretty sure, like, Is you know, back, back then. Oh. So, for Captain those of you that were in Garden State and got to partake, I cracked open my James T. Kirk uh, 12 year old uh, whiskey. Wasn't sure how it was going to be. It was actually a hit. Everybody loved it. I still got some left, and I have kept it there, so I do have something I can take a shot with if we start hitting some goals today. Nice. Who makes See, I've got a mini D. Kirk. Uh, yeah. Who makes that? The, uh, there's a company. There's actually a, a number of, of uh, different ones that they've made, all Star Trek themed. Um, I actually do have Klingon Blood Wine, Romulan Ale. And then they came out with stupid sparkling Federation water. I bought one and <laughs> I'll never buy a, a, another one. But uh, Scotty had, um, uh, he had, it was a whiskey, uh, a scotch. Scotty had a scotch. Um, and that I tried to get my hands on. I ordered it and they wound up refunding it. They didn't have enough. And uh, so anyway, they are they have a whole group of these. So I am almost out of Captain James T. Kirk. And if I can find another bottle somewhere reasonably, I will probably pick up another bottle. And I never did get my hands on the Scotty one. Um, just like I was also trying to get Metallica had their own and it was fantastic. And it was aged by putting it in a room filled with their sound, their songs. And because of their vibrations of their sound, um, it was supposed to give it a very unique flavor. I was not able to get my hands on one of those either. I can't of. imagine that you could taste any difference. I mean, yeah, <laughs> the, the sound thing sounds a little uh, bullshit. Oh. Yeah. Just say it though. It was cool. It was cool. So here's Okay. Here's a question for the audio experts here, Brian, Dan, no offense, Dennis. Um, I have a mini soundboard. When Dennis and I first started doing our podcast, it was audio only on iTunes and stuff. So we had this mini soundboard. Yep. Is that something that would make a big difference if I used it, plugged it into the computer, I guess, and used it for this stuff or not you even can, worth Do you time? have it so we can see it? 
sure I'll go I'm get not it. an audio expert by the way I just yeah to... well I mean I mean really like the only reason I asked like you know you no, I'll go get it no I'm serious I'll go get it I'll be right back Dennis try that far away Dennis try not to drive this show into the ground like those freaking terrorists did on 911 okay I'll be right back wow Jesus. <laughs> man uh man have you been watching fallout Dennis not not yet not yet. I um, I have to get caught up on Halo. I did get caught up on Shogun, X Men, uh, ninety seven, Bad God. Batch. Um, my my wife and daughter they went off to uh, Korea and Japan for a little bit. I was like, oh my god, I finally have time. So I did get caught up on a lot of that. Um, but uh, Fallout, I know you mentioned it. Yeah, uh, last good. airbender I finished, so I, I got caught up on that. So tell me, is no. Fallout worth watching? No, it's not, it's not woke, anger gamer. But uh, man, everybody put an X in the chat if you watched the last episode of X Men 97, probably the greatest episode of a cartoon ever in the history of cartoons. Put an X in the chat if you uh, if you saw it, man, it was absolutely incredible. Is and now everybody that X Men old stuff or is it? Is yeah, it it's, no, the, it's, it's the X Men Fox cartoon, like from Fox Kids, except they're continuing that storyline now. And uh, anyway, like it's man, the story. I mean, it's been really, really dark. I mean, are, are these are these the old cartoons? Or are these these new, re, new made, newly made? They're they're newly made, but they're in the style of the old cartoon. Ah. Okay. And, and it literally right. picks up um, right where the older ones had left off of uh, the X-Men animated series. Now, yeah. the hubbub was a lot of people were upset. Oh, my God, it's so woke. This is what's going on with Morph. They got rid of wokes, uh, rogues, bodacious, butt cheeks, <laughs> things like that. And honestly, it it is – there's so very little of that in there. It is really decent X-Men storytelling. Oh my God, Dennis, we're down to like five viewers. What did you do? Seriously. <laughs> this is what happens when you let the co-pilot man the man the plane. What do you mean? We picked up 12 viewers while you were gone. Oh, <laughs> shit, man, he's gone. All right, I found the box. Unfortunately, I know it's back there some way. The closet I have is like a black hole. Things go in and they get lost in the vortex. Oh, um, but I did I did find you're, the box. You're the, only, you're the only thing to ever go into the closet and come out. <laughs> Shut up. So this is what it is. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if that's going to make a difference, if it's worth plugging in. So Probably. yeah, like, uh, Probably, so, man. Yeah, the only thing is, is that there's, um, see the, the little black round circles in the upper left-hand corner of the, um, of that yeah. deal. So those are XLR cables. That's where you plug in the XLR stuff. And then they have, you know, regular audio headphone jacks, which are the, the metal round ones. And then you have the the right and left, which is the red and the red and the white. Something if you ever played Nintendo, you would know that's what those those are the two audio for the left and the right. But um, like if you were to get, yeah, it's a very yeah, it is definitely just a mini mixer. Um, like if you were to get like say an XLR or, or not an XLR, I'm sorry, um, a Sure SMB or Sure M7. Like most of those come like the the M7 has a USB connection, a USB C, but it also has an XLR connection. You can plug that into that round part. And that's the connection that you would end up needing. And uh, when you have a sound mixing board like that, you don't necessarily need a cloud lifter or an amplifier um, because that's kind of what it's kind of what that that system does. I mean, you can put it on there. It's just uh, trying to clear the static and and does a little enhancement. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, see, I mean, what's, no, what's going on with these uh, microphones, Andy? Is the the Sure microphones? They're low. Uh, they're low output. Like when, yep. so you need some to kind of boost the signal of it, versus yep. the, versus a Yeti, which is, takes care of it all. This as, as this as, this this lower end one has more of a output a boost in it built into it. Right. But the but the the the, the six hundred dollar one, the four hundred dollar one, whatever, that needs your both sounding board that you have there to to boost yep. that signal into your computer. But man, if you get it, you got the best sound you're gonna have. It's like it's really it's that's what the, you know the people yeah. use the professionals use. So you know. Oh okay. Well, I mean, I have an old school mic that actually uh, plugs into that mixing board. It's not the USB. It's that that 
fatter round one you were yeah, talking about, yeah, Brian. Yeah, I've got I've got one of those mics. There's no settings on it. It's just the mic. It depends the quality know. of the mic. That's yeah. Right. I mean, it was a good, you know. Dan was, is dead on. Yeah, it it all depends on the quality of the mic. Yeah, yeah, I can't remember what type it is, but yeah, I thought Disney. I actually had it, but I I went and checked. I thought I had my my board sitting here, but it's not. It must be packed away. Because because I mean, some of the digital mics nowadays, I mean, they they do really amazing. They do a really amazing job. Like and and they're doing the same right now with uh, some of the cameras that do a true digital. Um, true digital mirrorless look like the the elgato face cam pro does a does a complete digital mirrorless image like most of the time when you want to get like one of the high-end high-end webcams you would take like a, a mirrorless camera like a like a canon a7 III or something like that and use that as a, a deal like because it doesn't have to process anything and uh, the the Elgato Facecam Pro, like it, it does an almost exact replica of that in 4K at full 60 frames a second, and it's four four hundred dollars for just the camera. Wow! From Elgato. Well, yeah, I don't need to look that good on a stream yeah. where people can see all the 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 pores and everything in my face. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure Dan is is using a 1080, 1080 camera. I don't think you're not using a Brio or anything. I am using my like iPhone, it. actually. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say it's, it's, it's really, really good. good. Yeah, it's yeah. really, really good. But that's because you also have your lighting set up pretty well, too. Yeah, I worked on my lighting. Very yeah, well. I was yeah. going to say if if, uh, if Dennis and Andy worked on their lighting a little more, like their their picture <laughs> would be super crisp as well. Well, I, I have a problem. I I cannot work on it. on me. I got I got you know I got I got a lot of like uh, these are uh, incandescent lights on dimmers. Yeah, you know they kind of give you a. a I mean, Dan has his effect. wife do makeup before he goes on a live stream. I mean, it's ridiculous. She touches him up, powders him down, all that garbage. <laughs> so I'm wearing, I, I'm wearing makeup now, and I'm not even on stream. Look at like like if you're looking at me now, see how I'm kind of white whited out. Now look, yeah. as soon as I do that, it gets worse because the problem that I have in my setup is I've got one spotlight, but and it can be warm, but my whole thing is nothing but computer monitor. So I've right. got two thirty twos, and it's going from here all the way curved around. That's all monitor. So when I'm going through and flipping through stuff. It will wash it out completely, so it doesn't matter what else I have set up. I'm, I'm going to be washed out because I'm literally just sitting, you know, yeah. two feet. Well, from, you can, you know, you can do a little bit of effect there by by using your screensavers and stuff, changing the colors of them and that sort of thing. Your your backgrounds and that's sort of, the only the only thing is with Streamyard they they don't they they have this white interface which just kind of blasts you out. So that's Correct. right. Yeah, you would think they would have a dark mode version, but they haven't put one out yet. And, and that's what I kept looking for. I was looking like, um, like when I'm doing stuff in Word, you know, Word has now gone and they have a dark mode version, but StreamYard doesn't. And actually, a lot of the different ones that were on, they don't. It's strictly and it whites everything out. And it's so surprising. It is what it is. I mean, so everyone's well, using this for streaming. You'd think they would want to give you a dark mode. <laughs> When but you actually, the, you know, sometimes your... that's not a bad lighting. Like, especially if you know, for guys, it's it's you know, key lighting is probably better. You know, it's one sh sharp light. But when with women, you know, I always recommend you know, give get that. You want you don't want any shadows. So so you see someone like Anna, the Star Wars girl, or something like that. She's got she's getting she has a rim light, and you can tell it's and it's hitting her, so she doesn't have any shadows on her face, and that's good for women. You know, like they look they look better when they have uh, you know no right. harsh shadows, but. The guys, you know, you actually this. I have daylight coming in here. Usually, it's even more, you know, dramatic key light, and I try to use, you know. So, well, I was going to say, like, when you were turning on that spotlight there to your right, when you turned it on, like you could see everything adjust. See your colors on your your colors on your uh, posters on your back wall are yeah. really defined, but you're but you're very white. And I, I think that you may have your auto white balance on, and maybe your auto white balance is what's causing it to look like that. Uh, yeah, I probably have the auto white balance on over here. Yeah, right. I'm using I'm using a software called Camo. Oh, my, I was uh, talking about Dan. It's not you, Dan. Your yours is awesome. Yours is oh, okay. Set up. Yeah, I have the auto. Yeah, white I've balance. got I've got on my screens 
nightlight mode, but it doesn't do anything now because it's daylight out and, and well, you, can see, you can see it going on and off when you were clicking. Oh, you it. could. So yeah, what's better? So serious. Is it better? Like it is now or like you this? Can't, you can't really tell. Oh, you can't. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's very minuscule. Oh yeah. But at night when I'm on the computer doing like the Kings or the professionals and stuff, I'll turn it on sometimes because it's so, you know, my, my Cintiq in front of me and my computer screen in front of me. Is so stinking bright that, yeah, the nightlight mode, I see a difference, but I don't know if the viewers see a difference, you know? Hmm. Yeah. So. You know, my, my setup is, is basically, I got two colored uh, uh, LED lights, one on the picture back there, on the Conan, and then a blue one over here, so red and blue. And then, because I, I, I wanted that color, I wanted the, the red, yellow, blue color scheme. And then my, the, my lamp is just, it's, a, it's an incandescent bulb, but it's on a dimmer, when it goes really low, you get color. I, was, I can show you that actually. Hang on. A second. And StreamYard has the new touch up my appearance. <clears throat> yeah. And I just jacked it all the way up, and now I look like a girl. So, man, when you do touch up your appearance, the cool thing is that it makes you look as good as possible. And Andy turned into Dennis. So it's amazing how well that works. Oh, boy. Here we go. See with the with the incandescent when you when you have it on a dimmer you can lower it down and then all of a sudden you get you know the color. It, <laughs> otherwise it's blown out. You know if this is a forty watt bulb too. If this was a like a, a, a seventy five watt, watt bulb, it'd be it'd be so white in here. So dimmers are really important when you're using if you're using that on you know trying to create light. See, I, I I actually just turned off my my quote unquote studio background for my real house. I just don't like showing this. People don't need to see my baby grand piano. And, mm. you know, I mean, you know, it's just not a good look. So instead, just, I just got this fake, yeah. I got this fake crap background of, uh, of uh, you know, an artist studio. And I, I just look more dingy. But I, I think that makes me more real to the people. That's more so, erudite. And, uh, yeah, exactly. Intellectual. Exactly. I like, how hum I like how humble you are. Oh, I thank you. I try. So you know, probably, Dennis is probably the most humble person I know. Said no one ever. <laughs> Dennis is Dennis's real background because that's a fake background. I'm sorry, I have to out you. Dennis's real background <laughs> kind of reminds you, kind of reminds you of uh, of uh, that that Muppet from Sesame Street in a trash can. Who's that one that lit that homeless one? You, uh, you mean you mean the Grouch? Yeah, Oscar, Oscar the, the Grouch. Grouch. Yeah, Oscar the Grouch. Dennis's background is like a big dumpster that he's actually streaming from. And yeah, it's just I said, Dennis, just put up get a fake background from online of some nerd that has lots of X-Men posters. So that's what he did. So hey you guys, how do you say this guy's name in the chat? Borivie? Borivoye? Bori. Anyways, he's wondering if I wanted if I'm planning on joining Devo, and I wasn't, but that's a very good idea. I like that. That is a good idea. Uh, everybody should, you know, if you I mean, that's, your hat. that's everybody's idea, really. I mean, think about it. Who would want to Bori? Be on Devo? But now I'm trying to figure it out. Bori, ve, Bori Voye Gribic. What language is that, Dennis? You speak everything. What is that? <laughs> Did I speak every. Well, it's not Klingon. That much I know. No. Good Lord. Good Lord. Can't Crack you just that it whip. Out? So John, John's going to uh, love the CG. See you guys later tonight for round. All right, John. Thank you. Thank you all. Not just John, but John's taking off. But seriously, thank you all guys for, uh, for, for rocking. Let's see. We'll just do a refresh. Why not? Dan, see, got, it Dan right. got it right. Serbian. Dan always gets it right. Hmm. Serbian. Nine seven five five. So close to ten grand in my first shot. Mm, I can taste that peanut butter whiskey on my lips. Yeah. Well, Let's do it. Two hundred and forty-five dollars to go. You know, guys, we would get there really quick if somebody just was like, you know what? It's, I'm new to this whole core draft thing. I should probably get the core draft volume one and two. Get everything collector box. Oh my god, it retails for five ten. These schmoes are selling it for $3.99. Hell yeah, I should get that. And then boom, I can do a shot. And Dennis can too. 
Man. Look at that. Yeah, I might I might have to uh if we if we get close, I will have to run down and get a shot glass because I do not have shot glasses. Oh, drink my, it out of the bottle, you baby. Quote, virtual room. Just drink it out of the bottle. Is this the first time Dan shown his helmet on stream? No. Well, I mean, the one he's wearing right now. No. No, no. Dan's <laughs> worn it before. He yeah, just has normally has two horns attached to it. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Now he just looks like, what was that character from the Golden Age? Bullet Man? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Remember Bullet <laughs> Man? Bullet Man, the human bullet. Dan's cosplaying as Bullet Man. I knew it. All right, Andy, time to play that trailer. Let's get people in the mood. We'll go through it because we got a bunch of new people on. All right. Does it Guys, say here is the trailer. Uh, I want to mute just in case there's an echo because I want to play from the actual. Oh, wait. I don't know if I shared audio. Never mind. I'm not going to play it from here. I'm going to play it so it takes up a full thing. So, Dennis, why I play it, that gives you about a minute to run downstairs and get a shot glass. Okay. I think you can do it. I mean, you can't do a 40 second, whatever. Oh, he's already gone. I got faith. I got faith. Never lets me finish a joke, that bastard. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, Thank oh, you man. very much, Peter Ma. To hell with taxes. That was back awesome. Game modules. That's Eddie, what we like to hear. That was We are awesome. only uh, 100 and, uh, God, I got to do math, 42 dollars away from me having some old smoky peanut butter whiskey. You guys thought I was kidding peanut when I said butter. peanut butter whiskey. Oh, hell no. I don't kid about flavored whiskey. Hmm. I'll tell you what, man, if that didn't wake you up, I don't know what will. Shot glass. Yeah, I got to say, the trailer is fantastic. Like, just how you start out with kind of nice music and then turn into rock. What a cool, cool twist, you know? And, and, and it just, I don't know, it's great. Then you got, looks like Cordrath is going to fight Necron. I mean, that's going to be cool. This is going to be a lot of fun. So I'm looking forward to Thank it. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I can't, I can't, or Dennis and I can't really express how much Nick, the guy that did it, is just so good with these. He does, you know, I found out through him from Graham. Uh, Aaron found out from him through Graham. He, so, you know, he's, he does mine, Aaron's, Graham's, and uh, he just does a freaking great job. Oh, that's fantastic. So, so yeah, poor yeah. Awakening. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I have a, I have a question for you, man. And man, you know, like they say, you can't really choose between your children or anything, but, you know, like you've done First Man, which is which was definitely your baby a while back, and now, like you're doing Core Drive, and you like. Are you guys hearing that? By the way, that one? saw. Yeah, you're hearing that yeah. saw. No. Okay, I'm gonna have to shut this get... window. <laughs> Why would no, I don't hear it at all? What's going on out there? Somebody. Uh, somebody wanted to play something. <laughs> they they got the 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 uh, sounds like they're a chainsaw going out there. I like right, it. Brian got the reference. He said somebody wants to play a game. Yeah, someone said, would you like to play a game? Um, but but yeah, like uh, so you know you went from the the first core draft book now immediately into the second core draft book because I mean it's been picking up steam. It's it's amazing the 
the the modules great the story is incredible you got the the absolutely amazing bud root doing some artwork for you you got bart sears and dan lawless like cranking out some special covers so i guess like who um would you would you say that Cordrath right now is your favorite over first man or or would you well, uh, you know you can't you you can't have a favorite now um uh, I mean, you first can. man, first man's the oldest. First man has grown up, want to fly on its own. We're still nurturing uh, Cordrath into adulthood. Uh, so, so you know, the care is more for Cordrath right now. But like every good child, they come back and you want to do something with them again. And that is the hope with first man. So there you go. How's that? And we're eighty-one dollars away from Dennis getting shit-faced. That's awesome. <laughs> and me doing one shot. <laughs> I mean, if uh, you know when when this is is super uber successful, like your last one, and you bring up it's time for the next campaign. Will the next campaign be a core draft campaign, or will it be a first man campaign, or will it be something altogether new? Uh, no, it'll probably be another core draft one. Nice. Uh, I do have something in mind with first man that's that's on a smaller scale of things that could possibly be uh 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 an additional we'll just say uh thing so we'll we'll just have to see play by play by ear shall you say yeah shall there's, i say? there's a, there's a lot of things on the on the horizon and i think a lot of it really will have to do with the success of uh of Cordrath. If you guys like it, it gets bigger and bigger. Um yeah, I, I can see us doing some more right right along with this. Yeah, so it, it really just does does depend. I mean I really do enjoy working on Cordrath. I mean look I'm not gonna lie, not drawing real buildings and like weaponry and cars and stuff like that. Kind yeah. of fun. <laughs> yeah a lot easier. <laughs> cars are a bite man. I'll tell you man. I sort of, they're just tough to draw. And you did a great video on, you know, I, I thought the way you did that video on drawing a car was really good. Yeah. Um, I use reference all the time when I'm, I'm using cars. Oh, yeah. But like, I mean, there's there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, you, you, you go back 30 years, 25 years for that matter. I mean, go back anytime in the 90s. And yeah, Neil Adams would say, uh, would pretty much always say, you know, if you're drawing cars or even he, i remember him telling me one time you know even if you're drawing a toaster if you can find a photograph of it in the angle you want just trace it off you yes. know and this goes back neil was talking back from when he was doing advertising in the 60s 70s and and such well, so, reference is a big part of illustration i mean you you know you oh yeah you use it all the time uh, you just you just gotta know how to use it right that's the difference right. is, is if you use it correctly and cars are a little tricky. Cars are weird because they're not exactly a rectangle, and they're not right. exactly a, a well. A, not, they're not like how to draw comics the Marvel way. Rectangle. <laughs> yeah. um, yeah. Real the same quick, as cars. The same as cars sucked actually. <laughs> Inter <laughs> internet guy, for, internet guy for two bucks. Will the fourth fourth book be called Four Draft? Well, I mean, we if we tell you that, we'd have to kill you. We can't let all secrets go. Jesus, well, guys, just so you know, all four books have their name. They've already been named. And I will say that is not it. So great guess. But if you do get it right in the chat, I'll post it and let you know you're amazing and clairvoyant. Guys, Dennis, it's that time of day where we need to pour ourselves shots. $10,000, $14. Really? We hit it. Wow. Nice. We are doing a shot. Dennis and I will virtual toast through the screen it would be funny if if he was actually here and you guys see that's what i wouldn't mind doing one day is taking a picture of dennis's background and having him in the same room with the green screen behind him and then like i walk over into his and vice versa that'd be hilarious <laughs> nice one brian it is not the quickening but i like your thought mm -mm. Oh yeah! I tell you, it's or fun to see. Type of like, shot glass do you have, Dennis? I'll show you because I'm, I'm pouring it. It's a Packers guy. Who? Yeah, it is Green Bay oh, Packers. God. Clay Matthews, baby. Hold on here. Let's uh, clean this stream up. Okay, guys. 
Uh, <laughs> the funny thing is, he can add himself back because we share the stream. Stuff, so. Okay, so unfortunately, <laughs> I didn't realize that that is not a single. That's a double shot glass. So oh, well. uh -oh. this is going to be one of these where I'm going to get face really quickly. Yeah, so, but the nice part is if if your wife is like, "Hey, I need to need you to drive somewhere," you can be like, "Not happening." Uh, that already is being said. Well, All right, put it up to the camera, big guy. All right, cheers. Cheers. Clink. All right. Hopefully, this is the first of many. Mm hmm. Mm. I've got my goblet. Ah, oh, peanut butter Earth. whiskey is so freaking smooth. Oh, it's got a bite to it. I can literally feel uh, hair growing on top of my head. I just, if you could hear it, I just heard a plick under my hat. <laughs> Boy, the burn, up, I feel up. the burn all the way down. I don't mean like the burn after working out. This is a whole different burn. Oh, God. A, you getting a burn from working out? It's been so long. I don't even know if you'd recognize that feeling. You guys wow. remember that? Remember that uh, Roger Miller song? Chug a lug, chug a lug, makes you want to holler, hidey ho, burn your tummy, don't you know? Nine more <laughs> shots than six <laughs> figures. That's right, guys. The next <laughs> shot's at twenty. You know, that, maybe it's that well. happens today, guys. All I will say is, well, I will thank you all somehow hey. tonight by Ethan stream, and I'll be passed out. And then we can maybe I'll do one a stream like Dale where I'm just passed out in the chair and you guys can keep an eye on me for the rest of the night. <laughs> Look, I've set I we set it on the first campaign. We'll say it on this campaign. When we hit six mm -hmm. figures, now remember we hit six figures on the previous campaign on the closeout. It was the closeout. Oh, when we hit six figures on this campaign, the sooner we hit it, the more entertaining. And what I mean by that is we will not cut our hair until we close the campaign. So let's say we hit six figures next month. That means I will not shave my head <laughs> for at least, because this campaign will be up until January, uh, most likely. I won't cut it mm. for that long, and neither will Dennis. Now, you might go, well, Dennis already has hair on the top of his head. He does. But he cuts it once a month. I shave yeah. mine every every other day. Isn't that going to slow you down in the swimming gone. pool, though, Andy? What's that? Isn't it going to slow you down in the swimming pool? You know, no, with no. The, all that hair. When, when it doesn't matter how how shaved you are or not, when you're just being held underneath waterboarding, right. it doesn't matter. Mm. Well, I mean, I was actually going to say when I do laps, I do it naked, and all the pubic hair doesn't slow me down. So I don't think that's going to wow. slow me down. You know, and that's full drag because remember when you're image. when you're swimming, you're face down and your head pops up every now and then. But the pubes are always down, dragging me some with my time. So, yeah, if you want to know. <laughs> uh, so well, six figures. What I always say it's always, it's TMI. always TMI. Thank you, Paul. We were on the exact same wavelength there. Six figures, and uh, I will not shave my head until the campaign's over. And the longest I've ever gone is 30 days and no shave November, and it gets a little out of control. So I'm just saying, uh, watch Andy has long flowing hair. No, but if I go that, if I if I let my the top of my head go for eight or nine months, I could do a ponytail and it would look awful because mm -hmm. those guys with the U shape. You know, the male pattern baldness, and they can only grow the horseshoe that have ponytails look ridiculous. I think they're awesome. But, well, that's because you want it. You want to see me doing that. <laughs> no, they're cool, I think. It depends oh, on, says, okay, the guy that, it. says the guy that has a full head of hair. Now, if Dan had my problem, <laughs> there's no way those words would come out of his mouth. Hey, I've seen cool dudes with the, with the ponytail, uh, the horseshoe ponytail thing. Yeah, you're so full yeah. of shit. And, and Andy never has to worry about being cool, so we're we're cool with that. <laughs> oh, you bastard! <laughs> you, I would. I'd have a freaking mullet because what? there is no party in the front; it's all in the back. So if I let my hair go that long, I'd have a party in the back. All right. I have a mullet. I had a mullet. Well, if this campaign hits six figures really quick, you'll have another one. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm serious. So actually, just because I, my wife's uh, uncle was Mr. Michigan in the, in the fifties, you know, and, uh, he was just this mountain of a man just built like a tank. And, 
and he had them, he had one of those, and it just I thought it was cool, like you know, because he was cool, you know, he's just a he was a cool dude. So I wasn't yeah, going to say to I, him, hey, I, I didn't want to go up to him and say, hey, uh, you know, that looks really stupid. You know? <laughs> if I grow if I grow my hair for that long, it'll be a vacant lot in the front and a party in the back. Sounds good. People will roll up and be like, there's nothing happening here. It's just a vacant lot. And then they turn around back and they're like, oh, that's the party right there. Mm -hmm. And when we hit $100,001, uh, Brian's not going to cut his hair for the whole time either, he said. Nope. Nope. I will uh, I will do the, um, I will keep my hair. I will not, not cut it at all and see if I can get a mullet and... Uh, yeah, like and and if you hit if you hit one fifty, I'll do the fryer tuck. What's up? Oh shit, that is on record. When we hit one hundred fifty thousand, I'm not going to throw you under the bus like that, Brian. When we hunt, hit one hundred fifty thousand, at that point, the only reason Dennis is going to cut his hair is to do a fryer tuck. Yeah. He's going to have his wife shave the dome circle in the top of his head. And I'll have the rest long at 150. Isn't that while right, drinking, big guy? While drinking some whiskey. Right. So I'm looking for a picture of the mullet, and I came across uh, that. See, there's the uh, the uh, stupid sparkling cider, because you know, or, or sparkling water, because mm -hmm. that's what the Federation's known for is their goody two shoes water. Mm -hmm. But there is my Deep Space Nine Klingon blood wine mm -hmm. and the Romulan ale. So I do have pictures of that. I will continue to look, though, for uh, for a mullet because I do have pictures. So here's a question for the people watching Shogun, which I know three of us. Dan, you're not watching Shogun, I take it? I am not, no. The show. Oh, no. damn. That's fine. So there's My a guy in watching it. that stuff. It's not, I'm not, there, I'm not, I'm not there, there's a guy in it who has basically the Friar Tuck, right? You got Dennis, Brian, you know who I'm talking about. Yep. Is it a hair piece or did that guy shave his head for real? What do you think? It's a hair piece. Uh, I don't I don't know. Like they went they went pretty like when you watch the behind the scenes and stuff, like a lot of those people went went hardcore about it. You think, think that think, so do you I think, think the, the, I think he did it. You think the Japanese actors in the show did that? Did their shave job for real too, where it's all on the sides but down the middle? I don't know. I, I his look like a hairpiece. Just saying. Most of them I would agree with. By the way, there's, there's a, a nerd. Mullet. There's a mullet right there with a beer. Gotta love it. I, 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 I really want my to grow my hair long again, but I don't know. My my wife already hates my goatee right now. I don't know. I don't know. Don't know you if could I want to do a Vidal Sassoon commercial with that hair. You know, the funny thing is, Dennis, you could have your daughter uh, style her hair that way and then dye it brown and uh, go as you for Halloween. Well, you know what? I will show you what, what my hair was at one point. Um, here, I'll show you because then I got it cut. Because you know, I had to, I had to join the the workforce, you know, as, so to speak. But that was that was my hair. Oh, oh my shit. god! Love Why would you even show that? You're so embarrassing to yourself. Why is that embarrassing? The fact that you even had to ask that just shows why. So this is when you were at full strength. That did you lose? No, no, it actually went longer than that. But uh, at one point, but I did get a cut. So uh, I'll, I'll I'll show you I'll show you that here in a second here. Present. Dennis likes to tell people that uh, you know when he got married. When I donated it. That's the after effect. Same shirt and everything. I had yeah, donated it for uh, you know locks of love. Now there's a whole bunch of different ones out there. Now, did you lose your strength when you cut the hair like Samson? Or I did. Yeah, it was very sad. But uh, I will show. I will show I had uh, my real hair once. Um, I used to be great at at the Renaissance Fair, right? Here, I'll show you. Uh, I still pop this up every once in a while. Uh, oh my that God. was me back in the day before all the, the, the gray kind of set in. The hair went. It was, it was all very natural. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Yeah. Jesus. And he's jealous because he hasn't seen that since... He he was born. It's a good thing Dennis is married because if he was single right now 
any woman that was watching this that even had an inkling of saying that guy's cute, I'd like a shot, is literally right now going, nope, I'm out. What a dork. Very close. Well, yeah, I thought close. you were going to do the opposite. I thought, guards. I thought they would be mauling him at, 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 at wherever he walks. Dude, they did. We even we even had, um, back in the day, there was, they call them riots. We call them protests and stuff. But we were out walking because so it was all about the drinking age. I can't tell you how many girls were, like, out in the streets. And they would walk up to me and start petting because my hair was very silky smooth. And they were like, oh, my God, you have amazing hair. I was told that so often. I really kind of miss that hair. I, I don't think it would be the same color, but, you know. It, it it probably has that same feel even today. Just well, I, can, I can see why your wife had you cut it then. She 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 was claiming her territory. Right. She took me off the market. Exactly. Andy doesn't understand this. Can't have girls involved. coming up to you and hey Dennis, go to your hair. closet. This guy wants to see your white robe and don't forget the hood. Um, <laughs> white robe. What? So this is about Shogun. And real quick, guys. Yeah, Dennis donated hair for Locks of Love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? There's a foundation you can donate hair to for the guys, the people out there that have, what is it, alopecia where they can't grow any hair at all. And I'll have you know, some of them don't care about what's on top. They think about the nether regions. So for a whole, I don't know, five or six years, I let the down below nether regions go so I could donate to uh, pubes for publicity <laughs> for the alopecia guys. So I'm just saying... I don't want Dennis to be the only one here thinking, oh, I donated hair. So did I, big guy. Guys, the only people that saw the haircut after were my wife deal in the bathroom mirror. Day. I deal what? with this shit every single day. Marcus can attest. People are like, you guys don't talk like this in real life. This is all for the show. No, guys, this truly is Andy. This is him when he wakes up, before he goes to bed, and all the hours throughout the day, this is Andy. This is what we I think it's. I think it's peanut butter flavored whiskey is what it is. No, it's not. Paul Taylor <laughs> donated his hair to the shower drain. Oh, I, I donate I donate uh, future children to the shower drain. Oh, God. Uh, the smart one. I'm telling you, that. drinking and streaming is not always a good idea. One shot's all it takes. And you know, when you're when you're stealthy 185. Uh, so this is a uh, this is from Mr. Blevins about uh hair and makeup and stuff for the show. Uh they're talking about I'm not reading all this, I'm assuming Blevins did and can fill us in on people that cut their hair and people that didn't. So where's this uh, fire tuck dude? We'll get there. Know. Well, I don't know if he's in this picture. I'm sitting here talking this whole time. Like, you didn't hear me say anything about pubes for puppies or anything like that. <laughs> pubes for puppies? No. E, you puppies. should have your mic turned Oh, on. you were muted? Yeah, yeah, I was muted because uh, I had a had a phone call. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so this, so this absolutely, um, they had a lot of people show up and got into the part and they cut their own hair. But I guess, like, in order for consistency, because, like, there were some people that had super white heads and some that, you know, like, basically they weren't, um, the the skin tone underneath the hair wasn't tapered for, for you know, the time period that they should have been bald in that right. area. They, they ended up going in and they did end up doing wigs. And it says, like, over 700 wigs. So does, wait, so does that include the male actors, yes. the Japanese yeah, yeah. ones that have the yeah, reverse yeah. mohawk? Yeah, down here in the bottom right-hand corner. Uh, go back up. No. Oh. Right there. Scroll down. Oh. Keep going. Keep going down. Right there, that picture. See him down here in the bottom oh, yeah. right Yeah, That's Moki. Yeah, you are cool. right. She yeah. is so hot in this. Just saying. Even hotter than the original Shogun. I'm just going to go there. No, I agree. Mariko is freaking fantastic. Oh, so that is a hair piece on this guy yeah. in the lower right hand corner. Yeah, it is. You can see the plastic and stuff still left over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the side of his face. So, see, I'm telling you, I've been trying to tell Dennis <clears throat> that's the haircut he needs to go with these days, but he just won't do it. I am half Japanese. Shogun is pretty accurate to real history and our traditions. The story is a fiction story based on historical figures. Oh, I think it's great. I saw somebody in the chat earlier say that the original was great, but this one sucks. 
But yeah, I, mean, I don't know. I now I don't remember the original. I saw it so long ago, but I think the show's really good. Well, if you want to rewatch it, let me know and I'll send it to you. Well, you can do that anyhow. Oh, and then I could. So Brian is that the miniseries? Or yeah, was it a mini yeah, the three episode miniseries? Which version? Yeah. So oh my God. there's no no, it makes a difference because there's three different running times. The largest one, Bernardo and I were just having a discussion. We were chatting the, other, the earlier this week. The full one is like nine hours and 40 some minutes. And it's like four, it's like four episodes long. There's three ones and it goes down to like eight hours and 45 minutes. And then there's another cut of it. The one that I could find, the one that IMDB says, isn't the longest cut. I don't remember which one I watched back in the day. So the question is, Brian, which version do you have? We have the three part. Okay. I don't have the four part. All right. All right. Because which you know, big guy? It, I mean, since it came out just after. What, what what you eating there? I figured I better put in a protein bar if I'm going to be drinking alcohol. I've I've eaten nothing today. This could go really bad for the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I agree with Paul in the chat here. Man, man buns are not cool. At least the man, no. the, the modern manifestation of them—that's for sure. No. Now, I mean, what do you think about so. what do you think about pubic hair pigtails? So they hang down on either side of your man. Is that a good look or no? I didn't even consider that as an option. <laughs> Is most guys don't. <laughs> oh, you know, inter when, when you can't the pubic hair, when you can't style <laughs> up here, you like to style where you can. You work so. with what you got, is what you're saying. Right. Right. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. So you don't remember the original? The original one was really good. Yeah. Well, that's the one with uh, uh, what was the guy's actor? Richard that, Chamberlain. Richard Chamberlain. Yeah, he was pretty cool, man. He was a cool dude. That yeah. guy probably got the ladies, if you know what I mean. I have not yeah. watched the old one in so long. I remember really enjoying it. I think this new one now, Bernardo does not like the new one. And he's like, oh, yeah, no, they changed this and they changed that. And it, it's he's got a little bit of hate. So if you're watching, uh, Joe, we're talking about you here. Dude, Admiral. I remember Wackness just said something. because goes, man buns are still cool. You didn't see uh, Yuri Petrostek. Petroska uh, dominate last night. I did watch him dominate last night in the very first round. Oh, he's, a, he's a boxer. It was ridiculous. No, it's a he's an MMA, MMA fighter, MMA. and uh, yeah, he has he has this man bun just shoot straight up in the air. Like who's I mean, the guy? Who is he? East. Yuri Prochaska. Find a picture of him. Share it or send yeah, me. I'm a looking link. at it now. He's he's uh, uh, yeah. I, I wouldn't say it looks stupid on him if I was standing next to him. But. Of course, yeah. you're standing next if, to him. If, if the dude can kick my ass, <laughs> any look, look so that he stupid. has is okay with me. Yeah, yeah. Now, it looks like there's one. It's like a little a... pip squeak that I can put down no problem. Then uh, I don't care what look he has. I'll tell him it sucks. Yeah, one image guys... I'm, I'm looking at looks like a sock puppet on top of his head. Well, share it, Dan. You don't have to be stingy oh. now. Oh, I, I guess I could. I, I didn't even think about that. I didn't realize I had these capabilities. You oh, do. look at that. See, I'm the spitting image of uh, her husband when I took off my cap, but no braiding downstairs. Oh, well, I mean, I could do a ponytail, but it hangs off the front. So it's not really a ponytail. What would that be called if it hangs off the front? Uh, I a mane? Uh, yeah, it's a mane. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't say anything to that guy. <laughs> would you grab that? <laughs> no. That hey, that guy could the, kill me. That looks he's so he's so here. in a coma. Look, he he's got Cordrath like here. Yeah, he beat that dude's tail last night. It was pretty crazy. He he's got Cordrath here. First the funny round, thing huh? is, this is originally what Dennis wanted Cordrath's hair to look like, and I said, "No, Dennis, Cordrath isn't gay." So, oh man, wow. hope he never see, hope he never sees this video. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we're all dead. <laughs> he's he's down. Gonna kick her ass. And if he does, and he reaches out, sorry, Andy, I have no problem doxing you. <laughs> if, he, if he does, and he reaches out, we just lost our lost our actor for Cordrath. Damn it! 
You don't have to outrun him. Just run run faster than the rest of you guys. Dennis. <laughs> run faster than Dennis. Hey, guys, I, I, have, to, to I have to go. Um, i got to return some of these phone calls that I've gotten while I've been on here having fun with you guys. But uh, but I appreciate it. Definitely everybody yeah, back for draft. I mean, it's going to be incredible. Uh, as always, Dennis Sandy, thanks for having me on. Dan Laws, awesome. Always be on with you, man. You're the best. Oh, thanks. So, uh, you too. Cool. Anyway, hey always. Brian, Brian, real quick before you go, yeah. you know I'm always looking out for you at uh, at um, South Carolina Comic Con. Yeah. Uh, last weekend, we were at a booth, and I said, "Look, two huge coloring books. You should tell Brian." So he he messaged you yeah. about them, and yeah. you know, I guess he never got a message back during the show. And I said, "You should text him." He goes, "I don't have his number." And I said, "Oh, I thought Brian was a friend of yours." Like he should have my number. I have his number. You do, Brian. He's full of shit. Uh, <laughs> it's Andy. What are why you? didn't you text him? Why did you message him? He did. Why text did me. I did. Like I, I texted him and messaged him. He was busy. I don't know. I don't believe it. I think he's full of shit. I was Brian, looking out for you, big guy. Brian and I talked about it, by the way. We actually talk on a phone. Instead of texting like you, uh, your generation. You talked about it after the fact when you couldn't get them for him anymore. It was busy. It's all Uh good. Yeah. I I will say this. I outed you earlier in the show because people were talking about the gaming module, right? Yeah. And I did mention that um, hopefully in the next few weeks, we're going to start up uh, a, a show talking about the, the gaming side of things, we'll try and do a weekly or bi-weekly show with I, UI, um, uh, Bernardo, and and probably somebody like John's Longbox or whoever to hop in as guests. But so I did, I did kind of commit you on air for that. No, no, it's all good. Did you did you mention the other thing that we've been talking about? This would be the perfect time to talk about it. The the Ooh, verses, breaking news. The verses. The what? The verses. Oh, no, go ahead and mention it, especially with Andy on here, because he has a yeah. short attention. So, so we've been so we've been talking about how, yeah. like, you know, obviously, like, one of the best, you know, one of the best team uh, on, you know, on streaming right now in the comic book realm is definitely Andy and Andy and Dennis, hands down, right? Well, well thank you. But I but I think me and Scala are I think I think we I think we're pretty good rivals. So I'm thinking what if we do a series of shows where it's Andy Smith and Dennis Turner versus Brian Blevins and Nas Gala? It's like I mean, we could do that. It kind of it kind of be like Dennis and I. It it, it, it kind of be like Dennis and I are the original three episodes of Star Wars, and you guys are those shitty knockoffs. But I mean, we can do it. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. You know. It's like it's like Star Star Trek the original series and whatever that garbage they're showing on Paramount now is. I mean that's fine. Be, if you want to do like, it, it'll be like uh, it'll be like older Andy being like, man, them computers is just a fad, and then like us being already like fully involved with computers and uh, sharing and just obliterating you with technology. I think that's how it would go. But yeah, look, like I think. Look, there, Brian. There is truth to that. I Brian, mean, I know that you and Niall are a little bit younger than Dennis and I, and don't worry, us old guys. It's kind of like what Reagan said to that old timer or to that younger opponent about you oh know age is a good thing in that debate. It's okay. You had to bring up Reagan. We can do. We can do that though. You know, That's fine. You know you're old. You know you're old when you got to quote Reagan. Okay, I just and you know you're not having your diaper change. You're trying to say who is Reagan. <laughs> I think it'll be a really good show, like uh, you know, like Team DNA versus Team Pop XP. So who knows? We'll we'll see if we can get that going. I'm I'm still talking to Nile about it. He's yeah, if he's down for it, we just have to try and figure out. Uh, yeah, if we're gonna do know. if we're gonna do DNA. You guys should do the initial thing too. So it'd be DNA versus BS. I mean, I think DNA wins over BS anytime. <laughs> you know what would win is TNA. It would. So, but Dennis doesn't want to go by his 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 middle name, Tina. 
Oh shit! <laughs> Nobody was supposed to know that. I'm sorry. Or, or my <laughs> last name, which would be the natural conclusion. Oh, Andy, this is, why, this is why you give Brian hope that they could win because you say stupid shit all the time. Yeah, but Dennis, I got to give I got to give it up to Dan. The fact that your last name is Turner and we were thinking about this show and you didn't suggest oh, yeah. TNA as the name for our show really upsets me now. Are you kidding? Now me? I did say that. <laughs> now we're, we're branded like, oh, as oh, DNA. I don't know. Uh, whatever. Oh hey, my speaking God. of Tina Turner, you know what would be a great name for a show? Thunderdome. Thunderdome. <laughs> that'd be good. <laughs> that'd that'd be good. Well, that's what it should be. It should be the DNA and the Pop XB Thunderdome. Yeah, people yeah, into then, the Thunderdome. Like basically, yeah, basically we, we will battle it out in 10 episodes to see who runs Barter Town. Yeah, but then at that point, if we're going to do this head-to-head -head type show, mm -hmm. I think it needs a moderator named Dan Lawless. Yeah, I'm a peacemaker. I, I, be, I, I, I am. I am a peacemaker, be, known to be. Uh, I would not be opposed to that. But yeah, I'm, I'm thinking. What we, I think what we do is we we play to the strengths. Like, I choose what I would like to do. I choose five episode themes. Nal will choose five episode themes. Like Dennis will choose five episode themes, and then Andy, you choose five episode themes, and then we put them all in a bag and we shuffle them all up. But we only do ten episodes. And we do oh, I get it. Oh, I see what you're saying. The problem is if we do that, Andy has to give us his login for Pornhub because that's about the only thing he would suggest. <laughs> wow. Dude, I bootlegged that shit. I don't have a login. <laughs> I mean, yep. come on. All right. Well, okay, Brian. Yeah, we'll figure something out. But that's if right. Niles but yeah, is we just have to figure out a good way time. to make this happen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty fun, I think. So but anyway, you guys have a you have a great rest of your day and uh Thank we'll you. talk with you guys later. Peace. Yes. All right, Brian. Take you guys. Right. Talk to you later. Definitely See bye. You. See you later, Dan. Bye. See ya. Hey Dan, I can't remember. Are you uh uh are you a Star Trek guy from the standpoint of you've watched their the original series and all that or no? Yeah, I was a big Star Trek fan when I was younger, yeah. Okay. But, you know, I haven't watched him in years, though, so I don't, I'm not like a, I would not do good on Star Trek trivia or something like that, you know. Right. But I, I love him and I, I really, uh, you know, I, 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 so, yeah, we always watched him. Well, I remember, I, I actually, it's kind of funny. I remember, I still have this memory. I was at my buddy's house across the street and, the, the, you know, this is back in, the, the, he had this TV that you kind of had to hit the side of to make it work. You know, you remember those? Oh, yeah. you give oh, it yeah. a smack. The Zenith. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, right. uh, uh a commercial came on for Star Trek and it said, you know, starting at 4 p.m. And I'm and I said, Can I have a piece of paper? And I wrote down, like, I remember writing down Star Trek, I, like, just from this ad. I want to see that, you know, like, <laughs> but uh, it was tough when I, when I went home. I, I, we weren't allowed to watch much TV. So, but I was like, I got to see the show. It's like, it was so cool. I, you know, I never seen anything like it, you know. So, this is pre Star Wars, probably, you know. Yeah. So, so confirmed, cool. Dan grew up Amish, couldn't watch TV or have electricity. <laughs> Um, no, I'm asking because I told Dennis last week, I said, you know, Paramount Plus has the original series on it. I said, I might have, I said, I might start watching it. So here's, here's honest opinion from you two and anybody in the chat. I could see, I've watched a couple episodes, the first couple episodes, and I could see back then in 66 going, oh, this is cool. It's fresh, whatever. And, and getting into it. However, because this is the first time I've watched this stuff probably since the 70s, so maybe going 50 years, I got to be honest, I don't think I'm going to watch any more of it because it was just, it was just, it was kind of slow and boring to me. Hmm. And I'm wondering how many people are Star Trek fans that could sit through the original stuff if they went back. In other words, they picked up Star Trek, let's say in the 90s, and they really liked it. And then they're like, all right, let me go try and watch, let me go watch the original series so I can say I'm a completist. But like me, they were like, oh, I, I just can't do it because the effects aren't there. It's kind of slow and stuff. Hmm. What well, do you think? Did you start like right from the beginning? Is that what you're doing or like? The... Yes. Okay. Well, I mean, there there are a lot of great stories in there that are. in that series. Well, I mean, see, Paul's got a point because Andy's one of these uh, uh, 
special effects snobs. That's why I won't watch E.T. or anything that old. Uh, they remastered the special effects. So if you really want, you just have to find, make sure it's the remastered versions that they do it. The, the storyline hasn't changed at all. Well, I mean, I would assume that the Paramount Plus ones are the remastered special. I mean, that's just it. I've, I don't remember them well enough from back you know, 50 years ago. So watching it on Paramount Plus, I mean, the first episode had some phaser blast. I couldn't tell you if those were remastered or not. And were the first episodes in full color back then, Dennis, or no? Yeah. yeah. Oh, they yeah, were? Okay, sure. that's what I thought. So, I mean, honestly, I really couldn't tell you if they were remastered. Now, I will say, as a young man watching it, if, if you were a young man in 66, you know, or a boy, I could see why you watched it because besides O'Hora, there was this other chick that had blonde hair that was kind of up in this cool hairdo. And I'm looking at him going, nice short skirts. I could see why the young gentleman of the day liked this show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeoman Rand. So, uh, yeah, Grace Whitney. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know what Paramount's broadcasting because I don't have it. Because I own the remastered, which also had the original versions <clears throat> on Blu-ray, so you know I don't don't bother to stream them. Aha, so buttface here, buttface McBooby, like it says they are the remastered ones. Okay, I mean I don't think they remastered. Now I'll be honest, did they remaster even so on the and I, it was this, it was the first episode where they went down to that planet. And Dr. McCoy ran into an uh, old flame of his, and it wasn't actually her. It was this shape-shifting. That sucked the salt out. Yeah. So my question is, if they remastered those effects, they didn't do it extremely, because I thought the effect when the shape-shifter changed was pretty pretty much on par with 1960s. Well, a lot of the special effects are the phaser fire, uh, the ship oh. combat when they're coming into orbit on a planet, um, stuff like oh. that. Yeah, okay. yeah, they're not they're they didn't redo all of all of that. Okay. You know? Hey you guys, speaking of remastered, have you guys seen that guy doing those like uh Cinevision or something the adjustments of of things like the Avengers or Lord of the Rings? Uh, no, he goes back and, and makes him makes a trailer out of him that looks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was actually I've got them up here. I was just watching oh. them. Yeah, put a, can you bring those up? They're so freaking cool, man. Pull one up and share it. We'll watch it. Make sure oh. Dennis. Make sure you share your audio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've actually I know what you're talking about. A buddy of ours has sent them to me. I haven't had a chance to. Uh, oh, they're so cool. There's a Star Wars. Yet. There's a Lord of the Rings. There's an Avengers. Yeah, let's there's a Tron. Them. There's a Tron one. It's wild, man. I do like, and I will say, there. You know, I'm not, I'm not dogging on the original series. I think watching William Shatner and 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 the whole cast is great. And mm -hmm. once again, I'm only two episodes in. Well, I watched part of the pilot. I didn't get through the whole pilot because I'm like, you know what, this dude doesn't carry on as the captain, so I don't care. I want to watch Kirk. So I'm only two episodes in and I'll probably watch more. And obviously it's 88 episodes. I think total, they mm. obviously get better as characters, as actors and all that. Sure. But I don't want to just jump to like the last few episodes either. All right. You guys ready? Yeah. Yeah. It looks Which like your sound on or off. It looks like your sound is off on YouTube. It, it, it is off on YouTube. Let me do that. And then I'm going to mute myself just to make sure we don't. Well, wait, Dennis, wait real quick. You've seen this already? Yes. Do we need sound or no? It's got music, but. It's kind of cool. Yeah. It, it is. Gives you, it gives you the atmosphere it's of ambient. the old style. Okay. No, that's uh, cool. It's an old style I, trailer. No, that's fine. All right, let's do it. Not hearing anything, though. Yeah, I don't hear it. No sound. Yeah, no sound. No sound, De Dennis. Well, that is really weird since it shows it was. Uh... Okay. 
I'll try it again. Yeah, just try it one more time. If not, if it's just music, it's no big deal. It is just music, it's, but it's uh, like Tom but Hardy. Maybe. That's not the one I'm talking about, though. I mean, I, I, this is there, there, there's also a retro one. Yeah, that that's the one right I'm thinking about. The retro one. one. You'll see this one, then I can do the retro one. Yeah, the retro one is the one I was, I was talking about. It's really funky because it's Rutger Hauer. No, we know. We we know more. it. We know yeah, it's we know. not real. Oh, Doctor, he says Dennis the Menace strikes again. Oh, that air like guy paint dry. Yeah, oh, here we go. Like... <laughs> there I you heard... go. Wait, huh? Still nothing. Oh, wait, no, here we go. No, there Who's it up? Is. Sound a little more. It's quiet. Yeah, you can hear it. Good enough. So this is just like AI with different actors, huh? Oh, I can actually see Tom Hardy now. Oh, yeah, that is Tom Hardy. Oh, well, that is not cool. bad. I actually like it. For me hating Cyclops, I like this one. Not a fan of the goatee, though, the beard and stuff. Oh, that's pretty good. Yep. Oh, that'd be uh, cool. I don't know. He has to have white hair. Oh, that's not bad. That's good. We, we think yep. of that, Dennis. Oh, no, no. I like it. We like it. I don't even know who this is, but she looks good. I don't know who that is either. Hey, oh, Scott. I wouldn't have thought of it, but I like it. Yeah, it looks good. Oh. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's not bad. Oh, hell yeah. There's our Colossus. Yeah, that's spot on. Great with the Oh, yeah. I mean, oh yeah. That's really hard to see. Oh, that one you can tell it's him. I don't know who that is. I think I've seen it before, but I don't know. Not it's my wrinkly. favorite, like, I mean, a little wrinkly. The retro yeah. one is my favorite. I can't wait for that one. Oh, Stephen Lang is cool. Really good. That's awesome. Oh, that's a good one. All right, somebody needs to make one of these with uh, with the uh, Comics Gate King. That works. Deadpool. I'd like to see one of the Comics Gate Kings, and it would be Dan yeah. Lawless as Psylocke. <laughs> <laughs> Dan Lawless is Jean Grey. Here's the retro. There's a bunch of these I really like. <laughs> oh, wow. That's pretty cool. There he is. Oh, yeah. Oh, Walker Howard. That would be good. Great yeah, icon. Michael B. That'd, that'd be perfect. Yeah. Oh, this shit, one, yeah, really cool. Too. That's good. Yeah, actually, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, baby. That's. Man, I, mean, I don't see a lot of Gordon Weaver in younger, that. Yeah, that's what that works. Yeah. Oh, Phoebe Cates. Oh Google yeah. Walking, mm -hmm. walking in the pool. Oh yeah. Here's my favorite pick out of all of them. She would have been the absolute perfect one. Gotta have blonde hair. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm not fond of that. Okay. I yeah, think she's too busty. Too, she looks too old for Kitty Pride. Oh, now that's oh, cool. that's awesome. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. 
This works. Yeah, Star Trek fans, love him. Yeah, it's a little generic. There we go. Yeah. The lone is the oh, beast. So oh, yeah. <laughs> love that's that last one. That's awesome. Oh, that's, oh, that's totally only fits. <laughs> yeah, that works, actually. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Well, that works. That's actually quite weird because that's he's kind of easily French. That, uh... oh, that works too. Mm -hmm. There's my favorite. There's oh, yeah. That would be good. If you look at her snatch, she turned a diamond. <laughs> Not bad. Either. Oh, that's good too. Bruce Campbell. <laughs> not so much. Yeah. He's got well, no, his face isn't made up right, but he's got the sarcasm for it. Mm. What else we got? That it? Yeah, that's the main two that I that I that I had. But uh, those are actually uh, that retro one. Quite a few of those guys. I, I that would have been great back in the day. Stallone, though, as Beast, he just rocked it yeah. along Clint Eastwood as Cable. Oh. Clint yeah. Eastwood would be awesome, man. All right, Dang, kind of—it's like those things you 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 missed it. You know, just <laughs> the 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 planets, the, another alternate universe. Maybe this would, that would happen, right? Yeah, but man, Sharon Stone is uh, as Frost. the White Queen would have been White Queen, just yeah. perfect. Yeah. Uh, let's see. All right, I was just seeing if there's anything. Can they do a cast to see. new Fantastic Four not to be politically correct? Nope, not possible. I mean, seriously, yeah. everybody has beat the whole Silver Surfer thing together. If they if they cared at all about getting viewers in to watch it, we would have Norrin Rad, somebody great as Norrin Rad. And if they wanted to use her, because I love her as an actress, love her, I would watch it if she was Nova. But she is not hashtag not my silver surfer. Right. That's right. Uh Dennis, it is uh is it is it is it shadow clock? Because we're at eleven thousand, almost twelve. Oh no, it's every ten thousand. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, it's a word shadow <laughs> clock. We're at yeah, shadow like clock, and the next shadow clock is right around the corner. All right, let me get the old. Peanut butter whiskey. <laughs> oh my God. My wife texts wow. me. She's like, I'm going to the grocery store. I'm like, you have fun. Uh, I am uh, having a few shots. Yep. I'm going to have to go down and let them know that I will not be capable of anything tonight. <laughs> oh, your wife's used to that from you every night. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Ooh, she, she, Susie's like, what? What's that make a difference from every other night of the week? <laughs> wow. She's like, I don't even have to say I have a headache anymore. Yeah. Hey, you guys, I actually got to get rolling because I am working this weekend. So, uh, oh, damn. Damn. working on the weekend. Yeah. Dude, so, I'm trying to pop. Are you guys going to go in on Ethan's show tonight? You know it, eight o'clock. Okay, so maybe I can pop in if I can get enough done in that time. Oh, yeah. Get, some, get your work done. Join us tonight. Hopefully, uh, I will still be able to. We'll, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> yeah, guys, that's right. He does it. Pace yourself. Yeah, <laughs> not, right. not, yeah, not if we're doing this every, every 1,000, there's no pacing yourself. Yeah, exactly. So, well, Dan, cheers to you. And, cheers, and, Dan. Uh, Clay Matthews in a double shot. Oh, yeah. It's my. Uh, Oh, vodka. that's good. Bought my vodka container here. Nice. The chat says, peace out, Dan. Marcus right. says, Dennis leaves himself wide open. If I don't, Andy gets sad. So, you know, you got you got to leave him some opportunities. It's true. I mean, when we share a hotel room, he doesn't leave himself wide open. I get a little sad. Oh, and that <laughs> note... <laughs> You know, Dan, just be happy. You I'm glad you guys are not in the same room. That's all I can say. 
<laughs> All right, dudes. All Jack, right, everybody. Great good, good see you later. later. We'll see you tonight. Okay, see you, Bye. man. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Oh, Dan's great. Well, you ran off another guest. First Blevins, now Dan. I hope you're happy with yourself. Yeah. Like I said, one of us keeps a PG-13. Yeah, dude, we, we can't do shot every thousand because, you know, we have so many great fans out there. I, I will be passed out well before Ethan, and they'll be like, I thought your writer was coming on. Yeah, he was, but there's a still of him passed out on the floor. That's right. Over the toilet. Elizabeth can get her revenge. Yeah. Oh, you just missed Dan, but hello. Thank you for joining. We are doing great. And go back. Cordrat the Reckoning. What is Cordrat the Awakening? Whoop. It's taking effect. Uh, venture forth into the fractured realm of the Shattered Reefs where Cordrat, the indomitable warrior and the last scion of the Red Lions tribe, embarks on a quest steeped in destiny. His heart aflame with unyielding love, he's driven to rescue his beloved Adriana's people of the Black Eagles tribe from the clutches of Vordoom, the undying, the relentless undead creature whose shadow stretches across the land. Cordrath's path is fraught with peril as he seeks a legendary artifact, the key to obliterating the sinister darkness. Brace yourself for an epic heart-pounding odyssey brimming with fierce battles. Awe-inspiring magic and twisted will leave you breathless with anticipation. And let's not forget, Cordrath is on the hunt for these artifacts, but it's a race because Necronite, Vordoom, and Lelneth want them too. So who will get there first? There is peril, there is monsters, all the fun stuff. We've got preview pages up. Uh, I changed my YouTube name last Friday, a week before that I changed my profile pic to a Boon Boonger One. Okay. Never stop Never. doing the homage cover. Some of my favorites in CG. You know, the only I will one, I will never stop doing them because uh, I love them so much. Two, my regret is I didn't do them on First Man 1 and 2 uh, because I, I actually thought of it and I even had them had the ones picked out I was going to do, but I didn't do them because I'm like, ah, is this just basically self-serving? Like, who's going to care about these? And then Aaron went and did it with Wraith of God and showed that lots of you guys like these homage covers. And that's why I did them. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I love these homage covers. I love and it's not just finding a cover that really just speaks to the story and works. It's just the overall layout, the corner box art. I really think in the 70s and 80s, uh, they were hitting on all cylinders with the cover design and, and stuff. So uh, that is uh, that is something we will continue to do. And uh, and who knows, maybe down the road, uh, you know, a few years down the road, there will be a print set of just the homage covers. You never know. You yeah. Know, Got to build up enough. Right now, there's only two. Well, so. you guys know we do a lot of planning and. We already got number three kind of ready, uh, what it will be, but we are not telling you until this one's done. That's right. You got to, you, you know, one at a time, one at a time. Uh, kind of like uh, what the uh, the the horse says in a gangbang, one at a time. The horse, huh? That's what I said, horse, right, horse. Yeah. Donkey, this takes place, you know, it's a Mexican donkey show. So uh, there you go. Oh, Airman Jack's on the West Coast and you're on number five. Well, hopefully you either have a designated driver or you're going to be like me tonight and just crashed out. Passed out on your couch? Yeah. Uh, I tell you what, though, this guy gets up at 5 a.m. to go to the gym. So uh, and I have I have a streak of over four months of not breaking that. So hopefully tomorrow morning, no matter how I feel. The streak goes on. Here are the preview pages. We opted this time to not have lettering on them because now that the story is taken off, we don't want to spoil anything and things could be spoiled. 
So you just get the pretty visuals this time around, and uh, we'll read what's going down when the book comes out. These are the first five. I'm 11 in. Of course, as the campaign goes on, more pages will be shown. But for now, we uh, with the 11 I have done, we've got to got to keep a lid on some of them so uh, we don't spoil stuff. Peter Ma, I love the homage covers. It's my go-to buy. We thank you all sincerely. We do a lot of joking around and stuff, but sincerely, thank you all so much for uh, backing the campaign, being a part of it. Um, this is this is basically, you know, what what puts food on the table. And starting a new company is not easy, especially in these times. And it is so uh, so much appreciation to you guys for for helping support the book. You are the producers of this book. You see producer credits in movies. Well, you're the producers of this book. Without you guys, uh, unless I win the Powerball, which I have not yet, uh, this wouldn't happen. So Dennis won the Powerball, but he's a uh, you know he's selfish. He's not sharing any of that. So. Yep, that's why I have a virtual screen that I'm on right now. Yep, it's true. I mean, Dennis is only showing you what you can only see in that background is uh, one of the hundred rooms Dennis has in his house. Uh, if he were to walk to the kitchen, uh, he could he could probably stream from there. But if he got up and turned his camera off, it'd be a good hour before he popped back on when he got to his kitchen. Just saying. Well, if that were the case, then I guess we could quote Barbie from the movie and say it. Then I would have my own Mojo Dojo Casa house filled with Star Trek stuff. Just saying. Oh, my God. Just the fact that you still talk about seeing Barbie makes me sad. Well, we had to watch it again last night. My sister-in-law had not seen it. My daughter was over visiting. My niece, my wife, everybody did it. So the the the... The two Y chromosomes got outvoted on what we were watching because, of course, I did want to watch Oppenheimer, which they also haven't seen. And what did Jacob think of your nephew think of Barbie? He did like the part where it was the patriarchy and men and horses ruled everything. Uh, Joseph Fazio, hello. I screwed up two times, but I finally got it right. Love this series. Well, thank you so much for the five dollars super chat, and thank you so much for uh, for backing it, Joseph. Really appreciate it. I don't know how um, you screwed up, but as long as you got it right, that's what matters. The fact that Jacob, see, I'm sad. I was hoping you were going to say that your 14 year old nephew loved it when it was the Barbie girls on the beach or something. But that's okay. Yeah, you know, for the visuals. Yeah, no, I I get what you're saying. You, you don't have to spell it out, Andy. I mean, most of the audience probably knew exactly what you were saying also, but that, that doesn't help his case. Well, no, I know our very intelligent audience got it. I was spelling out for you. Oh, okay. Dennis, the next time we go to Myrtle Beach, we will have a beach off. I'm just saying. <laughs> that really was funny. If you're going to start it. And that had to be your favorite part of the movie. You probably giggled through that whole section. I haven't seen it, so I couldn't tell oh, you. Oh, well, then should make references because it really was a funny part. It I was saw that part I, of the movie. I saw that part in the trailer, and I I will say I giggled a little bit during the trailer, during that beach off. Yeah, you did. Uh, segment. Oh, yeah. No, we love Myrtle Beach. Great story. Thank, oh, you. thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Uh of course, we are bringing back, are you guys going to see that? Yes, we are. In fact, uh, that's a good point. We can actually bring that up. Uh, Dennis, do you have the title of that in front of you? It's kind of a long title. It um, is. I, I don't. I'll set it up and you can tell them the title. So every Thursday night for people just watching, Dennis and I go see a movie. If there's not one in the theater, we will stream something on one of the multiple streaming networks. And we do a movie review on Friday where we pre-record it, pop it up. It's a good 20 minutes, half hour. We do a non-spoiler part of the movie review in the first 10 minutes, give you our grade. And then after that, we take a little beat and then we do the spoiler section of the movie review, which takes about 20 minutes. So if you don't want spoilers, watch the first part and then bail. 
um, this week we are seeing the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. That's right. That movie stars Henry Cavill, Alan Ritson of Reacher fame, and who else? I don't know. I don't have it up. Never mind. Henry Cavill and Alan Ritson of Reacher fame. Uh, that's really all you need to know. It takes place during World War II. They say that it's based on a true story, and it's basically one of the first special ops missions. Um, it looks really, really good. So, it reminds me of the Dirty Dozen only trying to dig out the uh, Enigma information from um, the submarine warfare. It just looks great. Yes, it's new guy, Richie. Uh, what's the name of the movie again? The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Well, there you go. The Ministry of Ungentlemanly. I mean, Henry, Henry Cavill has a full beard in this movie. He yeah. is... Uh, he really comes off unhinged. Uh, it looks really good. And guys, we are but 35. Well, that's right. $35 away from $12,000. Uh, 150 backers. Booyah. We can do this because Dennis is. Dennis sent me a private message saying, guys, I really. He said, Andy, I really want to drink. I really hope we get to 12K fast. So 35 away, dollars away. Dennis will. Uh, Pop a squat, I mean, pop a shot, not a squat, and uh, take his shirt off and do a shot. Thank you, Buttface, because I do this every time. It's Cavill. And I keep telling Andy, and he keeps going Cavill. It's not Cavill from The Last Passion of the Christ. It's Cavill. Henry Cavill. Oh, that's right. It's Cavill. Well, excuse <laughs> me. Hey, but look who's in it from Princess Diaries. Carry you all well. Yes, guys, and th this just this has all the makings of a absolutely potentially great movie. Um, you know, we've had some really good ones right right here in a row. And guys, if you want to ever see what we do, both Andy's channel at Andy Smith Art on YouTube and mine's at Dennis Turner. Both of our channels. We do them together. We upload them so you can watch them on, on either of our channels. Then it will get uploaded because I know a lot of you guys do Rumble and why we don't live stream to Rumble. All of the videos that we put out winds up going to Rumble so you can check it out there as well. Wait, are you talking about Henry Cavill? We are now. <laughs> <laughs> See, there's Andy's for those of you that are new and maybe haven't seen Andy's channel, uh, or maybe you're watching it on X right now. And then there's uh, mine, and uh, also there's my YouTube. We put them right out there. The live streams and stuff we wind up doing to both Facebook, uh, X, Twitter, and uh, and YouTube simultaneously. <laughs> this cracks me up. If you think. <laughs> If you say Henry Cavill three times, Anna will show up. She would too. She would too. That's awesome. If I could get her to show up just because of that, I would. Hold on. I got to tell my daughter something. Uh, yeah, see, Anna will show up. Yeah, she will. I bet she's going to I bet she's gonna go, go see this movie. If not, we'll have to mess, mess oh with her. Oh, my God. Her. She'll see will. She'll see this movie. I wish I was in California just to go see it with her because I bet she giggles when he comes on screen and it's probably really cute. So yeah. she could bring her, she could bring peaches. I could bring Dennis who I call plum. That's his nickname. And uh, we could have a good old time. <laughs> you know, I think my internet's about to give out for the rest of the day until eight o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i don't know what you're talking about dennis why don't you tell everybody why don't you tell our beautiful viewing audience about demise and dracomore so guys that's going to be the follow-up to this one the mayhem in the miramador mountains both yeah oh you know can't can't andy i just can't sometimes this was the first one. All of these modules take place in the Shattered Reach, the world that we are building. Completely separate storylines. 
Um, for those of you that got to play this uh, first one, I got great feedback from you. You guys love the old feel of the old school role playing the OSR stuff from the late 70s, early 80s. Second one, um, you guys really liked it. I am doing that uh, right now. Um, I have test played out. Uh, I've got two parts of this. They've both been test played. Second part, uh, I've got to I've got to make some changes. I'm going to do some additions, and then I'm going to be sending it out for test playing to a group out in Vegas and a group up north. And then I'll get their feedback, and uh, then I will try and get it finished up. But we've had a lot of fun with this one. Bart Sears uh, did the uh, pencils uh, for obviously the new artwork. Dan Lawless did the great colors over Bart again. My, we, we're just keeping this consistent. Um, so this new one takes place, and it has dragons. Yes, uh, a mother of a dragon got got wiped out a long time ago, and um, but some of her spawns survived, and one of them has returned, very upset, and plans to do something about it. So uh, again, a lot of fun stuff we're going to be doing in this one. Um, it is going to be in fifth edition rules because that's what's currently out there. I am working on a wholly separate project, which will be down the down the road. Um, I know a lot of you played the fifth edition rules on my first one. Some of you were huge original AD and D or second edition fans, and you very easily converted over. I heard from you guys, and I think that is so cool. I made this easy, so it is so easy to convert with whichever system that you're playing. But guys, I hope you enjoy this one as much as you did the first one, if not more. That's right. Great job. You do a fantastic. Uh, I'm off. Hey, Paul, thank you for joining. Thank you for the super chat. Really appreciate it. Thank you for backing the campaign and uh, have a great rest of your day. So, yeah, Paul, uh, TSR was originally bought by Wizards of the Coast, which was then in turn bought by... Um, Hasbro, which is now who owns them, um, which is why I'm working on some other really cool stuff down the uh, down the line that it will not be fifth. But uh, in the meantime, this is the main one. I did a lot of asking of what you guys wanted. Fifth edition is what a lot of guys are playing with their families and stuff. So it makes sense to put it out there. But you guys, I know you all play different. This is so easy to convert anything over to whatever system that you're playing or version. So, you know, good luck. But I am going to do it in um, uh, in the fifth edition for you guys. Again, I have to keep it consistent with what we're putting out right now. That's right. Got to do that. Um, and, of course, if you're like, man, I love role-playing games. I freaking love them. And one of the things I love about role-playing games are minifigs. Not minifigs like, you know, Fig Newtons, the, the tasty, delicious cookies. I hated those as a kid, but I like I like Fig Newtons now. Dennis, do you like Fig Newtons, the cookie? No, they're terrible. They're like plain cake donuts. They're awful. Okay, well, you just showed everybody in the chat you have no taste whatsoever. But, guys, with every good, uh, with every good role-playing game, you need a good minifigure, a minifig. We've got you covered there. These are add-ons. You can get the two-inch size core draft, or as Dennis like to, likes to say, 25 millimeter. You can get the three-inch size core draft. I don't know the millimeter of that one. Or you can get the, uh, what is it? 50. 50 millimeter, uh, three-inch middle size, medium or you can get the large 100 millimeter five inch size core draft. Uh, they come in two pieces, the base and the figure. They come in a beautiful clamshell that has the core draft name on it. And you can add it on when you check out. Uh, if you're into just the nice statuesque type figure, the five inch is the way to go. If you're totally into using it for role playing, whether it's for the core draft game volume one or two or any other role-playing game. Imagine you roll up on your buddies playing Dungeons and Dragons and they're like, okay, Homer, what are you doing now? And you pop down the 25 millimeter uh, core draft figure and go, 
I'm bringing the pain to you bitches. Oh my God, you will be the envy of that table. Those Stranger Things kids wish they had core draft because he yeah, would take is. out that evil, uh, uh, I can't remember the bad, bad guy's name in Stranger Things, but he would kick its ass. So uh, get it on a check out there, guys. You know you want it. Do it. See? Do it. You can see I mean, look at this. Difference. Just look at that. Oh, my God. Look at that size difference. That small core draft could raise his axe up and take out the, the goodies of the big core draft. And that would be sad. Yep. The details, guys, turned out absolutely fantastic. Exactly. He's got it right. Captain Bipto, stop. Who turns down a donut? Oh, Apparently, okay. Is, no, 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 no. See, this is always Andy tries to get it. I got you donut. by half the story. If you go to Dunkin' Donuts or any any of your favorite donut shops, it doesn't matter. They have the plain cake donuts, which are those little dry brown ones, right? That's Andy's donut. But you have your choice of all the donuts. Do you get apple fritters? Do you get jelly? Apple donuts? fritters not a donut. This apple Do fritter is not a donut. Do you get glazed donuts. Do you get any of the other ones? Any of the other donuts. It doesn't matter if you want sprinkles or if you want frosting. Those are all good donuts. Andy says, hell no to any of that. Give me a dry ass freaking plain cake donut that after nobody eats it, you then put in the urinal to go ahead and become your new urinal puck. That is what Andy likes. Just like the by, uh, outside of a Fig Newton, it's this dry cakey thing. That's what Andy likes. I'm just saying, I'll take any of those other donuts over a plain cake donut. Now, if there was nothing else there other than plain cake donuts, would I eat one? Yes, I would eat one. It would not, It would be my very, very last choice in any donut. The plain cake is good. Exactly. Yes, you, can make it you any, can't eat it plain. You have you to make it any taste you, you want. You can make it any taste you want. Correct. It's uh, like tofu. It, Andy just admitted he loves tofu. Oh, I and hate that's tofu. Exactly what that is. That I is hate tofu. Tofu of donuts. No, tofu sucks. And an apple fritter is not a donut because it's an apple fritter. It is a fritter. Peter Mai says, figure is so cool. I'll add it once the poster comes out. Um, okay, cool. Very nice. Thank you. Um, it is oh my god, you are so you're just wrong. There it is. I will tell you Blueberry what. Blueberry glaze, yeah, from Krispy Kreme, right? How many people here have heard of the wonderful Entenmann's donuts? Dennis comes from this small made-up town in the middle of the country. I don't know. I think it was on Native American land. He just makes up these names, Fonda Licky Lack or whatever he comes from. Never, ever heard of Entenmann's Tasty Treats because they make more than just donuts. I still can't believe you've never heard of Entenmann's donuts. No, those are little box donuts. Those are what the you mean? Oh my god, you just don't know what you're talking about. You're gonna look it up though. You're gonna try and educate me on crappy donuts, urinal cakes. That's what you're gonna try and turn me on right now. You've never had an Entenmann's donut, so how would you know they're oh, crappy? Show me what it is. I've had the little box donuts in the stores. Yes. But but in in the little brown cakey ones are crap. See? Oh my god! Have you ever had the, Have you ever had the chocolate frosted? Yes, you got me on all of those. Oh wait, so you've had you have had Entenmann donuts then? Yes, those. I even said the boxed ones. Those are literally the boxed ones from the store. All of those are right. good except the little stupid cake urinal donut. Oh my god! You are. Hold on, you're insane. No, I am and, not. No, you are. I, no, I told you. I, I ate one of those Entenmann's once, and I'm like, what is the point of this? What? Why don't I just eat sh plain shredded wheat because it's got the same crappy taste? How do you not like plain shredded wheat? My God, you are weird. Now you're going to tell me you don't like grape nuts. Nope. Oh, my God. You're such a... Oh, grape nuts are the bomb. I, I tell you, oh, here you go. Right here. Look at that. 
Oh, I'm, hold on. There hold it on. is. There it is. Thank you, Daniel. Plain cake donuts are the lamest of all donuts. That is true. I don't even consider them a donut. I call them urinal cakes for a reason because they have no real flavor. You might as well go into the men's bathroom, reach your hand to the urinal, pull it out, eat it, and go, mmm, plain cake donut. Why are you eating? you? So, guys, literally, clip it. Dennis just admitted to eating urinal cakes in the bathroom. Did not. That is not just what I said. And it's on tape. We can prove it. Check that out. Yes, the mini suck. The variety chocolate is delicious. Chocolate ones are good. And you don't even have to dip them to give them flavor. I I am, if I could, oh my God. I, Dennis. There it is. Yeah, I, rant, because this is stupid. Dennis, I'm giving you a, because you're not here, so I can't do it. If you were right next to me, I would take, I would take my two finger drawing glove and I would go to your face. And, and then guys, because, you know what would happen? I'd be having to solicit somebody to draw the rest of Cordra because it'll be RIP no, after I no, do a funeral no. with Andrew. Put your, face, put your face close to the camera. I challenge you to a duel. Here are the rules. Here are the rules of the duel. The duel is you go out and get your box donuts, whatever flavor you want. I'll get my cake box donuts, and we'll see who can go through the box quicker. Captain just proved right. I bet you plane, don't accept. Plain is not on the top of the list. It is not. It's at the very bottom. But if it's the last one in the box, and if I was hungry, would I eat it? Yes. Would I spend money on this in a store if there were other options? Absolutely not. Not at all. Here, here. I'll even do this because I know you can't. I know you would lose that duel I just suggested. Oh, we can please. get. We can get. Oh, so you want to do the duel of the twelve box against the twelve box? You tell me. Donuts at dawn. <laughs> Donuts at dawn. Donuts on and instead of pistol six shooters, we got. We got two six packs in, in, in a holster. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. You like you like cinnamon donuts, yes or no? They're fine. Powdered? Yeah, they're fine. We get this box of donuts. That's 12 donuts. Cut in two, that's six each. I get the four on the left that are the plain cake goodness. You get the four cinnamon on the right. We each get two powdered. Whoever goes through them first wins. Are you mad what, enough? What, is, what does that have to do with the discussion? All you're saying is, Andy's like, I can eat faster than you. That is the whole point. You just boil the entire discussion. It's got nothing to wow. do with how quickly wow. you eat. Wow. It has to wow. do with, can wow. you eat it? Wow. Dennis I and I want to do it. Dennis and I want to take 10 paces. Donuts. Dennis and I want to take 10 paces and duel each other. And Dennis is like, what is the point? And he can shoot faster than me. That's all he's going to prove is he's going to kill me because he's quicker on the draw. Yes, you well, will we know be able the to man of this channel. You is. will eat quicker than I will on anything. You and, and somebody did point up there. I wish I could have pulled it down. Asparagus flavor. You probably like plain cake asparagus flavor, so that when you do pee on your cake donut, it'll have that awful tainty smell. Now you're just being ridiculous. Apple fritters are awesome and delicious. Correct. Those are they really are, but they're not a donut. They're they not are a donut. Much better than any stupid plain cake freaking donut. They're not a donut. They're not at a donut. New Jersey for a donut duel. You know, we hmm. can't because Dennis can't make it because I know we could we we could here at Heroes. We could do that, Dennis. It's a. Uh, it shot a clock, $12,241. Oh, shit. Okay. Tell you what, I had to take a second anyway. I'll be right back. Look at that. Andy's special glazed donuts called the Knuckle Duster. Uh, no, a bear claw is not a donut. A donut is round with a hole in the middle. A bear claw is not round with a hole in the middle. See, I, I didn't watch it, but I know the Jack Show did their pizza eating contest. Now, I admit I did not join in on the pizza eating contest because 
Okay, well, I wasn't invited. But, but, I have been known to get a 16-inch pizza and eat it by myself. And when Dennis and I go out to get pizza after a DNA show, we each get our own. And I always finish before Dennis does. I do eat fast. I'm just saying, if I was on that Jack show, I would have won that contest. Just saying. Now, with that being said, I'm totally down for a donut eating contest. I'm good to do a donut eating contest of a box of 12. I just figured, you know, Dennis wouldn't want to. Is that when Malin ate the Batman vagina pizza? I don't even know what that is. I know Guys, I, I can't eat a do dozen donuts. I, I, I just can't. Can you I, eat six? I, I don't even know if I can eat three donuts. I, I would get sick. You can eat a whole freaking pizza. I just told him one string. You and I do it do with donuts, dumbass. It's pure sugar. We just tried this oh last. Oh my night. god! They brought home the chocolate from Japan, and dude, I got sick. You know, I've got. God damn it! You don't. Would listen. you like to do it? I already told him on the stream that you'd lose a pizza eating contest because when we go get pizza after a show, I always finish before you and I'm tapping my thumbs going, Jesus. And then you but don't guys, even eat all the crust. Andy will eat faster and can eat more than me. So, yes, if it is a pure eating contest, I will lose every time. I am not afraid to say that. But that has nothing to do with the quality of the food that we're eating. You keep changing the premise because you know – Plain cake donuts suck, and every other donut is much better. That is the crux of the argument that you oh can't God. win. Fine, fine. I hear what you're saying, Dennis. I can read into what you want. What you want is a – what's your favorite donut? Is it, it, it an apple fritter. I consider well, that a donut. It's an apple fritter. Apple fritters aren't donuts. The, then a raspberry filled. Fine. We'll get a dozen raspberry fields and see who can eat the most. No, you bet. Just did it again. I cannot eat 12 donuts. I cannot eat 12 donuts fast. I could eat one or two, and that's the extent of what I can do. God, you are letting all the big men in this country down right now. I hope you know that. So, guys. You, you have know, your shot ready. There is a lot. Uh... Oh, my God. Guys, he doesn't even have his shot ready. He just went to the bathroom. Yeah, I haven't, you know, I haven't gone yet today. He, he just went to the bathroom to purge the previous two shots, and now he doesn't even have okay. his shot. Well, guys, ready. I've not just had two shots. You make it sound like that's all I've drank. I have drank way more than Whoa. alcohol. Oh. Well, I'm not counting the water you have next to your desk. I don't have water. I have protein shakes. Oh, shit. I oh, my God. A protein shake and a shot? That's disgusting. You're going to puke later. So protein shakes and, you know, I've got a mini fridge here that's chock full. I don't even know if I have any beer left. But, uh, you know, I do have some some other drinks in there. All here, right. Wait. Agent Cub says, Dennis hates plain donuts. Andy, what's your least favorite donut? I don't have a least favorite donut. I like all donuts. I'm not a bigot. All right. Let's do our shots. Oh, God bless it. <laughs> Cheers. I can't wait to replay this segment and, and talk to all you people. Oh, and shit. I don't know why I'm doing this. I got to change it. This is a double shot. So that this is the equivalent. So, Andy, I just had six shots. You've only had three. You're pathetic. There is the Andy argument right there. Dude, you're doing – your shot is taller, but your shot glass – isn't as no, girthy. No, it doesn't matter. This is. It's, I bought no, this it's, it's not as. It's no, dude. It's, it's not as girthy. Your matter. shot glass this is. This is a double shot glass. I your shot it glass isn't. Shot glass. Is no. My shot glass is a double shot because it's girthy. Your well, shot glass. It doesn't matter what you is, think is girthy. Now you're just going with what your wife says about you. Your, this your actually shot, is oh when you God. buy it. This is called a double shot glass because it's the equivalent of two shots. Holy your shot shit. glass. This is basic math. What oh my God. Dude, you? your, your shot glass is like a hollowed out deck nail. Yes, Andy is wrong on everything no. that he said. If I'm glad he is amazing at core draft and drawing this because he sucks on shots, he sucks on donuts. 
You know See? what? You know what? I will prove. Peter Ma's going for the girth. She's I going for the girth. I'm going to go get a regular shot glass. It's, Hold on. Hey, hey, wait. Nope. It sounds like Peter Ma, her husband and I, not only do we look the same without our without my hat on, but we're both girthy, apparently. Just saying. Oh. Now, now run downstairs and get a get a real oh, shot. Hold on. I got to do something real quick. My wife's going to the movie with us. Oh. Yeah, she just she just texted. She heard we were talking about her on the stream. So my brother-in-law is watching. Welcome. I'm glad you joined us to hear the argument. Wait, and, which uh, one is that? What's that? Which one is that? What's the what's screen he? name? Oh, Who? I, I don't know. It'll, it'll pop up. I haven't seen him mention anything, but that doesn't mean, you know, we do have a lot of lurkers. Cordrath is not tearing us apart. Cordrath brings us together. That's right. Cordrath brings Stupid everyone together. Stupid ass plain cake donuts tears us apart. Just imagine Cordrath could bring Hamas and Israel together. Well, actually, Cordrath would just be on Israel's side and go wipe out Hamas. But what's another one? Uh, Cordrath could bring... Uh, 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 Kamala Harris and AOC together because they don't like each other. Let's be honest. All right. I got to get her a, a ticket while we're thinking of it. Clutch Boogie says the amount of sexual tension between these two is disturbing. Look, I'm not over here peeling labels off of beer bottles like Dennis is, okay? Beer no, bottle. Craig 69 is an apple fritter considered a donut. Yes, an apple fritter is generally considered a type of donut. It, ah! No, it is not a he circle. He just proved it. He caught it. He looked it up. It Thank is not you. a circle Thank with a hole. You, you are amazing. No, it is not. Right. Science wins over Andy. It, oh, that's not science. It's science. That's opinion. Well, uh, your hey, opinion. if it's not a circle with a hole in it, it's not a donut. All right, Dennis, fine. I'll I'll come down to your level uh -oh. and we can have a donut hole eating contest. How's that? Uh oh. Oh, can't do that either, huh? Well, what happened? Hmm. So I put a seat in between us, and it's taken. Wait, in between who? Y you and I for the movie. Well, no, I take that back. Wait, five. Wait, hold on. How did you do? Wait, what? No, no, the no, 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 hold on. But there, there's somebody that's sitting right next to us. What letter seat number are you? I think five. Are you four? Yes, I'm four. So we have to take a quick break here in the middle of our argument. Uh, okay, so if you're four, I'm five. I will have to get six. Yeah, wouldn't that make sense? Yeah, but notice there's one to the right of you that's taken now. Three's taken. Oh. That's what I'm. Why would you want? Why would you want your wife sitting next to me? No, that's not what I'm saying, though. I, I mean, I, I know was, that's. Her, I, I know I that's. Her I left a, a seat open. Anyway, let me just get it purchased here before I forget. Although I, 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 I know her preference would be to sit next to me, but yeah. All right, so it looks like you got it because I'm showing four in a row now. Yep, I just got it. All right. So all good. No, that's good. All right. All right. So now with that being said. Now we can get back to the fact that cake donuts are the best. Oh, no, I have to go down. I'm going to go grab a regular shot glass. Oh, thank God. It's about time. You got something that's girthy and you could drink the same amount. No, I, got, I got regular shot glasses. I don't have a Packer one. I got that one because it's a, it's an awesome Packer one. But This well, is the name of the fifth book, Cordrath and the Donut War. We don't like to do and, we like to do Cordrath, colon, so it would be Cordrath, uh, colon, the donut war. But thank you very much, Bella Winners. I appreciate that. I like it. I like it. Wait, then by your definition, Phil Donut, okay, fine. I see what you're saying. You're trying to confuse me. An apple fritter, hold on. Now, see, okay, you're going to make me do this. Let me see something here. You can even see. No tricks up my sleeve. I show everything. I'm I'm not like a magician. This is not a donut. No, 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 not a donut. 
Not a, and this, I'm sorry, is not an apple fritter. I don't give a crap what that says. That's an apple fritter. That is not a donut. A filled donut is a donut. I take it back. Circle, cream inside, donut. Apple fritter, not a donut. I'm just saying, guys, I didn't make these rules. I just abide by them. That's all I do. Seriously. See, look at that. Bella won her nose. My type of gal. Fritter is not. A, I'm leaving that up until Dennis gets back from getting. Oh, I can hear you all the way back. downstairs going blah, blah, blah. Look, right here. Right here. Fritter is not a donut. Okay, but what does that have to do with anything? I, we were also talking about they were bringing up bear claws. We were talking about jelly filled. Well, we were bear claws is not a donut either. Donuts, all right. of these things. And the only thing you can focus in on is a do is the apple fritter. Because you've lost every other argument. Oh, my God. Plain donuts were so popular, they made them with handles so you could dunk them. Exactly. Captain Bipto knows. Let me see your shot glass. Oh, another one with that. I did. I, I, I actually forgot about this one. Try to carry the ship, would you? I am not making the show tonight at this rate. Oh, I heard that, you baby. Cordrath versus the apple fritter. Fried bread is a donut. It's a pastry. See, you, you, you've you completely changed the whole is, argument. Oh, look. I've got a double shot glass, too, but it's just as girthy as That's a real fine. shot glass. That's fine. Not, not yours. See? No. Do you know what I was doing, though? I Okay, so, you know, when I'm wrong about something, I'll concede. Oh, my God. That's how you spend most of your day when you're over here conceding to me. I just oh. wish it was on air. Oh, my God. I, I'm done. I'm done. That's it. That's it. I don't know. Fuck Cordreth. I'm done. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you guys bought it. <laughs> Dennis needs a nap. Agent Cup says Dennis needs a nap. You know, the problem is... We can't have, I mean, we, we need to change the, the, the rules for this drinking, though, because we can't do it every thousand because we have such good fans at this point. I seriously might not make it. You guys, I, I'm not the heavyweight I was like back in college. I cannot, I cannot do this. I will literally be laying here drooling probably on the floor. But yeah, guys, uh, you understand, back in college, Dennis would regale us with his stories of drinking a whole six pack of Bud Light. Oh, and just, putting the other college oh guy, and just putting the other college guys to shame. Oh, my God. That would never come up. By the way, when we went to school, there was no Bud Light now. It was, it was, you'd start off, we would go, you'd go out and you drink Miller Genuine Draft. That's what we'd have in the rooms. And then we'd go to the house parties, and the house parties were all half barrels of Old Milwaukee. That is right, because oh. depending on the place, it was two or three bucks all you could drink, old mill all night long to the early mornings, and uh, that was the beer of choice from where I went to school. Oh my god, old Milwaukee! What's next, Schlitz? Oh, dude, we Schlitz Blatz Blatz was the thing back then. That's right. Rolling Rock was not in half barrels. No, no. Besides, these were. Literally, you paid two bucks and you got like a solo cup, but back then they were the see-through solo cups, right? And it was two or three bucks, all you could drink all night long. So it was whatever the cheapest beer you could get your hands on, um, red, white, and blue once in a while, sometimes hams, but it was usually Old Milwaukee was probably the bulk of it. Oh, God. My bachelor party had uh, beer balls of uh, Coors, was Coors. it? Coors. I had the part. Those are party balls. We party balls. Yeah, the dorm fridges. They fit perfectly in the dorm fridges. I had those in the room. Well, we had them in uh, the bathtub at the hotel rooms filled with ice. Community college beer of choice. Old Mill, that is right. Miller Lite, the fine pills there. Now, just so you know, never been a Miller Lite fan. 
That was my dad's favorite beer, God rest his soul. It was God's nectar. That's what he called it. So the only, I always had Miller Lite in my house. So when my dad would come over, he would have something great to drink for him. And it was the greatest thing for him. Mm, I hear you. Uh, no, you. no. Now, if old Milwaukee caught, got a hold of us and, and would talk, we, we would have something to, to, to chat about. Not Bud Light. I absolutely. So our friend, Bud Root, who you all know, and he puts out great covers and great story for Cordra. You mean he, uh, him? he uh, you know, Bud Light is his favorite. And we absolutely uh, love talking to Bud. He, it's all he will basically drink. He, when we go up and, you know, we go to a convention stuff, he will always offer Bud Light. It is very rare that I will accept because I just do not like Bud Light. Everybody you know what the sad part is? It's, it's the, the sad part. Well, it's not sad. The, I should say the funny part. So we were in South Carolina for South Carolina Comic Con. Uh, yeah, he uh, was. Last weekend, two weekends ago, whenever it was. And, you know, we were hanging out in Bud's room. And he's like, hey, you guys want a beer? And I think I said, Bud Light? And he goes, yeah. And I go... Oh, I thought you said beer. And uh, so that was my way of saying no. And Dennis was just like, you know, you basically said something like, no, I, I, I'll just have water. Oh, same thing. Whatever. Yes. And, you know, God love Bud Root, that is. But yeah, man, he goes to a convention if he drives there. Even if he gets flown. I've been flown to a convention with Bud before. And he'll be like, we need to walk over to a convenience store. And he picks up his Bud Light Sixer. And this goes back like a decade and brings it back to the hotel room to put in the fridge. And I'm just like, God damn it. I just want you to try a real beer for once. Um. <laughs> yeah. So we, 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 we went down to the, they got a couple of bars. We ate at one upstairs and then they, they had one downstairs and we were drinking and you know, the girls, most of you, if, if for those of you that are know, new and don't know me, you know, I, I'm not fond of light beer. I don't like beers that you can see through. Um, I like stouts, Guinnesses, um, really dark IPAs, things like that. If you can see through it, for me, it's not beer. I always ask, what do you have on tap that's like a stout can, that you can't see through? No, nope, we have nothing. Okay. Do you at least have like an amber or red? Yeah, okay. I can I can live with that stuff. But man, when I start hearing Bud Light, Miller Light, Coors Light, and I'm like, nope, nope, nope. I, I would rather have a Bloody Mary or something than than to drink that. Just just not my cup of tea. Uh, I'm going to pour Dennis a Bud Light, not tell him it's a Bud Light, but then I'm going to add really dark food coloring to it. And be like, here you go, sport. And he's going to drink it and go, oh, my God, this is the best dark beer I've had. What is it? And I'll yep. be like, oh, it's it's cheap, so you can afford it. And it's simple. It's Bud Light, and then you just put brown food coloring in it. Yeah, no, it doesn't work that way. Beer that tastes like beer is my favorite, like Guinness. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm a beer step. So, guys, I used to brew my own beer. All right. Yeah, before, until his wife said I'd wife, rather eat. Yeah. If you ever see her at a show and stuff, she will tell you. I love brewing my own beer, the Guinness, um, you know. But when you buy those these big packs of different uh, of different ingredients, they always wind up so, sending you some light pilsner crap that comes with it. Well, I'll make it because for bratwurst, if you cut up some good onions, put it in beer, boil it, and then grill them, it's perfect. And that's what that beer is good for. But man, all the, the darker stuff, that is the stuff I like. My wife was like, I am so sick of these beer barrels being lined up throughout here. You, you just got to be done. So I, I, I conceded. I no longer brew my own beer. This is why I like Dennis's wife. Here's the difference between Dennis's wife and mine. Dennis's wife makes up white lies. Like, I'm tired of seeing these beer barrels laying around. Stop making your own beer. Whereas my wife would just come right out and say what Susie means, which is your beer sucks. Stop wasting our money and brewing it. She, See, my wife would drink beer, so all beer sucks to her. Wow. She, she's a wine and margarita. 
that that's and mainly margarita. And you know this because when we go out to eat, oh, I do. He orders margaritas from everywhere, and then be like, oh, I don't like this one. Oh, I don't like this one. I'm like, why are you ordering margaritas then? And it's always the regular one. Ma imagine this is a full size margarita glass. This is his wife. Oh, I don't like this one. Here you go, Dennis. Finish it. And he's like, I don't want a margarita. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, but that's what it is. So when we do go to a place like Chewy, something like that, she loves their margaritas. Okay. Get six of them. I don't care because I know you'll drink them. I'll just drive. That's right. And then Dennis can't have a fun night because he's such a lightweight now. He won't even drink one beer and drive. Nice. Miller Lite equals seltzer. Nice. Nice and refreshing. Tastes great. Oh, wait. That's from the first quarter. That's right. So, yeah. No, I do not make my own fritters. You know, I I, I don't. That 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 is that is a lot of work uh, to be putting into to something that I can use that time better for something else. Like, like brewing. Brewing, I love doing. Right. He doesn't need to make his own fritters. I'll just buy him a dozen and say, here, eat these, and he'll have one at a time. I will be content, yes. Yeah. Yep. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe on one DNA show, I'll, I'll crack a box of Entenmann's. You know uh, what? Dozen, dozen plain cake donuts, softies, and pound them down during the show. I wish Blevins was on right now because if we're going to do DNA versus BS or whatever it winds up being, we have to find out what they do because that's where we would do it. Yeah, I don't think it's allowable to be uh, DNA versus Pop XP because Pop XP I consider Niall and Billy. I think if they're those two are doing something, it's got to be a different name. Well, it would be that they they he already said that it isn't going to be Pop XP. Oh, okay. Well, it's yeah. got to be BS then. Well, it's that was a good thought today. I actually like that one. I, mean, I would have given you a thumbs up. You know, to give it three letters, we could do B N S, you know, bull and shit. But we, you know, yeah. I'm not worried about those youngsters because I'm pretty sure Blevins is younger than us. And I know uh, Niall is. So. so, just so you know, she does love apple cider because her parents owned an apple orchard. So, we would make um, uh, apple juice, apple cider direct. We actually, they had a press, hand press. So we would get it. We would make our own. We would have all these gallon jugs unfiltered. We didn't filter anything. I'm telling you guys, that is the greatest stuff. Then you can heat it up. You can put whatever alcohol or non-alcohol stuff that you want in it. Trust me, we know we did this for, for decades. Uh, let's see. What do we got here? He did say he grew. I think he means brew his own beer, but I didn't want to make fun. You, you can, because chances are I may say a few things wrong now that I've had a few shots. By the way, how are we doing? We're not close. We're, you know, we're still, we're still six, 600 and change away from the next time. Oh, we good. Have. Well, like I said, we have to do it where, you know, maybe up till 15 and then we have to like make it every five or something because there ain't no way. There you go. There you go. Guys, come on. Dennis is wearing his granny panties today. He didn't come to the stream in his man shorts. So leave him alone. It's got nothing to do with it. But no. I'm saying we can't do that on Ethan's. There's there's no way. Oh, you can wear your granny panties on Ethan's show. Granny panties. Now I just want to watch that 70s show. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> do you feel bad that your favorite character on that show was played by that rapist guy that's in jail now? You mean Hot Donna? Because I know, I know you're referencing Danny Masterson, which is not my favorite. <laughs> it was Hot Donna, of course. But, uh, yeah, I, I love it. If, if all the things that allegedly, thank you. You always have to say allegedly. Well, I mean, it's, it's difficult to go with allegedly. Like, look, if he was, I don't know, if he was found not guilty, then I'd go allegedly. And, and just because somebody is found guilty by a jury doesn't technically mean they did it. But, you know, he's locked. I think, look, I actually, I'm glad I don't know this dude personally. Uh, well, actually, let me, let me rephrase. If I knew Danny Masterson personally, I would probably know if he was innocent or not. At least I would like to think so. But I don't know him personally. Um, 
I read about the stuff. It is really a shame. Uh, but man, just, you know, he, he's done. I don't think he, well, well, I don't think I he's looking say, at, I thank you. I was about to, to say that he was convicted. So yet I'm going to say he was not innocent just going there. I mean, it, it, unless you're trying to say, you know, OJ did it just saying. Oh, well, we know OJ did it too soon. Peter Ma, LOL. Today. Thank you. You're very welcome. We try to entertain. Um, OJ, it's funny. I heard that OJ's uh, funeral procession, he was, his his coffin was put in the back of a, a, a white hearse and uh, driven down and the freeway. It, and, and it drove at five miles an hour on that low well, speed. That's what, well, <laughs> well, Dennis, I mean, that goes without saying. Funeral processions are always slow. Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't like to disagree too much, you guys. Wait, this, since this, when? This pain. disagree with me every day. Yeah, but the stream, not you. You're, you're obviously not what I'm talking about. OJ, what was up there? I am telling you, being a Packer fan, and this pains me to say it, the greatest running back of all time was Barry Sanders from the Detroit Lions. He stuck with the shittiest of teams his whole career, had no line, no nothing, put up some of the greatest numbers you will ever see, had nothing to work with, and he was amazing. He might not own all the records, but man, when you had no team, no anything, mm, just gonna say. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm just about. saying. I'm just saying. In this world where we like to go by facts and records and numbers, I'd have to say the best running back was Emmett Smith. Yeah, you know, just saying. Yeah, you know, oh, Barry's a, oh, Barry's a nice number. Oh, Barry's a nice oh, number. Troy Aikman here. Oh, back when I played, always got to say it. Emmett had the best line, literally for years. Had the best team around him. On a one-on-one, -on -one, Barry Sanders would kick the crap out of Emmett Smith, hands down. I'm just saying. You look at the total yards and yeah, stuff exactly, and... exactly. I am just saying, as as a runner, not with a record or a win. My nemesis, Barry Sanders, was the greatest. Guys, I only own one set of 24 karat gold cards that uh, Action com, uh, Action Pack used to put out, and that was Barry Sanders because he was that great. And the Packers have had nothing like that. None, none of the teams had. I'm just saying. Hey, I and I'm not saying O.J. Simpson wasn't great as a running back. He was great. I'm just saying he, he he's no Barry Sanders. Barry Sanders was better. What about this comment? Of course, he would say that the whole Sanders family is humble, unlike you. Whoa, whoa! I didn't. And Andy anything. would be like, you know, if I were playing, I would be the best. And then after our loss, we would go eat plain cake donuts and cry in the corner. That would be you. Oh my God, plain cake donuts as the dessert to a beautiful For big losers, plain. Yes, exactly. Cry wait, wait, in the wait. Corner. Plain cake donuts as the dessert to a fantastic thick, uh, thick crust cheese pizza. Oh, fantastic. Uh, again, cheese pizza is not pizza. It's cheese bread. Oh, my God. That's a whole separate argument, by the way, people. OJ could have been a stand-up because he did kill. Oh. oh. Uh, thank you, MD Halton. Really appreciate it. Right. Plain cake donuts are for winners. I agree. <laughs> I don't even think Dennis has actually had a plain cake donut. I think he just looks... Dennis is <clears throat> Dennis is like my daughter. You just mention something and ask her to try it. And she'll be like, no, it's gross. And you'll be like, but you've never tried it. She's like, I don't have to. And that's what Dennis is like with plain cake donuts. Because yeah, the word ask, plain ask is good. Good. Blueberry cake donuts, good. Correct. Love them. So we're sour, was it sour dough, sour cream? What is that type? That type's good too. The sour cream donuts, yes. Those are yeah, not plain good. cake donuts. Hail the mighty Dennis and Andy. Congrats. Thank you. Well, welcome. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's okay. It's a, I mean, Dennis, you like vanilla ice cream. I mean, you're weird. I hate vanilla ice cream. 
Oh, I forgot. You like that's that shitty milk chocolate right stuff. Plain cake donuts. That's plain, boring, regular. This is oh, why I don't I like all the things that have no flavor. <laughs> Cheese pizza, plain cake donuts, vanilla ice cream. Honestly, get us some taste buds. You have no refinement whatsoever. Oh, oh my God. Like what, what, what beer do you drink? Whatever one doesn't have flavor. Okay. We that's can not true. That. That's not true. I had a beer last night at Moon Brew from uh, our local Vault Brewing Company. So there. And that's right. I went to Moon Brew last night over here, the new one that opened up. It was very oh, nice. Oh, you tried the new one? And did you have the cheese curds, hopefully? Of course we had the cheese curds. And they were, were they as good as the original? Tasted just the same. Good. And in fact, I got my Carolina-style burger, as always, and I asked for the uh, no coleslaw. I'll give the guy a pass. He was probably new. He screwed up. Came out with coleslaw. Did I send it back? No. I just ate it. And it was very tasty. So, so now I don't have to order Carolina stuff. burger, which the entire point of it being a Carolina burger is the slaw. Could you give me a Carolina burger? Not dumbass. Slaw? That is not. No, no, no. The whole point of a Carolina burger is the chili on top of it. Dummy. Not the slaw. It's the chili. Yeah, Carolina is the slaw. It's always the slaw. It oh is my God. Not no, it's not. not. When you do the pulled pork, yes. And it's not cheese turds. It's curds, and they're amazing. You know, if you guys come out to visit us at Heroes, we will send you over so you can try these amazing. Outside dude, of Wisconsin, they're the best cheese curds that I've had. Dude, you don't order. If you ordered a Carolina burger and said, leave off the chili, but put everything else on it, they'd be like, so you don't want a Carolina burger. That's what they would say. But when you say take off the slaw, they're like, yeah, that's still a Carolina burger because of the chili. God, you don't know anything sometimes. Oh, boy. Now he's trying to Google something. I know he is. The, the Carolina burgers are the burgers, and it is covered in the tangy, crisp slaw. 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 And that is what makes it. Nothing else matters. It is the slaw that goes on there. The same thing if you get pulled pork, barbecue. If you get a Carolina style, it is slaw that they put on there. Look what you're doing to our chat. Right there. He does not like slaw. hearing it when mom and dad fight. And he said mom and dad. And the show is DNA, which means D comes first, mom comes first, your mom, I'm dad. He doesn't no. like hearing us fight. It stands for Dennis and dad. Do the That's what we got. A stands for another woman. And A. Whoa, whoa. I mean, Dennis, you're the guy that when he put me base. Listen, listen, chat. Tell me if this is not wrong. He loads his, he loads his silverware in the dishwasher with the pointy sides down. That is not how you're supposed to load silverware in a dishwasher. You yeah. load it with the handle down. So the gushy spready water, soapy water gets all over the top pointy parts of the knives and forks. And then the smooth parts of the spoons to clean them. But like everything, Dennis, Dennis, I didn't know Turner was a Polish last name. Nag. If it was, it would be Turnerinsky, dumbass. Well, it should be because Go of how you go about doing things. Dad and nag. That's right. Nag, dad. That's right. So you're saying you're the dad, so you're older than me. Doesn't matter. We we we, we all know we're dealing in facts here now. Now, now you're just dealing in hopeful wannabes and someday, and you better hope that you live longer than I do. See, you don't have to. Okay, Peter Ma, I got to say, you don't, no, I'm not that type. When I'm done with my dishes after eating, they go right in the dishwasher. There's no pre clean, rinse off. That's what the dishwasher is for. Yeah, I don't need to do that. Mine just cleans it. Well, I mean, yeah, Susie does a great job hand washing your dishes. I tell you, for your anniversary, maybe spring for an electric dishwasher. It is 2024. Wow. What? Wow. I can tell you her brother's probably telling her, texting her all of this right now. I can't wait till we all go out to supper one night. Maybe next week we'll do it. 
My God, I am Susie's favorite person. She's she's told me numerous times she wished that there was an in law behind my. I, my I really wish. I can't wait. Helen, do you want to know what your husband said? Oh, what did Andy say this time? I, and you can even hear her inflection there. I'm not quite sure I know what you're even saying. Yeah, I said exactly. nothing. Here you go. You could always do this, and then Susie wouldn't have to get dishpan hands. No. No. We're good. We're good. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy. Let's... Let's see. How about, how about for all those new people joining? Why don't you play the trailer? The trailer? Yeah, we do have a lot of new people joining. Look at that number. Guys, we are, we are playing the long-awaited for people that uh, have just joined us. We are talking about Core Dreth, the Awakening, our newest campaign. We've got it over is 460 live. of you right now that have hopped on to chat with us. Listen to us bicker. It's amazing. God, did you say bicker? Oh, yeah, that's what I meant. Okay. Guys, without further ado, we will play the Core Draft trailer. Of course, my sound is not shared, so we're playing it where you don't see us react to it. But you guys enjoy the trailer for Core Draft. Yeah, there's the trailer for Core Drat the Awakening. Uh, Devil Flyer, did you like the new Godzilla uh, Kong movie? Well, uh, I think I'm. I, we do our movie reviews. I'm blanking on what I gave it for a rating. Uh, I think it was in the sevens out of ten. Um, yeah, I mean, I enjoyed it. You got to kind of, you know, unlike Godzilla Minus One, where you don't have to turn your brain off when you go watch it. As it was a fan Godzilla minus one fantastic movie, uh, intellectual, really good. Um, Godzilla Kong popcorn flick, turn your brain off. Some stuff didn't make sense. Uh, visually nice to look at. And, uh, there you go. Guys, I just popped the link. You can watch it when you get time. Um, but, uh, yeah. We you can we always do the movie reviews, and we 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 mentioned a little earlier, but a lot of you guys are new. We do our movie reviews, and they air every Friday morning. We always see the new movie Thursday night. We don't talk about it. We just get there in the morning and we discuss it when we're online. Sometimes we agree, sometimes we do not agree. Uh, but that way you can uh, see what we do. We do spoiler free typically up front. So if you just want to hear what we thought, great. And then you stick around and then you can hear all the spoilers and engage with us um, on all the spoiler filled stuff. Thank you very much, Mr. Kimo. Uh, so there you go, guys. Core Drath, the Awakening. It's the newest campaign. Uh, hot on the heels of Core Drath, the Reckoning. You definitely want to go check this one out. It is a barn, a burner of a tale. 
if you will. Oh, I love saying burn burner. I really do. Uh, in the Shattered Reach, Kordrath, the last of the Red Lions tribe, embarks on a desperate quest to save his love, Adriana's tribe, the Black Eagles, from Vordoom, the undying, a creature, an undead creature, undying hell bent on destruction. To succeed, he must find a powerful artifact hidden within the realm. This story definitely promises action, magic, and shocking twists like none other you've seen before. That's right. There's the link. Thank you, Past Master Dan. Uh, go check it out. Multiple covers, of course. Uh, you've got the main cover by myself and Dandy Dan Lawless. Oh, yeah. We'll have to hit a goal for that tonight. Uh, you've got the homage cover. Oh, the homage cover. Uh, the Bud Root. Bud Root is back. Back. Back in the house. Uh again with a cover and you guys we have something in mind oh my look at that they connect oh wait let's do it with the logos oh there they are that's right guys these covers connect if you missed the first cover bud did you can add it on and now you can get them both they connect and i don't know could that mean that more covers connect down the road hmm possibly nice little collector's item there so check that out. Uh, let's keep going. Oh, a black and white edition. That's right. Not just the cover, the whole book, graphic novel size. It's not an artist edition. It is the black and white edition. It is the scans that I send to the colorist. So they are nice, uh, high contrast, black and white. You're not going to see any white out or gray tones or pencil marks in these. That's what the artist edition of the previous campaign was. This one is literally just a beautiful black and white artwork for you to look at. I love books like this. So it is kind of, uh, you know, self-serving. I do uh, love these books. Uh, the front and back of a great shirt. Well, we do have the first shirt, which was the Lilneth cover. Um, you never know what could come down the pike. We will be adding stuff later uh, as the campaign goes. Except we like the new shirt. It's out right now, and uh, I'll just say, and it will, it'll be a little bit, but once it all comes back, we will be posting those because those are completely separate anyway. Yep, shirts ship separately. Say that three times fast. We've got some preview pages as always. No lettering this time. Don't want to spoil anything. The first campaign lettering was fine, so we could uh, introduce the world and the characters and stuff. This one we're just showing. Oh my God, is that three Adrianas? My God, it is. What's that all about? You can never have just one. No, it's exactly. like late potato chips. That's right. Here we go. The action ramps up right in the beginning of the book. That's what we like to do. Uh, we be bringing goodies to New Jersey Garden Fest from the Awakening. No, I mean we won't. Um, we won't have any yet. Uh, because the awakening is still in progress. I'm, I'm on page, well, I finished page 11, so I'm technically going to be starting page 12. So unfortunately there will be nothing, uh, nothing available yet. There will be some Cordrath reckoning stuff because we did leave copies aside for conventions. Yep. Uh, let's see. John says, it really seems like you two gentlemen really love the material. I hope it's as fun to work on as it has been to read. Oh, no, it, it really is a blast. We like busting each other's balls. Uh, we are the Abbott and Costello of Comicsgate, the Laurel and Hardy, the, the uh, Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin, if you will, of Comicsgate. So it is, it is really a blast. We have a great time talking over stuff or uh, when we're creating this stuff. We've got a new game. That's right. The game module was a big hit with the first campaign. And we, you know, we added that later after the camp, that campaign was launched, but it did so well that uh, the Blondie and Dagwood. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I am like Dagwood. I like a big meaty sandwich and Dennis bitch is like a girl. So he is like Blondie. Uh, Thelma and Louise. True. Cause Dennis has threatened to drive us off the cliff many times when I'm the passenger. Uh, so another game 
coming your way uh, right out of the gate. And of course, a new parody ad in the back of the book because I love drawing these ads. And when Dennis came on board, I was like, we got to continue this. And uh, he stepped up to the plate writing some great parody ads. This really was one of my favorite. I, I wanted to stick with the Looney Tunes uh, theme. And uh, I, I had this great idea. And yeah, I'm, I, I, everybody's loved it. <gasps> my God, that is... That is just disgusting. We try to keep this stream PG-13 at least. Uh, stretch goals coming soon. I mean, we know we're doing character cards. Uh, for those just joining us, somebody actually mentioned uh, uh, as a stretch goal, and we take note of everything, uh, possibly doing, this is the full, this is a nice bigger image for the game module of the cover art Bart. Sears, our pal, and Dan Lawless did. And they said you could make that into a print for the people that aren't into games. Yeah. So you never know. This could you become a main print. With that, we're up with that idea today. I love it. Yeah. And if you like it, you'll be able to talk to Bart next Wednesday on our DNA live show and chat because Bart is going to be our special guest. That's right. He is. And we're looking at doing the first art auction on the channel. Uh, Bart might have some stuff to auction off, so join us. And I always have some stuff laying around. Uh, we've got add-ons like Cordrat the Awakening, the layouts. So if you're curious of what do Andy's uh, layouts slash pencils look like before he starts slapping ink, well, guys, you can add this on to the end of the campaign. Get it and find out. Is it going to be printed full size, you know, full comic book size, not a smaller version or anything? So you can check it out. What's up? How are you? Uh, we've got the manga size digest of Cordrat the Reckoning. It is rated E for everyone. We did a little editing on that specific page. And if uh, you got the book, you know what I'm talking about. But now, if you want your 12-year-old to delve into a black and white manga size version, they can read this, no problem. Or no problemo. Or they can get the Color Digest version. Oh, also, oh yeah. look at that. Color Digest version. You can get that as well. Edited E for everyone. It's a little bit bigger than the uh, manga version. Right there, as you can see. So you can get that. Uh where is the art auction site going to host that? It's on the DNA show. It's on these channels you're watching right now. It, it'll be simulcast on through Andy's YouTube, my YouTube channel, the DNA show, and Andy's Andy Art Show. Uh, his channels, it'll be on X, it'll be simulcast, and Facebook. So depending on where you guys watch either of us from, it will be on there. Yep. And, you know, we we stream to Facebook and Twitter as well. But thank you very much, Troy. But thank you have you. to make sure it's a platform. And people tell me they can uh, they can comment on Twitter or X, but it definitely needs to be on a platform where you can do uh, comments for your bid and stuff. And we'll go over all that on Wednesday. Oh. So, John, one of the things that uh, the reason we, we decided to, to go down this stream, we had so many of you who loved it, but said, man, I, I've got a kid who would love this, but we can't have it. They can't take this into the schools because of the nude scene, right? <laughs> so um, we, we talked to uh, quite a few of you and we decided, well, let's go in and edit out the, the part that is not school friendly. We made it for design for the kids. We've uh, shown a number of people this and uh, on our, because, you know, we had a few printed for them to look at and get their feedback. They love it. They both turned out great, depending on if you're a manga fan or if you like the full color digest. There you go, John. And, uh, of course, we have new guys, uh, so you can see it better in detail. Uploaded the image that's on the campaign page, core draft figures for role playing or just collecting. We've got the 25 millimeter two inch figure. That is the perfect uh, typical size for role playing games. We've got the 
uh, what is that? 50 millimeter. Uh, is that correct, Dennis? 50? Yep. yep. 50 millimeter, uh, which is the three inch. And then the 100 millimeter, because a lot of you, so we really were tour. A lot of people wanted, I want one to play in the miniatures for D&D or whatever role playing that you guys are doing. That's your 25 millimeter. Everything is the 25, 30 millimeter size in that. But there are also a bunch of you that were like, you know, I don't do that, but I really want a big honk inversion that looks great. So we were looking at statue options and toys. This turned out perfect. Yep. So those, these are add-ons. Uh, it's not a separate tier, so you can just add it on upon checkout. Comes in a nice blister pack, uh, clamshell, whatever you want to call it, like you see there. So you can definitely add that on. And uh, oops, got to get back to the proper screen. Do, 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 do. We've got the Core Draft Collector's Box, uh, which we actually, well, everything you've seen, the digest versions, the figures, the, the manga size, we have made. So we had prototypes made of the collector's box just so we could make sure the books we want to include fit uh, and everything. We've got uh, the homage covers featured, of course, on the front of the box. The top is, because it's for this campaign, the homage cover for number two. On the back, oh, on the side, we've got the cover, part of the cover of uh, that Dan and I did. Got the logos and stuff. Oh, oh, look at it open. Oh, my God. Yeah. So these yeah. lock into place, so all your books... You can put them right in and then, oh, oh, look what it says when you open the lid. Oh, yeah. Beautiful right there. Guys, so we've got that. You know, uh, I didn't see it. It was part of an add-on. Uh, so you can always add it on because some people, oh, GJ Martinez, thank you very much. And guys, just so you know, the box will ship inside of a regular brown box. And inside, it'll have bubble wrap and stuff around it because it's a collectible box. We don't want it to get messed up. That is not a shipping box. Yep. And the cool thing is you can put all your core draft, volume one stuff, volume two stuff all together, slide it right on like a slipcase right into your uh, bookshelf. That's right. We set up the spine so it looks kind of like a, uh, a big fat book on a bookshelf. Uh, you can do that. And of course, if you get uh, going through the tiers, the core draft, the awakening box bundle, you will get everything that's involved with this awakening campaign. All the covers cover A, B, C, D, which is the Bud Root line art cover. You'll get the black and white edition of the book. You'll get the game module volume two, the Adriana trading card, and of course, the collector's box. Retail 162. Uh, here on the campaign, 135. Of course, the game module you can order. And there's add-ons for everything. So like you want to get cover A and add on the box, knock yourself out. You want to add on a figure, go right ahead. Maybe you want to add on one of their original books from The Reckoning. They're limited. Get them while they last. Uh, so we've got the individual covers here. We've got the black and white edition, of course. But show We've them got, the back and print one because not everybody has seen that. That's right. Uh, we are offering a second print of the first book, The Reckoning, with a brand new uh, Bud Root Lilineth cover to it, colored by the Dan Lawless, of course. So you can check that out as well. Let me just hide that so I can go back to over here. We've got the catch-up tier where you can get one and two, and one is the Bud Root cover. And then the main uh, cover A, of course, there's the head sketch tier where 7x10, character of your choice. I will draw a head, head. I don't even like to say sketch because, you know, they're inked with, you know, I ink all my stuff with brush and, and, and whatnot. So it's more of a head uh, finished drawing tier. And then there's the full figure sketch commission tier. Uh, if you want, those are limited. And then, of course, the big bad booty daddy core draft volume one and two. You get 
everything. Retail, 510 for you, 399 uh, You get every book that is in the Cordrath, the Awakening tier, as well as Cordrath Volume 1, all six covers, the first game module, the first four character cards, the map, the artist edition, and both Adriana and Lona trading cards. Woof, you get it all right there in the box. And everything, all the actual graphic novels fit in the box. The uh, the game modules and the artist edition are oversized, so they don't fit in the box, but everything else does, and it fits nice and tight. Oh, God, I had to squeeze that in there, of course. I had to. Yeah, you did. I did. I, I squeezed it in. Uh, there you go. Well, take your time and figure it out. Uh, she looks happy on the new cover. Did she just see Cordrath's little hatchet? Oh, she might have. She wow, might have. it's a hatchet now. I like or that. I caught big, it that. Or his big double-headed axe. So one know. of the things, guys, we one of the things I want to do while we just have a, a few minutes left here um, is we, we talked about this at the beginning and we talked about it in the middle. But as we near down hours, because we are going to take a little break before we wind up going on, uh, before Ethan uh, hosts us. Uh, because some of us have to eat something, it'll be great. But one of the things we were talking about um, was the figures. A lot of you guys really love this. You asked for them, the different sizes. And I, as I explained earlier, it's a very expensive proposition to do it because this is based off of Andy's artwork. And to get somebody to professionally sculpt it like that, we, if this looks like it's going to be a, a, a big deal, who do you want for uh, the second figure? Do you, it, just put in the chat, one, if you want Adriana as your second, two, if you want Lilineth, uh, and three, if you want Necronite. And um, we, we're going to probably do some of these type of things. And as you guys uh, let us know your thoughts, you know, we're going to get an idea. We'll probably do like a real poll, but you guys let us know who would you like to see next? Oh, okay. Let's uh, grab a super chat here from our very own. Oh, my gosh, scroll back up to it. Charlie's London. Hello. Hey, guys. Congrats with the launch. Sadly, I'm on my way home from a football. Well, it's not sad if your football team won. I hope they did. Well, I was just going to um, say, it depends if you won or lost. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it should be happy. If they won, so cannot jump on, but number one was amazing. We'll be backing number two. Love you guys, Charlie's. We love you too. Uh, no problem. I want to extend the invite, or we want to extend the invite to you got to you to join. But hey, football over there, it's a big deal. I hope the game didn't end zero to zero they because lost. that's sad. Oh my god, they lost. <laughs> Let me guess, it was one to zero. It was one to zero. That's probably the score because it's football. Soccer is we soccer is us. Uh, I was gonna Anderson. say, you know, one to nothing. That is, I hate to say it, that's one of the reasons why I like American football a little better, just because there's a lot more scoring and excitement. But hey, to each their own. We love oh, it. Was it was two to zero. It was two, two to zero. Nothing. That's not bad. Dennis's favorite part when he played football was being the center. He loved having a guy's hands put under his ass. Nope, was never center, was a defensive tackle. Oh, eh, what are you going to do? I was close. I mean, it's either having hands put under his butt or dragging a guy down to the ground and being on top of him. Either way, Dennis loved football for those reasons. So, wow. uh, Dennis, where are you? Dennis, we are only uh, $37. $37 away from another shot. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I believe. Let me double check. I just hit refresh. Nope. It is shot time. 13, so two, gonna, am three, I going to make it to Ethan's? <laughs> oh, it's only one more and you got your baby shot glass. I think you can do it. Oh, whatever. Baby shot glass. Go take a nap, old man. You know, are, are we doing this on Ethan's tonight? Because honestly, I mean, I'm not going to have enough captain anyway. Gonna be I might have to go pull out something else. I don't think it's going to be every 10. But uh, 
$13,236. I'm pouring a shot. Man, I'm going to have to, not today, oh, but. Oh, look who it was. Yeah. Yes, my packy got us another shot. Well, thank you very much. We so much appreciate it. Have you poured it out yet? I did. Cheers. Toast it. Guys, thank you. And uh, boy, I I know Andy will make it tonight. <laughs> because I'm a man. You can say it. God, that tastes good. It, it does. Uh, it does. Captain James C. Kirk and the Bird. It does. Oh, my God, that does. Um. You know, that's not allowed on YouTube and probably X Admiral Whack Ass. Just saying. I mean, we like to keep our channels around here. That's what Dennison's going to go do off stream. He's going to go down, do a few lines, cut them with his credit card, and uh, celebrate with his wife. Um, uh -huh. I can vape. I've got, I've got a, uh, I've got some uh, uh, CBD here that I, I can vape. But I don't think you're allowed to do that on stream either. So uh, there you go, guys. We are going to take a break. Ethan is supposed to be streaming at eight o'clock. Uh, tonight. So we are going to take a little break. It is a uh, dinner time. Plus it's a weekend. And my wife would probably be like, I know you're doing your launch your campaign and stuff, but man, I do like to see my husband and, uh, you know, she wants to see me. What can I say? Uh, can't wait to see fired night on EVS. Congrats on the launch. Thank you so much. And guys, we, we love the fact that, you know, I, I know we're, you know, Ethan's the big channel and stuff, but you guys took your time out of your day with just Andy That's and right. I and our little channels coming out. You hung out with us. You got to hear us bicker and fight over stupid shit like plain cake donuts, but you still your came best thing ever. You, you backed core draft. We've heard from you guys from one. We're going to keep trying to make this better. And all I can say is thank you guys for uh, just coming out and, uh, and joining us. That's right. Sincerely, uh, I I second everything Dennis said, and sincerely, thank you guys. Thank you, thank you so much for coming out. Uh, the little channel that could, um, you know, we're obviously co-streaming on our channels, co-streaming on Twitter or X and Facebook and all that fun stuff. Uh, twenty six was the first twenty four. I'm glad you, man, Randy, you. My friend are amazing. Thank you, Randy. Thank you, Past Master Dan, Marcus Kellegrew, all the wrenches that we have. Thank you all. Um, I would never have remembered that. So thank you for sharing that. We now have a uh we now have something we have to hit, you know, after we stream tonight. Who knows? Maybe tomorrow Dennis and I jump on a live stream in the afternoon after we get some work done in the morning. You never know. Um, you know what? You know what? I think we should. Maybe we'll do the comic call because we did a great SC Comic Con. We picked up some stuff. We've been trying to find time to do it. That will be our tomorrow afternoon, hopefully. Yeah, maybe we'll jump on tomorrow afternoon. I do have to, uh, one last, uh, I guess you call it a plug. It, well, it's not really a plug because the campaign's down and it's not up on my website yet for sale. But for you guys that, uh, I'll just remove this for now. I don't need a full screen, but for you guys that back nice and tight, the comic book pencil art of Andy Smith, that's me. Um, it is here. It is here. Dennis even has one. He can prove it. Uh, we made the stretch goal, guys, of wire binding. So not only does it literally lay flat, even with staples, it wouldn't lay flat. This baby lays flat. You can fold it back on itself. You can get vellum. If you don't know what vellum is, it's heavy tracing paper. That is the old school way that people used to have to do inking samples before they could print blue lines. If you got a scanner, you can lay it flat on your scanner. If you back the digital edition, those links went out. So you can download your digital edition of the book and uh, practice inking in a digital program. These are going to start going out tomorrow. I spent yesterday bagging them up, putting trading cards in them for the people that backed early that got trading cards and stuff. So uh, this is going to start going in the mail tomorrow. Tomorrow, the sun will come out. 
tomorrow. The sun's out today. So, I mean, I hope it comes out still tomorrow. I hate the lightning. Uh, but if it does rain, well, you know what I say? Blame it on the rain. Ooh, ooh. That's Dennis's favorite band, Millie Vanilli, right there. You know, I felt bad because I told Dennis when he told me that, I said, yeah, I bet you were crushed when you found out they were lip syncing. And uh, he just realized that when I told him last year. So I felt really bad bursting that bubble. It was like telling kids that Santa Claus isn't real. Hope no kids are watching. Uh, there you go. G.J. Martinez, Cordrath is one of my top favorite books. It's right alongside Aaron's Wraith of God. You know, Aaron's used to coming in second on the gray beards. So, you know, coming in second this time, he won't mind. And hey, I'm there with you. I loved Wraith of God. Uh, that is has been one of my uh, favorite CG books. It's been great. They're all good. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but Aaron's that that one just kind of hit me. And I know some of you were asking, you know, Andy and I both do it. If you're uh, new or you're just on Andy's, make sure you go to YouTube at Dennis Turner and do it. And that because all of our DNA shows that we do get put up on Andy's as well as the, the DNA show. And that way you will not miss any of the announcements that we put out. That's right. And, you know, 26 K is the first 24 last year. I'm going to say uh, I would like to do a nice uh, or well, we would like to hit. I'm speaking well, well, for Dennis. That's what I said. Hi. Well, it, it's uh, another 26. So it was 39. What? You, you're you're. So it was another 26. So look at it again, and we will match. So 13 plus 26, we did 39. 26 was last year. This year, I'd like to hit 30 straight up in the first 24. No, no, no. no you're, it isn't. It says another 26,000 will match the first oh. four hours. Oh, it was 39 last year? Yeah. Oh, shit, it was. 39. Okay. Well, uh, let's make a nice round. Uh, <laughs> wow. That did really good last year. Let's shoot for a nice round. 40. <laughs> now now I'm scared. He surprised himself. Well, Look at that. Well, now I'm nervous. I'm so nervous. I could feel my testicles recede up into my body and it's a warm day. They were hanging by my knees. It's so warm up here. Now they just receded because I'm nervous. Uh, hopefully we can crack a nice solid 40. Uh, in the first 24, um, you know, 24, that's 1230 tomorrow afternoon. So we're going to have to really effing crush it tonight. Uh, let's say the first 24 means actually midnight tomorrow night. You know, I'm fine with fudging that hours. You know what I'm just saying? No, oh, no, I have faith. We don't have to fudge nothing. All right. Well, we'll do that. Screw that 80K or bust. Man, if we do 80K... I'm not doing shots anymore. I'm just drinking right out of the freaking bottle. So you know, yeah, if, if we if if we double the first one in the first 24 hours, yeah, we we will be drinking, and that stream tomorrow would will, will be in a question mark. <laughs> now I'll tell you this: we were for those that are just joining us. I originally said that if we win, we hit 100k. The sooner the better. Because Dennis and I will literally, and we said this, and this is no joke, Dennis agreed, when we hit 100K, I will stop shaving my head until the campaign ends, and Dennis will not cut his hair. And he cuts his hair like once a month until yeah, the campaign ends. Sure. Randy's right. The 24 hours starts with the EVS stream, because that's what we launched with last year. Oh, I like that. So, so. And that's good because this is a Sunday night and Kings is tomorrow night. So if we double, I'm putting Dennis on the spot now. He can say no, but I don't think he will. If we double what we did in the first 24 hours last year, I will stop shaving my head until the campaign is over. So that's 80 because I'm rounding up. You know, double would actually be 39 and 39, you know, I mean, whatever. So we're going to round up to 80. If we were to hit 80 in the first 24 hours, I'll stop shaving my head until fulfillment. And fulfillment is March of next year. Dennis, what say you? No haircuts until March if we hit 80 in the first 24? You know, if, if we hit how much? 80? We double it. 80. 
All right, I, I can do that. My wife will be pissed at me because she's already pissed about this. Ah, let's add one more. She can only be mad for a year. <laughs> I mean, think about it, Dennis. You've had that. That was only supposed to be for November. No shave November. Oh, no <laughs> shave November. And we waited to see how long she would complain about it. She She is now. Yeah. And then, you know, every in December, she was like, uh, no shave November's over. And you're like, it is. And I love it. So, you know, she'll get over it. She'll get Dennis. All right. It's, for, it, it, it's fine. I, I will. I will not get my hair cut. For marriage vows are for better or worse. So if she thinks it's worse with you with long hair. Just remind her of those vows. Uh, my wife will just have to live with a scraggly looking bum because when you have nothing and uh, can't grow anything right here and you let the U shape horseshoe go for a year. Yeah, that's going to be uh, I'll even throw a card. You'll be sitting in your chair going, engage. I'll be able to do this. And you'll see the back of it whip around a year from now. Actually, I won't because my hair is really curly, actually. So uh, it's going to be like Bozo the freaking clown. So if you want to see me look like Bozo the clown, uh, share the campaign, guys. Share the campaign. All right, guys. Sincerely, once again, from the bottom of our hearts, Thank you for joining us. We've been on for five hours and 31 minutes. Literally just click that mark. 500 of you are still listening to us jabber. So I, I just love it. So take a break. And if you really want to hear us argue, we'll, we'll see you on Ethan's. See you on Ethan's. See you tomorrow afternoon. We definitely will do a live stream, if even if it's only for like an hour or so. Got to get some work done. Got to mail some books out of nice and tight. We're ending the five and a half hours at 13,427 bucks, 174 backers. Thank you guys so much. We sincerely love you all. Uh, it is it is honestly because of you guys. Just remember, guys, you're the producers of this book. Just like the producers of a movie, you're the producers of the book. And you should feel good about that, knowing that you helped uh, bring this to life. So until eight o'clock tonight, Ethan's channel. Bye-bye, right. everybody. Live long and prosper. Thank you. See ya.